Did she just get that? She got it? I heard her. Oh, and I'm live. Whoops. All right, folks, we welcome you back to Inside Foose's coverage of the 2022 Mississippi State Championships. For those of you just joining us on YouTube and Twitch, welcome. Had a great weekend of foosball so far. As we are getting ready for this expert singles final here on table number one. Expert singles final. Tony Owens out of Oklahoma has the king seat. And attempting to double dip him will be Marcus Heyman. Out of his home state of Mississippi. All right, folks, 
And we are set to get this one underway here. And Marcus going to start with the ball and fires that one through the lane. And good pull shot there, and that opens scoring now 1 0. Again, this is the expert singles final. Tony Owens has the king seat. Marcus Heyman coming out of the elimination side trying to double dip. And Tony finds a good tight straight. So all tied up at one apiece. Passing from Marcus. Fires that one down the middle. Great shot there. It's now 2 1. And Tony tries to go down the middle. Can't hang on to his rebound. Reels it in in his goalie area. And he sends a change about the table. Goes all the way to the back. Tries a pull kick, able to clear it, and grabs the rebound on his three rod. He's been shooting well so far. Fires that one home. It's now 3-1. So Marcus Heyman coming out strong on his three bar. Just Tony Owens goes along the wall. Tony fires that one home, and that cuts the lead in half now, 3-2. And Marcus does well to grab that as it was getting away from him. And puts that one on the wall. I think that's the first shot he's missed. Tries the slider, but... Tony stays home. Gets that one on goal and again grabs the rebound. And again, he puts that one on the wall trying to go long. And Tony with another clear. That pull kick attempt is picked off, so Tony Owens now a chance to flip the script here and tie things. And Heyman able to jump out there and greet him. And stubs that one a little bit. We saw him in the King Seat final, or winner's bracket final, stub a number of balls on this table. And Heyman now after putting, fires that one down the middle, switching to that rollover, and it is now game ball for Marcus Heyman. And Owens now looking to cut into the lead. And he fired that one down the middle. It looked like it was there, but Marcus did a good job getting back in time to get just enough of it. And Owens calls time out. Yeah. 
And Heyman fires that one home, and just like that, in relatively quick fashion, Marcus Heyman takes game number one. So, folks, uh, do have to apologize. We had a little bit of a hiccup here. There was a match that got called over on table six that wouldn't have been... It's almost a must on either table one or two so that you guys can watch at home. But the king seat match of pro singles was played, and in two games, Sullivan Rue defeated Safi Scheiber, so she is currently sitting in a king seat of pro singles, having herself quite the weekend as Tony Owens puts the ball back into play. The other big headline from around the room, Brandon Moreland 3-0'd Blake Robertson to advance to the king seat match where he will take on Brandon Munoz for a shot at the king seat. Owens taking his time here, fires the straight. That's how he got going last time, now 1-0. As Heyman does a nice job looking along the wall there. Gonna stick with the rollover here. He was hammering that pull shot early. He put a couple. Oh, wow. Okay, can hammer that one, too. So can't blame him for mixing it up as he fires that one home. Now 1-1. One, one. Marcus Heyman has a strong three bar. As Owens pass a little too high for him. As Heyman fires that one on goal, but... Just couldn't beat the zone. The back man got it. Heyman tries a pin shot. A lot of players will do it to the pull side. He went push. Tries to come quick to the pull side. Shaking his head a little bit. Think he maybe regrets that decision, but. He's been playing great defense and shooting very well so far as Tony Owens. Showing a little spring in his steps, sends that one up off the back wall and able to grab it on his three. And Tony again denied by Heyman. And wow, that I think he flipped that out of a back pin, but he tucked that nicely. Good shot from Marcus Heyman. My first time getting a look at Marcus's game, and it's an impressive one. There's Owens now, chance to equalize. Tries to go straight again, and Marcus stays home. So Owens intercepts that clear attempt onto his five. Fires that one down the middle, and we are all tied up at two. And nice brush down there from Heyman, who sticks with the rollover here. Fires that one to the near side, and he is bumper to bumper on that. Big rollover of his as he now has a 3-2 lead here in game number two. Again, it's Heyman who is trying to send this to a second set. And great defense there on the five. Goes with the left hook. Can't get it to go, but not a bad option there. Mixing it up a little bit. Although he has been shooting very, very well from the three bar. And his defense holds up there. Again, Owens able to clear, and a beautiful 2-3 to three quick pass from Marcus Heyman. Going to give him a chance to make this 4-2. Fires that one down the middle, and it is 4-2. It is match ball for Marcus Heyman, who was coming out firing early on in this singles final. Uh, 
Owens does a nice job to work that one through. These balls are all must have for him. If he wants to avoid a second set and Heyman again, able to race him out there. And he talks Tony into a straight and gets back in time. And now he takes possession with a chance to take the match. He tries to get a quick clear, but Tony, nice job stealing that one, intercepted along the wall. And he fires that one long, just what the doctor ordered for Tony Owens. And Tony is going to call his first time out. So Tony Owens back against the wall a little bit here in this first set. As you see Marcus Heyman, who has been firing on all cylinders. Marcus Heyman looking to put this one away. Puts the ball back into play. Tries the high lane and eventually works it through and on the loose ball, kicks it in. Uh, he puts his head down. Tony, I think he's just more focused about the second set. I don't think he was trying to be rude. Tony was looking for the fist bump, but no harm, no foul. I think it was just Marcus dialed in right now. I think Tony more disappointed with himself than anything, shaking his head. That first match, all Marcus going 2-0. And again, folks, we've got table number one here. We're going to have all the finals for you here on table number one. For the most part, might be one over on two, but table number two is over on the Foosball Sports Network, over on Twitch. they got a good one ready to get underway in the open singles. On the elimination side of that bracket, Blake Roberts and Terry Rue looks like they're getting ready to square off. Oh, nope, I lied. The ladies just made their way into the pit. That's uh, open mixed. That is the quarterfinal of open mixed. The winner of that will go on to play Dewey Culpepper and Maggie Strong for the elimination bracket final. Oops. If you're watching on YouTube, this is my mistake on my end. I just hit start streaming. Uh, I'll get Jason Wicks to fix that, but it popped up as 2022 Texas State Championships. That's obviously incorrect. We are in Mississippi. And I have access to the comments on Twitch, so if you pop up there, I can see what you're chiming in with. But at the moment, I don't have access uh, to the YouTube. Well, I might be able to pull it up on my phone, actually. All right, so a handful of chats on YouTube. Yeah, Randy uh, Chavez saying rare to see two pole shooters in a final. Marcus did switch to the rollover, but he was hitting that pole shot very well as Tony, open, Tony Owens opens things here with a wall pass. 
He's going to stick to that pull shot. That's his bread and butter as he fires that one long. He's got a one nothing lead. I think Tony is open scoring in every game of this match, so or the first match. Now here in the second set, he does the same. Marcus hammers that one through the lane, but a little too hot. He was unable to hang on. As Owens brushes that one up nicely, so he'll have a chance to make it 2 nothing. Oh, tries to straight. It was there. He just clipped the wall. Heyman now with a push shot, able to grab his own rebound. He's been doing that at a pretty high percentage, shooting and grabbing his rebound on his three so far here. Oh, and a little awkward. I'm not even really sure he meant to hit that, but just kind of awkwardly lost his grip and knocks it into the goal. But they all count the same, so it's 1-1. Gets a little bit of a break there as well as that one finds its way in. Now 2-1 in favor of Owens. And nicely hammered through the high lane for Heyman. Tries to go quick to the push side. Owens denies him. Slowing things down a little bit here. I think he needs to. The way Heyman has been playing. Seems to be more of a power player. Owen's more of a finesse guy, but he's been hammering this pull shot as he tries to put that one down the middle, spray it a little bit, and Heyman able to keep it out. Throws a little hitch, able to get that one through the lane. Got a chance now to make it 3 1 again. Or, uh, again, has a chance. Sorry, folks, been a long weekend. And beautifully passed along the wall for Heyman. Tries to go push side, and Owens gets just enough of it to send it into the corner. Oh, and his clear attempt to stab back on goal, but nicely kept out. But it does give him another scoring opportunity. Fires that one short to the far side. And it's 2-2. Two -two. Good pick up there for Owens, stabbing that one back in. It's now 3-2. So good adjustments here for Tony. Slowing Marcus down a little bit. Wow. Well, he didn't like that five bar stab back into his goal, and he just dialed up a monster left hook. I think if he wanted to try and hit seven more of those, he might be able to. That was big. Heyman works that one through, sticking with the rollover. He, we saw in the first set, he does have a pretty monster pull shot as well, and he hammers that one. That was a tight hole to the near side, and it's now 4-3. So Mark is pumping himself up a little bit here. Owens, again, slowing things down. He shot better here in the second set, and he cuts that one back down the middle. And it is 4-4 here in game number one. And didn't see how many motion, but Marcus made the first one step away from the table, so I believe that's his timeout.
And we are underway here on this ninth and final ball. And Marcus Heyman has a chance to make it three games in a row. And cuts that one into the goal. And Marcus Heyman comes back to win game number one. Is he going to look there at Tony Owens? He is just shaking his head. Disappointed with himself, I'm sure. And Marcus Heyman lets him know that was on purpose. He, he was looking to cut that. If I was Marcus and I did do it on purpose, I don't think I would tell Tony that I could do it. Let him think he did it by accident, and then there's not a chance he's doing it again, right? But I'm new. What do I know? And we are ready to get game number two underway. Tony Owens showed some nice adjustments there, but Heyman came firing back. It's been relatively all Heyman. But Tony a poised, capable veteran. He's not ready to roll over. So he puts that one up, and Heyman able to get back there and keep it out. Goes with a push kick. Fires that one on goal, but can't beat the zone. Owens has it come to rest under his five. Good push down there from Tony. Still shaking his head. And fires that one in the near to the long hole. He opens scoring. I think he's gotten an, the first ball in all four games. So he's open strong, just hasn't been able to hang on. And it's Heyman now, a chance to respond. Taking his time here. Gets that one very deep. It's now 1-1. now tries the straight again he's had some success to that straight hole but Marcus keeps that one out Marcus puts that one on goal but again the zone holds up for Owens and he's rewarded with a three bar possession fires that one down the middle now 2-1 Tony's playing well. He just hasn't been able to put any, you know, he's gotten blocks. He's gotten the takeaways. He just hasn't been able to put any kind of distance between himself and Marcus in any of these games. And it's allowed Marcus to come back. And he, he gave us, and that's, you know, Marcus goes back to that cutback after Tony questioned it at the end of that last match. And Tony just looked up and said, that's a good shot. Marcus goes on another one of those left hook attempts. The one we saw him hit earlier was impressive, to say the least. And he's got a chance to take the lead here. Fires that one to the far side, and again, he has the lead after playing from behind early. And beautiful pickup there from Heyman. Didn't hesitate as Tony's man drifted out of the way. Hammers that one home. It is now championship ball for Marcus Heyman. Marcus Heyman takes possession with a chance to put this one away. Tries that pull kick. Owens denies him. Heyman going to try it again. We've seen him hit some big shots here with his two bar. And that one was big to say the least. And then a man flipping it up off the table. So Tony Owens will take over, look to clear on a ball he has to have to stay alive. Tries to send it quickly up off the back wall and it lands on a Heyman's three bar. Tries a little rolling straight on a pole setup. up. 
and off the back wall, but Tony can't get there that time, so Heyman able to catch it on his five in advance. He looks like he's operating with a lot of confidence right now. As he cuts another one back just for good measure in case Tony wasn't sure he was doing it on purpose. And in four games, two sets, Marcus Heyman comes back and double dips Tony Owen. Impressive, impressive performance from Marcus. Hard fought. Never went away, Tony did. Sticking around, making it close. But just didn't have an answer for that impressive offensive performance by Marcus Heyman. So congratulations to Tony, but congratulations to Marcus Heyman on taking that expert singles title. As we get to see Marcus there with his trophy. I'm gonna hop around and do a quick little interview with him. Talk to him about that performance in just a second. Stand right on him, we'll do this interview. All right, I'm here in the pit with Marcus Heyman. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I got a big trophy in the way here. Marcus, you came back, you double dipped, four straight games, impressive performance. How are you feeling? I'm feeling great. I mean, that was honestly, that was my first time getting to see your game. You were hammering the ball. Tony just said, as we right before we did this interview, you blocked really well took it away from him but you also shot really well that left hook I think had everybody standing there with their mouth open so what were you thinking as you were proceeding throughout that match was it the offense with the defense I was more offense because I wasn't getting blocked so I play a lot I play hard everything I shoot is really hard so he's always on guard and, you know kept him on his toes and I saw you guys having a conversation at the end of that one game. If you hit that cutback on purpose, I heard you tell him you did it on purpose. Yeah, did, did you do? Did you do that those last couple just to let him know? Yeah, I did like four more in a row then, just to show him that it was on purpose. Well, I think he believes you now, Marcus. Congratulations on the win. Go enjoy the victory.
All right, folks, we just got notification that we are going to have the top of the winner's bracket match between the Brandons, Moreland and Munoz, going head-to-head -head for the king seat. Here in just a second. They just called it. People are making their way into the pit. So it'll be a moment, but once those guys get in here, we will have that one for you, and it promises to be a good one. So actually, as I mentioned during that last match, Brandon Mullen 3-0'd Blake Robertson to get here. Sorry, folks, uh, having a little conversation here in the booth. Brandon Munoz defeated Terry Rue to get to this point. Again, the other headline over the last hour or so, Sullivan Rue defeating Safi Scheiber to take the king seat in pro singles. She's made most of the headlines this weekend. Already got some hardware to her name. Looking to add some more. Actually, she's about to play for fourth or better in open doubles with her partner Michael Bates against Dewey Culpepper and Marcus Heyman. She's got her first look at Marcus's game here on table number one. Young man hits the ball very, very hard. And Dewey Culpepper has been playing very well all weekend. And he's still alive in expert mixed. Sitting third or better after dropping the king seat match to Brandon Munoz and Isabel Stelly. Taking a peek elsewhere around the brackets. Pros doubles just getting started a little while ago. Expert doubles down the last 16 teams or so. Actually, exactly 16 teams. As I mentioned, pro singles. Just waiting for the loser, or elimination side of the bracket to catch up to Sullivan. The open mixed semifinal between the Ruse and Blake Smith and er, <laughs> Blake Smith, Blake Robertson and Hannah Smith going on on table number two over on the Football Sports Network. The winner of that goes on to play Dewey Culpepper and Maggie Strong for the chance to attempt to double dip Isabel Stilly and Brandon Munoz.
Well, folks, we're still waiting for Brandon Moreland to make his way to the pit, but just a little update for you. That one on two in expert mixed between the Ruse and Robertson and Smith. The Ruse took that one down on third game meatball. So it was a good one. And over on table three, the, not on stream anywhere, unfortunately, but Dewey Culpepper and Marcus Heyman taking on Michael Bates, Sullivan Rue. Looks like that one's still in the first game. I can't see the game counter. The one I know everybody's worried about. Over on table five, Tommy Brewer and Craig Simpson. Squaring off in expert doubles against Brian Ingram and Keith Bates, the local Mississippi boys. The second cool was Keith and Foosball. Very nice gentleman from Mississippi against the two boys from South Florida. I'm kidding, I bet that one's not that interesting. If you're wondering who this is, I'm knocking the ball around on the table on the left, that's Mississippi native Bracklin Bufkin. On the right, that's amateur singles champion and currently sitting in the Kings of the Expert Mixed out of Louisiana. It's Isabel Stelly. Nice time to give you something to watch while we wait for the Brandons to get started. And another little update for you, that open doubles match going on over on three. If I understood the hand signals being flashed to me correctly, it looks like Sullivan and Michael Bates took game number one. And both our Brandons have entered the pit. I'm just trying to, watching the girls trying to figure out that handshake over there in the corner.
<laughs> All right, folks, we welcome you back to Inside Foos' coverage of the 2022 Mississippi State Championships. We got the matchup. Everyone here has seemingly been cheering for all weekend. I've seen lots of T-shirts hoping for this matchup. On the left of your screen, that's Brandon Moreland. On the right, that's Brandon Munoz. And we are underway. This for the king seat. Brandon Munoz defeated Terry Rue to get here. Brandon Moreland 3-0'd Blake Robertson to get here. Good rolling straight on that pull shot from Moreland. And Munoz. Working that one through. I, we've seen a lot of Brandon this weekend here on table one. I think this is the first shot we get to see him at singles, which is where it's really the most fun to watch him flying around the table as he steals that one away from Marlin. Sets up off center, fires to that short side, it's 1-1. One, one. And Marlin can't hang on to that one. So Munoz will take over, look to clear. He loves to clear and chase. Just punt it down the table and run after it as Moreland steals that one away and fires on the middle now. 2-1 for Moreland. And Moreland now looking to go up. Oh, denied by Munoz. Oh, Moreland almost spikes that one on him, but Munoz was able to keep it out. And that was a good sportsmanship stoppage. So Munoz denies that clear attempt. And that one with the steal. Uh, Munoz chance to tie things up here, setting up off center again. Tries to go to the short side again, can't get it. And Moreland nicely along the wall. And patiently waits out that straight, now 3-1. In favor of Brandon Moreland. And Moreland gets this takeaway. And Moreland going to burn his first time out. Stare into the crowd here until I make eye contact with somebody. See if I can get a color commentator here to join me for this one. See a couple options. As Moreland gets set to put the ball back into play. And he patiently brushes that one up through the lane. Tries to straight again. That time Munoz stayed home. And Moreland calls his second time out. See him trying to get loose here. And get a good look there at Brandon Munoz. Looking to come up with a stop here. Speeding up his defense a little bit. As Moreland fires that one long, well struck. It's now 4-1. So Moreland coming out firing, and Munoz goes with a little reverse push kick. Finds that long hole, it's now 4-2. As 
Moreland tries to come along the wall. <laughs> we just clear attempt blocked by his two bar. Fires that one on goal and gets it to kick around and dribble in, and it is 4-3. And you hear that yell on the table, Mike. Sounds like Sullivan ruined Michael Bates. Maybe close to advancing and open doubles. Moreland, very patient on the five. Using his entire shot clock. With a chance to put away game number one. Fires that one long, and Munoz is able to jump out there, and he puts a right hook from the five bar on goal, but Moreland able to get back there and keep it out. Oh, Moreland spikes that one back and able to grab it on his three. So chance to tie here for Brandon Moreland, and he flips one up over the light back onto the table. So that will... Be put back into play by Brandon Moreland. And he kicks that one up off the table, so now it'll be Brandon Munoz's turn. That alliteration is going to kill me throughout this match. Munoz puts the ball back into play. And there's that clear and chase, and he redirects it into the goal, acknowledges that. It's not really what he was trying to do. Pretty obvious, but it's 4-4. You cannot let a player like Brandon Munoz hang around. Gorgeous pass there from Moreland. Brushed up nicely. And Brandon Moreland looking to finally put away game number one. Tries the middle, and Munoz keeps it out. Moreland tries to go with a quick left hook. Now thinks better of it. Munoz denies that pass temp. And then Moreland hammers that one through. Moreland passing at a very high percentage early here. As Moreland now again looking to put away game one. He's out of timeouts. Fires the straight. Munoz jumped and he's upset with himself as you see Moreland so if you don't know anything about these guys game you never seen them play before Brandon Moreland gonna control the pace try and slow things down Brandon Munoz's game is to go 100 miles an hour fling the ball around the table as fast as he can it's exciting to watch Clay Toomey was doing statistics for us the other day on Brandon's, one of Brandon's matches. His average shot time, I think, is under three seconds. Rarely shoots outside of the first five seconds he has the ball on the three. Always a danger to stuff a ball back into a goal. If you haven't seen it, he has one of the best pull kicks in foosball. So Munoz gets it underway. That pass a little high, ends up on goal, but Moreland keeps it out. Munoz goes quick again to the far side. And you see him there hammering that ball. Looks like he realizes. Looks like a little bit more time there. Pulled that one. Good shot from Munoz. Now one nothing for him. Oh, gorgeous pass there. It looked like Munoz was just a little off on that one, but Moreland works that one beautifully. Since that five bar, or excuse me, pull shot into the corner. Sorry, folks, getting late into the weekend here. As Munoz flips that one to the middle, and Moreland does a nice job keeping that one out. that clear and chase from Munoz as he's able to get his five down, give himself for a chance for some defense here. 
Moreland tries a hook and loses the handle, but it rolls back to his goalie area. Puts that shot on goal, and Munoz is able to keep that one out. Well struck. Munoz having trouble clearing here as Moreland gets the takeaway. Fires long, sounds like he clipped the wall. Fires that one long and gets it that time now, 1-1. One, one. And Brandon scoops that one from the five bar into the goal. And that noise that you heard and that cheering was Sullivan Rue and Michael Bates defeating and eliminating Dewey Culpepper and Marcus Heyman. Uh, as Moreland fires that one long to advance to fourth or better and open doubles. Sullivan continues to have herself quite a weekend. She's playing forward in that pairing. They're not switching. As Moreland now looking to clear. And Moreland able to grab that one. And Moreland gets that one to kick around and into the back of the goal, and that gives him the lead now, 3-2. Favor of Moreland on the left of your screen. in his time. Tries to go push side, puts it into the wall, but grabs the rebound. And goes right back to that push side quickly, and it's 3-3. And Brandon Munoz calls timeout. He loves calling those timeouts after he ties up a game. So we get a look at him here. The other Brandon. Taking a seat, blending in with the crowd. Thinking about what he wants to do next. Oh, no, I lied to you guys. That match over on three is still going. Oh, they're playing for fourth, so it's going to be three out of five. So that must have just been them winning the second game. And the Brandons jump right back into it. As Moylan has a chance to regain the lead here. Fires that one down the middle. It's now 4-3. And Brandon Moreland going to use his first. So again, you see difference in approach here. Brandon doesn't want to leave the table. He's got an eye over on that match on three. Moreland now reapproaching the table. And we are ready to get back underway. through the lane as he's looking to tie here. Taking his time. Fires near side and Moreland able to keep it out. And Munoz fires that one home. It's now 4-4 here in game number two. Just joining us, Moreland did take game number one. That one was 4-4 as well. After Moreland got out to a lead, Munoz came firing back, but Moreland able to hang on. Now Munoz trying to do the same thing again. And Moreland wants to think about it again. This time he stays put, doesn't go to the bleachers. Munoz never gets very far from the table. He gives us a little smile here in the booth.
Brandon Moreland will have the first chance to put away game number two, and he mis-executes. Munoz tries to clear and chase, and Moreland picks it off. Brandon Moreland. Fires it long. Oh, nope, sorry. Another ball went to another goal <laughs> right next to me. It sounded like it went. Brandon Munoz was able to keep that one out. So game number two is not done yet here. Okay. Now that report I gave earlier about the open doubles match is accurate. Moreland again. Fires that one down the middle, and Brandon Moreland gets out to a two-game-to-nothing lead. You see Brandon Munoz putting his head against the wall. It's funny, we're seeing Brandon Munoz slow down, which in my head reads is Brandon Moreland controlling his pace. Usually Munoz the one that speeds things up, gets players off their pace. But Moreland actually getting Munoz to slow things down a little bit. Not something people have had a lot of success doing. Past 10 block back, so he'll look to clear. And he's able to find his three bar. Marlon now looking to clear. better defense here this first ball of game number one as Munoz able to take that one away little discussion everybody making sure that nobody jarred anybody all is good and then Munoz fires that one gets a little vocal as he finds that far corner and Munoz denies Moreland's five bar attempt Marlon doing a great job on the five. This Munoz keeps that three bar shot out. And a beautiful reverse push kick from Marlon. Finds 10, and it's now 1 1. Munoz hammers that one near side. 2 1, and Munoz calls timeout. He yells to himself, and he's pumped up. Brandon Moreland, on the other hand, cool as a cucumber. The euphemism I don't really understand. I've never encountered a... Cool cucumber. And again, folks, table number two is over on the Foosball Sports Network on Twitch, and you got a good one going on over there. Jay Burt and Tommy Atkinson out of Oklahoma about to take on Blake Robertson and Shannon Coley in open doubles as we are back underway here, and Munoz is able to snag that one. And Moreland gets some takeaway right back. And again, good passing from Moreland. And Moreland tries to roll it straight out there, but Munoz stays home. And Moreland fires that one long, so 2-2. Two, two. Haven't seen a left hook from Brandon Munoz yet, but we saw a little angle brush that looked like he did it on purpose, but that big left hook he does from the near side 
we haven't seen yet. Wouldn't be surprised if we got one of those this match as he fires that one into the wall. Oh, and Moreland tries to go with a push kick, and Munoz spikes it home, and it's now 3-2. Moreland tries a left hook. Munoz got the ball flying around, now that's how he likes it. As that one gets back on him, he jumped, physically left his feet, trying to get back on that one, it's now 3-3. And Moreland calls timeout. As Moreland, I think, despite getting that ball, realized Munoz trying to, starting to heat up a little bit, so maybe cool him off. It's Munoz. Now trying to defend Moreland's clear. Surveying both sides of the table. Comes back to the push side and calls a second time out. Munoz looked at him confused. So... If you can confuse your opponent by calling timeouts, that's probably not bad gamesmanship. Again, Munoz, don't think he took his hands off the rods. Well, still looking to clear. And he is able to find his five eventually. The good passing from Moreland continues. Love to see the stats on that. And Moreland fires that one down the middle now, 4-3. It is now match ball for Brandon Moreland. Brandon Moreland with a chance to put it away. Has that one stab back his way, but he does well to keep it out. And Moreland puts that pull kick up the table a little wide into the wall. So Munoz will now try to clear a ball he has to have to stay alive. Down two games, nothing here in the third. Moreland clears and chases, and Munoz is able to get a hand back there in time to reel that one in. Now he's surveying both sides of the table, tries a push kick, tries to go get it, but it comes back to him before that. And Munoz fires that one home, and it's now 4-4, still match ball for Moreland. And Moreland, beautiful brush down. A chance to make it 3 nothing on his way to a king seat. And he all, got him with a change up. The look on his face, you could tell he did not mean to do that. That was a mis-execution, but an effective one. And in three straight games, Brandon Moreland has defeated Brandon Munoz to take the king seat. Impressive showing for Moreland. Ben don't break attitude as Munoz came firing back in all three games after Marlon had an early lead. And that man right there has the king seat after 3 0 Blake Robertson and Brandon Munoz on the way to that king seat. Impressive showing for Brandon Marlon. Well, folks, if you're just joining us, this is Inside Foos' coverage of 20, the 2022 Mississippi State Championships. My name is Keith Glenn. Happy to be here keeping you company if you couldn't make it to the tournament. We've got a lot of good foosball left to come. We are free on Twitch and YouTube at the moment. But I was told that it's going to be a little bit for, before we get another match on one after that one. So I'm going to step away, take a quick break when I can. And as soon as we get another match going, we'll continue to bring you all the action live from table number one.
And we welcome you back to inside Foose's coverage of the 2022 Mississippi State Championships. Got a good one for you here on table number one. This is for fourth or better and open singles. Tampa crowd. Showing up, Eric Hiltner, Blake Robertson. If you are joining us on YouTube and Twitch, unfortunately, the way I'm set up here this weekend, I can't see the comments from YouTube, but I can see the comments on Twitch. Got a few during that last match. I got wrapped up, and it was a good one between Brandon Moreland and Brandon Munoz. Brandon Moreland coming out on top in three games. But I do just want to say I see those comments that were made during that match, and I appreciate the kind words, and it was a good one. Moreland out to early leads in all three before Munoz would come storming back, but Moreland able to hang on in all three. He also put Blake Robertson in the loser's bracket in three straight. So Brandon Moreland sitting king seat, playing very, very well today. This is going to be a fun one. Blake's got some family sitting in the crowd. Come and see him play. Blake, of course, from Mississippi originally. Hailing out of Tampa now. He and Shannon Coley just a moment ago defeated Tommy Atkinson and Jay Burt out of Oklahoma. Tommy's out of Oklahoma. I think Jay Burt's out of Mississippi. But they advanced to fifth or better on that side. So we got some good ones getting ready to come up for you here as we get into the thick of things on a Sunday afternoon. The other side of the bracket to get to fourth, Terry Rue was playing Dewey Culpepper. I know it went five games, and the result hasn't been put in yet, so I don't know who won that one. Dewey was up two games to one. Terry came firing back, and I don't know who got the fifth, but if I can get somebody's attention over there, might be able to get an update. All right, looks like Terry Rue came back and won that match. Dewey Culpepper playing very well this weekend. Played for the King State in open mixed, and now he's waiting to play the loser's bracket final with his partner, Maggie Strong. Open doubles him and Marcus Heyman. Made a good deep run before eventually being eliminated in the game for fourth by Sullivan Rue and Michael Bates. And it looks like we are ready to get underway. Blake's family already cheering for him as he's going to have a chance here to get open scoring. Fires that one to the far hole, and Eric 
able to keep him out. So on paper, Blake, the stronger singles player, but Eric, one of the best defensive players out on tour. If anybody can slow Blake down, it's Eric. So he tries that inside bank there, and Blake all over it. And Eric able to chase that one up the table and grab it on his three rod. Throws a little hitch and able to get that one to go. That's, didn't look like that's what he meant to do, but it counts. As Blake able to force that one through. Blake fires near side and it's 1-1. And his family giving him cheers already from the stands. As Blake gets the takeaway there on the five bar. And hammers that one through the lane. Goes quick to the push side. He's going to do that a lot. That's his favorite shot. He can hit the heck out of that ball. And he's got a great eye for holes early. Eric knows that, though. Able to jump out there. Oh, typed in all that match data and didn't put it up for you. There we go. Eric gets that inside bank up the table. Looks like it might have clipped the inside corner of the goal. And Blake going to go with a 2-5 to five here. And he mis-executes that one and turns it into a bank shot. Now 2-1 for Blake. Eric brushes down to that far wall. Eric fires near side. Blake was sitting out there waiting for him. But Eric grabs the rebound, splits him that time, goes short. And it's now 2-2. Blake, quick shooting again. And that outside bank attempt is picked off by Blake. Goes to the high lane, but can't hang on to the pass. So Eric again looking to clear. <laughs> Blake seems to have a beat early, at least, on all of Eric's bank attempts so far. And again. And Eric just tries to clear it and chase, but Blake able to corral it. And Eric stuffs that one back into the goal. Wasn't a clean stuff, but it counts, so 3-2. Like tic tac to the lane. Just tries to sh quick shoot to the short push side, and Eric blocks that up off the table. Five. That one a little deflected back to Eric's goalie area. And Blake does well to keep that one out as it was headed for 10, but now he's going to shoot after two failed two to five attempts. And right back to it. And he has another one get tipped and dribble in. So now 3-3. Three, three. Good high lane there from Eric. And Blake blocks that one up off the table and into the wall. <laughs> I don't know what these guys are laughing at, but they're giggling about some. Blake goes to the two to five. And Eric picks it off. So, see if he can convert here. Tries to go push side, and Blake beats him out there. Looks like Blake might know that Eric's strong side is his pull side. As Eric intercepts that 2-5 to five again. Eric's shooting off center, giving himself a little more room to the pull. 
Tries to come down the middle and Blake keeps it out. And again, Blake banks one with the left hand from the two bar and ends up on goal, but Eric is able to keep it out. Eric calls timeout. He wants to think about it. And we are ready to resume play here. So Eric puts the ball back into play, tries an inside bank. able to steal that one away. Goes with a little reverse push kick and it's now game ball for Eric Hiltner. This is for fourth or better so we are deep enough on the elimination side that this is three out of five. As Blake able to eventually work that one along the wall. Fires that one right down the middle now four four. And Eric able to hang on to that one after it deflected off of Blake's five, and he fires that one far side. And Eric Hilder takes game number one. And we are back underway here. Blake with the off the wall, back to the wall. Tries to come near side. Eric's staying out there. Oh, and high lane just a little too high for Eric. Blake goes far wall from the with the two to five there, so gets that one through. And Eric does well to get a hand back there and dig that out. Chance to open scoring for him now. Sits up way off center, loses the handle. He's going to burn it. Hilton now puts the ball back into play. Tries to come near side. And again, and Blake again blocks it with that two bar. And the ball leaves the pit. Blake tries a slingshot. Eric gets a big piece of that. And his pull kick is denied as well. And he goes with the slow spray. Gets that to tuck between Eric's men. And it's now one nothing. And Eric's off the wall attempt is nicked into the goal, so now 1 1. Eric brushed that to the wall, but he popped off with his three bars. Blake quickly advances that, tries a flippy. Defense rewards him with another three bar possession. Fires that one quickly to that far side. That's his shot. And it's 2-1. And again, he's able to quickly clear and grab the ball on the three. Fires near side quickly that time, and Eric able to keep it out. Eric tries a slingshot, and goes a little awry, but eventually finds his five. A nice brush down to the wall there from Hiltner. And his near side rollover temp is whiffed on. 
flex it again, tries to go to the near side, can't get it, but he does catch the rebound. Rockman taking a little more time there and comes back to the near side, now 2-2. Two -two. Blake just lost that one, trying to dig it out. And Eric able to get that one to go, so now 3-2 for Hiltner. Again, Hiltner did take game number one. That one goes the long route, but does find Bleak's three. Fires that one home, and it's now 3-3. Three, three. Bleak tries an inside bank. Effective clear. And Blake, nice job getting back there to get that one away from his goal. And Eric, nice steal there as Blake threw a little extra hitch into that clear attempt. And again, Eric tries to come pull side, and Blake able to get out there. Blake gets one down the table that checks out every part of the goal but the back. And Eric's Blake or bank attempt is picked off by Blake, who just quickly fires down the middle, and it's now 4-3 in flavor of Robertson. Good lane pass there from Hiltner. Got Blake the bell to the wall. And Hitler now trying to equalize. Fires far side, and Blake again equal to it. Blake goes to the 2-5 to five quickly. Brushing that one to the wall. And Robertson fires that one down the middle. And it is now one game apiece. Fist bumps from the fam. Fires a big pull kick on goal, but can't beat the zone. However, he is able to grab the rebound. Tries to go quick to the push side, and that's blocked. Oh, and Blake trying to put on a little bit of a show for the family, trying to flip an aerial down the table. Quickly brushes that one back to the far wall. Speeding things up now. Good Lord. Something very raucous just happened all the way across the room. Got everybody's attention. As Eric's push side attempt is blocked up into the air and corralled by Robertson. So Hiltner, after corralling that ball, tries to come down the middle. Slingshot attempt ends up on Blake's five. Fires quickly to the near side. It's now one nothing. And that 
Here comes the rest under Eric's five. Blake got up there to defend the five with his left hand. That pays off. He's able to get the steal and quickly pounds that one to the near side. It's now 2 nothing. It's a good shot. Good time to mix it up for Blake. As Eric can't catch that one off the back wall, and Blake tries to go quick, but Eric was still sitting there. Eric taking a little bit more time now. Fires that one to the far side, able to get around Blake's defense. It's now 2 1. Another good far wall brush from Blake. They couldn't quite hang on, so Eric digs it out. Looking to pass. Goes to the high lane. Blake got a big piece, but it still made its way through. And Blake stacked up on that pole side. You can tell that's where Eric wanted to go, but unable to keep the deflection out. So we're all tied up at two here in game number three. Hildner took the first, Roberts in the second. And beautifully brushed down to the far wall by Hiltner. Got the one around, but couldn't get it to go. It's Robertson able to work that one to his five bar. Oh, gorgeous. Hesitation wall. Quickly pounds that one to the far side. Now 3-2. can hear the family getting into it. See, I was about to say almost steals away, but he does. Crafty five bar work. Drops his wrist, takes an extra second, fires far side. It's now 4-2 in favor of Blake Robertson. Job getting keeping that one out. Throws a big pull kick to the far corner. Can't beat the zone. I don't know if Eric realized. Yep, he did. There you go. <laughs> and Blake gets a big piece of that past 10, but it trickles all the way in. So that cuts the lead in half now 4 3, and we get a timeout called. See Eric working hard, sweating a little bit. Blake as well. And Robertson gets the ball back into play, looking to close it out, tries a quick straight, and Hiltner greets him there. Off the wall attempt, blocked, and Eric just slings it around and does a near wall pass. Good execution there as he has a chance to tie it up and fires near side and does. It's now 4-4. Four, four. Well, 4-4 four, four in the third at one game apiece. Can't get any closer than that. As Robertson pass deflected, but still corralled. Taking an extra second here. Fires near side, clips the wall. And Eric going to call his second timeout. Like, look at the crowd there. Tommy Atkinson, Dewey Culpepper. TYB, Mike Jenshin. TY just to the right of him. Can't really get a good look at him. And there's Blake in the wall. Clear there. A little added effort. 
Oh, wow, and a great dig out. Rod throw there as the ball from table two comes over and hits Eric in the back, doesn't let it phase him. Hits the outside bank. Great series there, starting with the phenomenal stop. Again, his backhand there to throw that rod and keep that out and then hit that, ignore the ball, hit him in the back, and then hit a big outside bank. So we will go to the fourth game with Eric Hiltner. Up two games to one. Oh, we got to look at Eric there. Blake has vacated the pit area. Probably go get some water. See the Rue sitting up on the far side of the bleacher. Corey Taylor, Taylor uh, Terry Rue sitting next to each other. They are waiting to play the open doubles king seat match. They'll be squaring off against Jason Wicks and Warren Van Landingham Jr. out of the state of Texas. Good showing from those two. makes his way back into the booth. Or not booth, I'm in the booth. He's in the pit. And we are back underway. Conversation about a jar here. I love these sportsmanship timeouts. Eric was the one that said, hey, did I get you? Blake said, I don't know that I would have called it. But they're having a conversation, and Blake's going to take it on the five. Great sportsmanship. Love to see it. Oh, Blake looked like he misexecuted there. Tries to do a quick pull kick. And that one's off the mark, too. Goes with his pull shot. We he had that. Yeah. Excuse me. Sorry, folks. Getting late on Sunday here. And that one's blocked above the table. What I was trying to say is Blake has a great pull shot, too. Obviously, he shoots his rollover a majority of the time, but we have seen him bust out a very effective pull shot. There's Eric bluffing bank here. And rolls it into a reverse pull kick. And Blake angles that one on goal. Can't beat the zone. Hiltner now fires a pull shot at the table, but Blake sends it back his way, and again, and this time he's able to clear the three. Blake quickly advances it, though. Fires to the far side. Ball flying around. Nobody can grab it. it comes to rest under Eric's two bar. Eric throws a push kick down the table that Blake intercepts and fires on the middle, but again... Eric's defense standing tall. Oh, and a stuff there and a little giggle from these two. Nice brush down there from Hiltner. Tries a reverse push kick. Doesn't get it. Blake going to shoot now out of the back. Back his way. He's going to shoot again. Bluffs a slap shot. Sends it one up just wide of the goal. Eric able to hang on. Eric's pull kick denied. Slaps that one down the table, but it comes back his way. Yeah. 
And that clear attempt off Blake's back man, and Eric collects the rebound, so chance to tie now. Fires that one down the middle, and it is turned away. And Eric dials a big slingshot. And that ties things up at one apiece. And Eric takes that one away from Blake. Good five bar D. Eric, excellent five bar defender as well. As he continues to give Blake fits before he eventually pops that one through the lane. Fires that one on the far side, now 2-1. Eric looking to equalize. Fires that to the far side, gets it out there, and it's now 2-2. More good five bar D from Eric. And Blake again eventually figures it out. Hammers that near side. That was good and deep. He's now three up 3-2. Up three oh, and a big push kick down the table. Sprayed to the far corner for Hiltner, and timeout is called. All tied up at three apiece. See Eric there after that big shot. That one along the near wall. And waits for the middle to open up and fires at home now 4-3. So Blake Robertson one ball away from sending this to a fifth game. All right, more good sportsmanship. That never gets old. As Eric spikes that one on his misexecuted pass. Angles in, and it's now 4-4. It is now match ball for Eric Hiltner. Almost takes that one away and before Blake puts it through, so Blake's going to have the first shot at it. Fires far side, and we are going to a fifth and final decisive game. And we are back underway here as Hiltner puts the ball back into play nicely through the high lane, and he's going to have a chance to open scoring. He's been shooting better lately. Blake seemed to have a beat on it early, and he fires that one near side. Now 1-0. Good pass in there from Blake. And Eric able to jump out there and get that pull side attempt. Flies up off the table. Eric Holtner. 
Goes with the bank and ends up wide, and the rebound is grabbed on the three bar by Blake. Oh. <laughs> I think Blake might have misfired that. He said, my bad. Looked back here at me and gave me a little laugh, and Eric said he touched it. So everyone having a little fun with that one. That was a little kind of quirky shot. Nice pass from Hiltner through the lane when his quick shot attempt is denied, but he gets the rebound. So now Hiltner fires that one down the middle. Good eye there for Hiltner. He's got a 2-1 lead. Reminder, this is the elimination side of the bracket, so this is win or go home. As Robertson pops that one through the high lane, goes back to that same tap offense, and this time Eric keeps it out. That lane passed just a little off the mark. And Blake goes back to the two to five. And that pass a little high. So Hiltner now. Oh, wow, that was a very angled down shot, or pass, excuse me, as Hiltner sets up for the rollover. Fires that one to the near side, and it's now 3-1. And Hiltner will call his first time out. He's two balls away from... I'll call it an upset. I think most people would, but I like both these guys, so. Don't want to say it, but this would be a pretty big win for Eric. So he hammers that one through the lane. Actually, I think Eric's only a pro in singles. Master goalie. But I think he's only a pro in singles. I have to check that when we get a break here. But anyway, in the meantime, Robertson looking to cut the lead. He can't there. Oh, nice craft little pass back to the wall. And fires that one. And again, Holdner denies him. So Holdner clamping down here on defense. Blake denies that one and steals that one. So Robertson again blocked up off the table by Hiltner. So Eric Hiltner really putting on a show defensively here. So we see Blake trying to dry off that wrap. We've seen Blake in this position before. He's capable of finding his groove and coming back from a big deficit. Is that ball? Off the inside corner of the goal and right back to Blake's three. And again, Holner denies him and grabs the rebound. So oh, Holner slaps that one up the table, grabbed on the five by Blake. He quickly, that was a long ball pass, and he hammers a pull shot and gives the rod a toss. He didn't really toss, he let it go. But great pull shot, deep pull shot from Blake, and Holner now chance to respond and Blake gets the block he needs Blake giving a little audible <laughs> little shout there as he's getting into it down a goal here he's going to go two to five bounces it off the wall kicks around that was headed for the goal Eric does a nice job to keep it out but Blake grabs it on his three Robertson, show and push side, eventually goes short to that side, grabs his rebound. Sets up for the pull and fires a little rolling straight. And it's now 3-3. Hiltner, been kept off the board for a while. Trying to change that, fires near side. He got Blake on the switch there, and it is now match ball for Eric Hiltner. There is overtime, so if Blake gets this, we will be playing extra balls. As he caresses that one through the lane. Went to set up for the rollover, but now says, I'm going to shoot my pull shot. Two for two. 
Tries that one down the middle, can't get it to go. Grabs the rebound, sets up quickly, takes his time, tries to fire long, but puts it into the wall. Hiltner slaps that one off the inside wall, and Blake does a nice job catching that off the back wall. After all that, Blake calls an emphatic timeout. Blake going to adjust his wrap situation as he's been sweating into that one for a minute now. Somebody offers him a fresh wrap. Doesn't take it. both players sweating. It's a little warmer in here today than it has been the last few days. The air conditioner's been holding up, but it is a little, a little hotter in here today. And obviously both these guys fighting hard. And we are set to resume play. As both these players have used one time on, I believe, and Blake puts it back into play, looking to send it to overtime. Goes back to his rollover, fires that to the far side, and we're headed for extra balls. Nicely through the high lane for Hiltner. Taking a little more time here, tries the near side, and again, Blake able to get out there, but Hiltner grabs the rebound with his five and gives it a quick little poke, and that Gets in the goal, and again, it's match ball for Blake Robertson. Or, excuse me, Eric Hiltner. Blake Robertson needs this ball to stay alive, but Hiltner's got a shot. And fires that one to the far side, and in five games, by a score of 6-5, to five, or 6-4, to four, excuse me, Eric Hiltner has defeated and eliminated Blake Robertson. Great match from Eric Hiltner. Incredible defensive effort. Started some hot shooting. Looked like Blake had found his groove at the end, but Eric got just enough stops to keep him out. And so congratulations to Eric for advancing. That's a big win for him. Blake Robertson, one of the best singles players on the world. And just looking it up, yeah, Eric Hiltner is just a pro in singles. But obviously not playing like it. Great match for Eric. Take a quick peek around the breast of the bracket before I step away for a moment here. As I mentioned before, Terry Rue did manage to beat Dewey Culpepper in that match that was going on over my left a little while ago. So now... Hiltner will be advancing to play Rue. Winner of that going on to play Brandon Munoz, and they're all trying to get back to Brandon Moreland, who put on an incredibly impressive performance. 3-0 in Blake Robertson, and then 3-0 in Brandon Munoz to take the king seat. So I'm sure we'll get the rest of that, as well as the conclusion of the pro singles final, where 10 competitors are still trying to fight, or nine competitors are trying to fight their way for a shot at double dipping Sullivan Rue as well as open doubles, where there are five teams left. Shannon Coley, Blake Robertson will be squaring off against Eric Hiltner and Tom Yore for a shot to play against Sullivan Rue and Michael Bates. And that king seat match is yet to come too. Actually, I think that's gonna be probably, that might be the next match we get. We'll find out in a moment, but like I said, I'm gonna step away for a moment here. We'll be back as soon as we get another match call here on Inside Foos.
And we welcome you back to Inside Foos' coverage of the 2022 Mississippi State Championship. We got a good one for you here on table number one. This is for the elimination bracket final. On the left of your screen, that's going to be Dewey Culpepper and Maggie Strong. On the right, and that's Keisha and Terry Rue. This is a rematch of a match that happened earlier in the bracket. Dewey and Maggie put Terry and Keisha into the losers, or elimination. And then Dewey and Maggie dropped the king seat match to Brandon Munoz and Isabel Stelly. So the winner of this one will go on to play those two. And it looks like I'm going to be have the opportunity. There might be a chair in that closet. Jason, can she, there might be Adams. Locks, quote unquote. All right, sorry about that, folks. Oh, wow, we are hopping right into this. I'm going to be looking up at you the whole time. You might have to hold the mic. Yeah. What did you? We're good. All right. Well, after all that commotion, we are underway here. It's still 0 0. But I have the pleasure of being joined once again by my good friend and colleague, Hannah Smith. Hannah, thanks for sitting in with me. Hey, hey. Yeah, glad to be here. This is fun. It's going to be a good final. I played both of these. Both of these teams beat me um, in mixed. So I'm glad they both made it here. It makes me feel a little bit better. Yeah. <laughs> Terry fired that street on that pole shot to make it one nothing. as Keisha does a good job tonight. Do we? You comfy up there? Do I? You comfy up there? Yeah, I'm good. We ran out of chairs here in the booth, so <laughs> Hannah's sitting on her equipment cases. It's uh. You got the ooh. best seat in the house. Absolutely. A little ele elevated angle. You can actually see the table. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so Keisha looking to clear. Oh, Sick. beautiful pass to Terry's three. Terry taking his time here. Tries to wait Maggie out, and she jumps out there to greet him. Maggie tries to pass, but that clips the wall. Maggie's goalie game has really improved um, over the past few tournaments. You know, I know she's like uh, strictly forward in women's, but watching her play mix and getting better at it has been like really cool because I've seen her goalie game grow a lot in the past few months, which is, she works hard. She works hard at what she does and she's really came back and um, been a really, really tough competitor in almost every event she plays in men's, women's, it doesn't matter. And now in mixed. Yeah, normally even in mixed, she would try to, you know, Try and find a goalie, try and play forward. Absolutely. Such a strong forward as Terry fires that one long. It's now 2 1. Yeah. And Dewey unable to catch that one off the wall, but almost caught the rebound. Maggie does a good job to keep that one off Terry's three bar. So, this is the first time we got to talk. I had to tell you, I was cheering for you earlier. Oh, in singles? Yeah. That yeah, was, that was cool. You guys put on a really good show. Thanks. Yeah, we had a good time. It's always a good time when uh, Sully and I play, and it's always tough, but uh, there's a lot of love there. So yeah, um, it's always a respectful game. We're both hype, but uh, it's sweet when we both make it to the finals. We're both all happy, so, or everybody's happy. Yeah, overtime in the third game and the second set. Can't yeah, better than that. Yeah, for sure. Um, one thing I want to mention um, about the ruse here. Um, I played them just a minute ago, and I don't know if I've seen Terry's five bar be better than it was when we played them. And just throughout the weekend, I've seen him have really, really like amazing streaks on the five. I think he may have got one, or two, three passes blocked the entire match. Like it was on fire. So love to see that from Terry. And of course, Keisha back there is always just a rock. 
she's going to clear the ball. She, you know, she's going to get the blocks. And she had a really clutch block, um, really smart defensive change, and um, I just think a lot about them. There Terry go. fires that one down the middle now, 3-2. I'm interested to see uh, Dewey's shot selection here. He has so many options, and um, I don't know if he's going to be able to get away with a lot of the things that he does on other people with uh, um, against Keisha. Yeah. You know, I think she's um, she's aware of that. She knows how to handle that. She knows how to deal with, um, you know, just different setups, different things off that rollover. So I'm interested to see if and when he um, uses those other options because he definitely has them in the bag. Nice course. Uh, as we mentioned, the winner of this goes on to play Brandon Munoz and Isabel Stelly. Yeah. And we'll get a conclusion on this open mixed event, saving the final for the final day here. As Culpepper now gonna have a chance to tie this up. And actually, oh, as he gets that one to rattle home, uh, worth noting, Terry and Dewey squared off within the last hour in open singles. Okay, went, okay. Went five games after Dewey had a 2-1 lead. Terry Rue came back and got that one in the fifth. So these guys just saw each other. Maggie, nice job getting that one, and Terry throws one out there, buries a long pu push kick, and it's now 4-3. Terry Rue gets the takeaway on the five, and Dewey playing strong defense on the five, able to steal that one away and advance it quickly. Walk, takes his time, fires nice, to the far nice side. side. It's now 4-4. Four, four. Great call, good time out there. We had some pretty uh, interesting timeouts when we played them, too. Um, you know, we took ours pretty early on, but we really wish we would have saved one of ours for the 4-4 ball. It was We had to come back from 3-1 when we played, but um, those timeouts are critical. I think I should have used them more in my singles match, so it's fun whenever you're sitting over here and not uh, stressed out and you get to watch everybody else yeah. um, use them correctly. Yeah, we've had a lot of good foosball here this weekend. They had a better turnout than I think they were expecting. Yeah, absolutely. It's so cool to be in Mississippi and in your hometown, and you see all these great players and all this talent in the same room. So I'm proud. I'm a proud Mississippi girl. <laughs> We've had some good ones. The if the open doubles fourth or better match between Shannon Coley and Blake Robertson and Tom Yor and Eric Hiltner. A lot of people had money. That might have been the final matchup, but that's going on over on table number two on the Foosball Sports Network over on Twitch. As Dewey now trying to wow, take tries it. tries to cut again. And big block there by Keisha to keep it out, but Dewey catches the rebound. So Dewey again, opportunity to put away game number one. Fires nice. that one down the middle. Step over back to the middle. And after being down 4-3, you got to have the confidence to shoot that cut on a 4-4 ball. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, and I know it's no problem for him execution-wise. He's usually going to put it on goal either way. But for me, when I was working those cuts, it's like, I don't I can't control how much it cuts. You know, it's like sometimes it cuts way back, and then sometimes it's like barely cutting. So, like, to me, that was for me who can't execute as well as Dewey Culpepper. Um, that would be a risky shot. But I know he uses that in his arsenal. I know he practices that, and that's why he's good at it. And it just adds to what he has as a forward. Yeah, so good fight out of Maggie and Dewey. We are set to resume play here. Terry puts the ball back into play. Puts that one through the second man. It's been a high lane all day, but now it's the second man. Terry I'm okay with either one. <laughs> <laughs> I've given up. Dewey and Terry fighting for the ball. Eventually it's Dewey that comes up with it. And brushes down. Good wall there for Dewey, and he has a chance to open scoring here. Fires to the far side, clips the wall. Keisha digs it out, looks to clear. Pass was on the mark, but Dewey got a piece of it. And that first match, the first game, excuse me, it did look like Terry and Keisha were cruising. You kept mentioning Terry playing very good five bar offense. Dewey seems to have stepped up his five bar D a little bit since then. Yeah, and these two know each other. Like you said, I know they played against each other in singles, but they're aware of each other. They've played before in, in open sing I mean, in open singles, um, and they've, they've played against each other in doubles. So it's a lot of back and forth here. These people know their tendencies. They know what they 
want or look for, you know, 4-4. But then again, they're both masters. They know that you know, and they know how to work around that. Um, and that's, um, like, called layered thinking. Me and uh, Dewey and I were talking about that a few months ago. Um, like you think in layers, you know, like, oh, he's expecting me to get up front and I have to go wall. Well, I'm not going to go wall. I'm going to go lane. But he knows that I know. <laughs> you know, it's just can like, it's like a it's trap. It's like the old sitcom trope. Like, <laughs> yeah. I knew that you'd know, but I knew that you knew that I'd know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah all that. <laughs> In the meantime, Dewey fired a nice brush up roll there. over and Terry had a pass get deflected into the goal. So we're 1-1 here in game number two. Terry pounds that one down the middle. He's really um, been isolating that middle this the last few matches I've watched. And it really helps his game. And he's so quick with it. You really – it's almost like you have to sit there. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you widen out any, he can get there. They have a 2-1. on be nice. Fires the long. I can hear you smacking on that thing. <laughs> this dude now looking at cutting a lead, and he does. It's now 3 2. There's some gummy worms in the booth. Okay, I'm back. They were super sour. <laughs> Terry now looking to make it 4 2. Oh, and he tried to get her with a little change up there, tried to dink that one home, but Maggie able to get back on it. These masters that are um, on the women's side are just so experienced. They run such good defense. Maggie's one that really gives me a hard time in singles because of her defense. Um, you have to change it up. You have to keep her on her toes because she she's very smart. Jessica Sandflaben, another one, really smart defensively. Of course, Keisha Rue, just a rock back there. We had the pleasure of playing Texas State, and um, she played some of the best goalie I've seen played in a long time. Wow, cool. Dewey wins. Straightens it out, yeah. Around the front guy. Ties it up 3-3, so big swing there for Strong and Culpepper. And we talk about Terry and Dewey knowing each other. Obviously, Maggie and Keisha are very familiar with each other's games. They're playing expert doubles together. I think this week, I think it was expert doubles. Yeah. Um, I don't know how they're doing, but I'm sure they will do just fine. They, um, Maggie has had some really great finishes in expert doubles, and Keisha always you know, does her spot, and she's going to hold her ground, and no matter who she plays with, if it's, you know, Matt Weber or Linda, she's going to be in the running for those events. She plays men well because, I mean, look at who she practices with or plays against. You know, she has yeah. Sully and Terry. Well, they don't – Sully doesn't play like a girl. No offense, boo. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, she's, you know, it's a different look than – we mentioned this earlier on air. <laughs> Sully's kind of given us the best headline of the weekend. She took the, that King C match in pro singles. I know. I was and they lit. played it on six. Heartbreaker. I know. We didn't get to see it, but. They had like 17 refs. It was interesting. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of people <laughs> chiming in on that one. Yeah. Sully's been playing great this weekend. I will say she's been um, absolute animal. Playing forward, not switching with Michael Bates and open doubles, and they're sitting fourth or better waiting for the winner of that match over on two. Uh, Keisha with an unfortunate turnover there. See if Dewey can make her pay for it. She's working over time, and he fires that one again to the near side. 4-3 now. It is match ball for Culpepper and Strong. Strong pass there from Terry. A ball he has to have. Taking his time, fires middle, and Maggie able to dive back. Uh, and Terry gets the stuff on the clear attempt. We get stuff. an immediate switch from the ruse. Big defensive play there. That was big. Yeah, huge after Maggie came up with a big block. Absolutely. To turn around and spike it home on her. And Keisha gets the Let's takeaway. Steal. Okay, defense. Yeah. <laughs> That's the name of the game over the last Absolutely, especially when it's 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. Yeah, you got to have it here. So Terry now will have a chance to pass score and send it to a third and final game. And Terry Rue takes the ball out, puts it back into play. 
Nice. What was that? A high lane or a second man? Second man. Oh. Chan, he nice. fires a long, great shot from Terry Rue. I could hear it in my headset him tapping that wall. But yeah. Did you get that too? Yeah, yeah. That, was, that was it. <laughs> Hit my soul. He's excited. <laughs> We're going to the third game. And uh, there's not much to this wall. Randy Raposo was like, <laughs> he was like, watch this. And the whole wall was like, going in. I was like, let's not do that. Well, so my first thought was, like, you know, the, a lot of these ballrooms have those walls that come across like that. Yeah, like and a panel. It might have been one of those, but no, that's a permanent wall. Yeah, it's not, not very durable. <laughs> Yeah, Randy Raposo Can't was leading right through it. He was like, watch this, Hannah. I was like, bone on the wall. I was like, okay, okay. Yeah, they we won't were, ever let us have nice things. <laughs> he had the same color shirt on as you and Sullivan when he was standing in the corner over there. We were joking around that he was like your corner guy, like a boxing match. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. He had some of the funniest one-liners during that match that I've heard in a minute. And we are set to get game number three underway here. Culpepper. Puts that one through the lane. Been shooting well lately. Fires that one to the far side. He had worked the middle and then pull side at the end of that last game. Good mix there for Culpepper. And more good five bar D from Dewey. Keisha with the quick clear. It's like who's sneaking up behind us? Hey, who's this guy? <laughs> Maggie puts that one just wide of the goal, and Dewey is able to grab the rebound. Good little runner there. I love that everyone started calling it that. Like, that was so new to me. I, that, that's what it's been called as long as I've no, been playing. Yeah, I just, but, um, I'm just like, the quick little brush up. It sounds so much cooler when you say, oh, yeah, nice runner pass there. Well, I feel like the, what, <laughs> the difference that makes it a runner versus a brush up is a brush up is usually like the ball's almost coming to a stop and you're okay. hovering type of thing. Okay. And what I'm calling a runner is that pull a little quicker and then just kind of popping it, brushing it up. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's a good point. I think it's a little more disguised, too, because you can do it off the roll and not such a big backswing. It doesn't have to go so deep. It's a fun pass. Yeah. Definitely cool if you can master it. Drive a lower ranked player's nuts. Yeah. Drive everybody nuts. That's true. <laughs> Good block by Maggie there. <laughs> Before Terry picks it back up and fires it, so now 1 1. Culpepper and Strong took the first game. Terry and Keisha took the second. Two now. Chance to regain the lead. Fires that one far wow, side. That one was out there. He, it's funny because most people aren't going to try and go around that front man when it's sitting out there that deep. And he's been doing it the entire match to both corners. Exactly. Yeah, he has a really good um, stroke for the long there. That really works well for him. And um, it added a lot more when he learned the cut. <laughs> Straight attempt there. Maggie gets it. I like he put that one on the wall. She's crafty back there. Yeah, getting creative. Yes. Put some quick shot. down the Oh, and oh. What could prove to be a costly turnover. We'll see if she can get it back. Flash to that middle, and he puts that one to the wall, so she gets lucky to get that one back. Terry clamping down on defense, and he's able to steal it away. Fires that one down the middle. Looks like Maggie might have gotten a piece, but not enough. It's 2-2. Yeah, that's a great shot. Um, he had a few of those on me, and it's like, man, I quote unquote, I hate when people say, oh, I blocked it. No, you didn't. Yeah. You hit the inside of your man and it went in. Like, yeah. the story of my life. It's fine. <laughs> you almost blocked it. But you know, like, you wonder how much these players really, like, Ooh. look at that. I don't know if she was trying to do that on purpose, but it looked like a beautiful outside bank out of a roll from Maggie Strong. Makes it 3 2 for Culpepper and Strong, and Dewey gets the takeaway oh, on the steal. five bar. Big possession here for Dewey Culpepper. He's trying to talk him into the straight. He fires, she blocks. The ball leaves the table. So Keisha puts the ball back into play. Dewey almost spikes that one, but goes into the corner. I would love to know Keisha's all time life clearing percentage. Imagine it's probably pretty high. Because it's up there. <laughs> I would just have to guess. As Maggie has oh, that one deflected towards out. the goal. Yeah, Keisha, nice job to avoid that one rolling in. And Dewey now looking to make it 
4-2 again. Fires and again, Keisha answers the call. So Keisha will once again put the ball back into play in a 3-2 game. And Dewey again almost spikes it, but Keisha does a great job to keep it out, and it does work its way down the table to Terry. There's a chance to tie this up at three. Maggie's blocks his last few attempts. He bluffs, resets, fires nice. down the middle. That middle has been really consistent. Yeah, that was a good call. The reset, I think maybe tighten Maggie up just enough. Right, right. Do we not waste any time getting that wall passed through? Do we Culpepper taking his time? And again, Keisha comes up with the block. If the Ruse can pull this out, it'll be on the defensive effort of Keisha Rue. Oh, that pass that was, was there. Be, yeah. Great reaction from Dewey, but then Terry gets the steal. Seems a little rushed, as it often can be. Yeah, in a tight game. Yeah, for sure. And a goalie that can get the ball out quickly. You know, Keisha is not one that sits on it forever and ever and ever and then does something. She's going to get the ball out, and you have to be ready for that. But you can't let that play into your pace of your passing. Culpepper almost gets the steal there after Strong came up with a big block, and he intercepts Keisha's pass attempt. There we go. Slow it down. Good decision. Against the wall. Time that well. And Dewey Culpepper calls timeout. Just glimpsing over my shoulder here at table number two. Looks like Blake and Chan are up 3 2 on. on Tom and Eric in the second game after Tom and Eric took game number one. And that's a loser bracket game, yeah? Oh yeah. That's, that's odd to see. King seat match, we're waiting to be played, is between Mr. Rue in oh, front yes, of us yes. and Corey Taylor and Jason Wick sitting right behind us. Very nice. And Warren Van Lady. Yeah, Very nice. As Culpepper puts the ball back into play and nice. fires is quickly. It is now match ball for Dewey Culpepper and Maggie Strong. Terry Rue going to have something to say about it first, though. As wow. he has that pass. Keeps a minute. The goal. Keeps a minute here, 4-4. Four, four. Uh, and now we're going to get the no, pass. No, because ours wasn't. It's not one by two? It's, I don't think okay. it's one by two, no. Our, our match wasn't. Okay. Although it is for ITSF points, so technically probably should be, but I doubt they're doing that since they gave us two out of three, two out of three. You know, usually it makes a single limb. Oh. Yeah. So I, would, I wouldn't say it is, but I know they're doing a new thing where, like, mixed is a qualifier, like they've started that the past few. And I know this that you do get points um, for this tournament for ITSF. Oh, there it is. Well, in the meantime, we're going to get a defensive switch here from Rue and Rue. Last time Keisha was able to steal the ball away from Dewey and called the timeout. And that time Dewey goes nicely off the wall, so Dewey Culpepper, chance to put this one away. Fires nice, that one right down, down the, the middle. middle and down to the wire. That was a great game. It was. Dewey Culpepper. I like the decision making there for um, last shot by Dewey. Speeds up the timing a little bit, doesn't take his, you know, take the full amount of time he's been taking, speeds it up. Easy pop middle, love it. And Dewey Culpepper and Maggie Strong defeat and eliminate the Ruse to advance for a rematch of the King Seat match and to play Brandon Munoz and Isabel Stelly. It's going to be a great match. Hopefully I can uh, sit in for it. Two yes, powerhouse how, teams, how man. How are the rest of your events going? Um, they're going well so far. Stelly and I um, will play Keisha and Maggie in the finals of women's doubles. Yes. Yep. That should be coming up relatively soon, I assume, but I'm not really sure. Um, pro doubles, Sully and I are two up, I think. Um, so, it's going all right. Or one, one up, yeah. Yep. Waiting a minute on that one. I think we have to play Keisha in that as well if they win. Um, oh, yeah. Keisha and Matt, if they win theirs, we play them in that too. So, it's just going to be like it's Chris all Cassick. four of us just playing. <laughs> yeah. It's Chris Cassick, and I don't know who Howard is. Gary Howard. Gary Howard. Yeah. Louisiana is Gary Howard. 
and Chris Kasich. I know he lives there now, I believe. I almost consider him a Louisiana boy. <laughs> nice. Yeah. All right. Well, taking a quick little look back over my shoulder. 4-3 in that second game over on table two. Let's see if the pro singles match is catching up, or bracket is catching up with Sully at all. Down to eight competitors in pro singles. Very nice. Warren it's a tough Van, field. It is. Warren Van Landingham, Bruce Stansel, Kenneth Dale, Tony Owens, Corey Taylor. These are some big names. Marcus Heyman, who won expert singles, and Safi Scheiber. All waiting to see who gets to play. Miss big dog, Miss Sully. Sullivan Rue. Oh, yeah. She's in top pro singles. Not biased at all. <laughs> well, I think, I mean, it's a cool story. Everybody's cheering for her. We have to re reiterate that every once in a while. Yes. Uh oh. Oh, no, okay. Not my problem. All right. Well, again, I was actually just talking about it again outside. Like that, I still think that might be the match of the weekend when her and Michael beat Shannon and Blake. Absolutely. She had another really great, I don't know, she's been playing great all weekend. I can't even say which one's my favorite match, but that one was definitely a statement. You know, yes. she came out, did her job, dictated the match. Phenomenal. In four games. Absolutely, yeah. And, oh, we had stats for that one. She dominated the five Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think Michael had a really, really, he had 100% yes. clearing percentage. In the last game, And, like, yeah. 75 the game before. Yeah. But that's that's huge. They that's so great. crucial. Um, one thing really cool at World Cup, they put the stats up on, like, the screen after um, some matches were played. James Castillo had, like, three games where he was 97% clearing. How many times Bananas. did he have to clear that he got the 95%? Like, to overall, he was, like, 95% out of 100 clearing. Oh, I, no, I get that. But oh, like, I have no idea. To only be, like, okay, so you miss one out of 20. Yeah, okay. And they played to 10. That's 95%. Yeah, there right? you go. Right? Yeah, one out of 20 is 95%. Yeah, so that's probably, okay, yeah. That's yeah. Probably it. And I was just like, wow, that's awesome. <laughs> and and him and Serge have such a cool, you know, dynamic, so. Yeah, they've been playing sense. together for yeah. Actually, they were on the radio show, and I think they said they've only really been playing together for a few years, but they've been sticking together for those three years. It matters. Yeah. Speaking of what, you hosted a little guest host on the uh, oh. did a little guest host on the radio show a couple weeks ago. Yeah, that was a good time. Yeah, Those gonna, are fun people. Actually, if you're available, would you like to sit in and if there's a match? Because they, I'm gonna go get on air with them when they uh, go yeah, live. For sure. So if you wouldn't mind filling in for me, I'd love that. Yeah, just let me know when. And if I'm not playing, I'll hang out. Awesome, I appreciate that. Entertain. So yeah, just want to look at that open doubles bracket. I think I mentioned it earlier, but yeah. Uh, Sullivan and uh, Michael Bates defeated Marcus Heyman and Dewey, Dewey Culpepper to sit fourth, and now they're waiting on the winner of that yeah. match. That's going to be a good one, man. We got a lot of good ones coming up. They're going to be packed in here, but we have a lot of good matches coming up today. Yeah. Still got a women's open doubles final. Oh, yeah. Expert doubles is moving along. Uh, you're not an expert, right? Nope. Pro? Yep. Not hanging out with the... The peasants down there in expert. Oh, I would have loved to. <laughs> Bump me down, please. They're way more cool. Who's your next match? Way matchup? cooler. Oops. Oh, you're waiting on that one. Yep. Oh, yeah, we already talked Waiting on a while. Way. All right, we already talked about everything. I think there's, I think well, there's what's Ricky? What we got going on in Ricky? I got to check on my people Bells. down there. Uh, look who's <laughs> sitting at the top of the bracket. Okay. Cool, cool. Actually, they're doing a nice little job getting through that. There's only... What is that? 15? 15? 15 teams left. Yeah, okay. One's already got limited, so... Oh, they only had 16 teams. So, yeah, 15 teams left in that one. And Brack Lindbufkin and Wesley Parrott are sitting the deepest at 5th, 6th. Waiting on a couple other matches. Yeah, um, it's interesting to see how they're going to run this one. And uh, I think they still have to play the amateur doubles final, pro doubles. And I think expert mix starts tonight. So, it's like I'm sure they're pushing to try to get that rookie bracket rolling along. Oh, nice. Bracklin's sitting king seat in amateur doubles, too. Oh, yeah. Man, he's having a good weekend. Yeah, it's on him everything he knows. Just kidding. Well, probably. At least most of it, right? <laughs> no, I'm a terrible foosball coach. Super analytical, terrible foosball coach. <laughs> He's like, Hannah, how do you shoot this or snake? I'm like, I don't know, man. You just bang it. <laughs> He's like, what? Like, where do I shift my weight? I'm like, dude, I, oh, have, I have no idea. I have questions like that all the time. Because that's what, that's what, those are the little things that throw me off. 
Yeah, yeah, he's super analytical. So him asking those questions has really made me think like, oh, maybe the reason why I'm doing this or mis-executing that is because of, you know, makes you think a little bit deeper when people start asking those detailed questions. Yeah. So that's cool. Right, yeah, no. <laughs> It is true. I actually, um, one of the other young kids that's flying up, uh, Ethan Lynn, out of yes. California. Yes. He's got like a whole thing of like, these are the things I need to focus on, and if something's going wrong, like it was just so analytical. Oh. Yeah. We, we're about to get the open mix final in here. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. You gonna hang out with me for it? Of course. Nice. I'm loving the the whole thing we have going on with the finals here. Yeah, we're getting this old. weekend. Yeah, like the walk-in, the cool walk-in thing, the the announcing, the interviews after, the cool trophy presentation right here. Like, yeah, it's makes you feel special. Cool. <laughs> Sullivan looks. <laughs> I went. Yeah. She knew you were gonna be sitting here. She wanted you to stare at it. <laughs> it's okay. Ours look identical. I thought it was mine. Oh really? Yeah. Is it yours? <laughs> no, it's not. Okay. It's hers. I put mine back over there. And that's a pretty big, good-sized trophy. It's pink yeah. or purple. How cool! Very attractive. The rookie trophy. trophies are like taller than I am. What the rookie singles trophy was? I mean, you sick. were in here with me for it. Yeah, it was Did you sick. See the expert singles was like a tiny little cup. Pro singles is literally like a glass ball. It's pretty <laughs> cool though. <laughs> I was like, ooh, what's that one? Okay, Whoa. getting rowdy over there. That was game two. Okay, that then. just made that noise. Yes. But it, so Blake and Shannon were up pretty early on that one, and Tom and Eric made it four four. That's why they're getting all pumped. They just darted the heck out of the room. I think they're only supposed to have ninety seconds, right? I mean, give or take. <laughs> That's what me and Sully were talking about when we were playing. I imagine, you know, after the game one, she like walked off, and then I went and did my own thing, and then we both come back, and then we're like, hey, can we switch? And we were like, yeah. And then I was like, I think we're like way out of time. She's like, we're not doing that. I that's like, a final, yeah. Like, nobody does that here. Yeah, that's no. for fourth or better, though. <laughs> yeah, and it's, that's what we were talking about. Like, it's so funny how no one acknowledges that rule, yet you go to, like, World Cup, and it's, like, strictly enforced. Oh, so nice. So much so that, like, when we were changing tables, changing wraps, you have to change, especially Bonzini. If I want different handles, change your handles. you got to change your wraps on your tornado table, and you only have so much time to do all that. So, like, coaches helped a lot, and most of the time I was just like, I'm just going to use whoever was here last. I'll use their wraps. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, I was thinking about the Bonzini because you can change out the handles. Can't you just leave the handle wrapped? Yes, you can. But, like, a lot of people shoot with tornado handles. And then some people shoot with actual Bonzini handles. So, like, I want this for here or this certain rod. And, like, say, Stacy played before me. Well, we use different handles. So, I would need to unscrew her, oh, too. Gotcha. Screw mine back on. Not a oh, big deal. Yeah, yeah, Correct. Yeah. Not a huge deal. But it, it does get a little time consuming when you have to change four Bonzini handles, get over there, and take the wraps off and rewrap four tornado. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for singles. It's yes. like, ooh. That's a good point. All right, it feels like it's been forever since we saw Isabel and Brandon square off against Maggie and Dewey in the King Seat match. But we're finally going to get that rematch. Oh, that was the other thing they had. They had the, um, I just saw staring at the pine glass, but they had the little flute, champagne flute things. Yeah, that was the, really cool, too. For the champions. Yeah. I think Donald mentioned, he was like, yeah, I was going to get them, like, engraved. Or, like, you know, yeah, like, have actually, the, like, event. If Mark had time, he was Very cool. Yeah. Super cool idea. I love that. Yeah. But and I, it is special. You know, it's, I don't care that it's a smaller tournament or it's not Worlds. Like, if you make it to a final, you deserve all the hype in any event. You know, get the, it's, it's about you because you made it here. And so I think it's really nice that you're doing that for rookie singles. We did it for junior singles. Like, those kids, yeah. that made their whole day. They've been talking to me after. They're like, that was so fun. Like, the interview was super cool. And I'm just like, oh, great. That's what it's about. Nice. Make it free. Come on. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, especially like maybe not so much in the lower rank stuff, but the higher rank stuff, it's like, yeah, there's not as many players here. It's a smaller state tournament. But the players that you have to get through to win that championship it's are thick. still all the big dog. You know what I mean? It is thick here. Yeah. I was telling somebody earlier, I was like, yeah, you know, most Mississippi states, they're not so, there's not so much concentrated talent in the room. Here, like, you don't get any time off. Like, at all, in any rank. And these experts here, I think Southern experts and Southern amateurs are on a different level. Oh, for um, sure. I, ju I just think that. I don't know. <laughs> There's certain areas, of course, that can compare, but 
I think that's why um, several of the Southern girls are used to playing all these guys that are, to my eyes, underrated <laughs> and that don't tour as much. And you play them with the locals, and you're like, wow, these guys are these good guys could be experts on tour, and they're like rookies. And you're yeah. like, oh gosh. <laughs> well, we've had that conversation a lot lately about, especially with these younger kids specifically, but. What used to be a rookie 20 years ago is not the case anymore, and that you know people can advance much because you don't just have to learn from the player at your local bar. Absolutely. You know, there's other resources, YouTube and the, the Foosby series, and you can go watch Jim's old videos and learn from watching game tape. Absolutely. Yes, I totally agree. And um, that's the thing Bracklin was asking me, even you know seven years ago, he was like, Hannah, how was rookie whenever you started? Have you ever won a rookie doubles? And I was like, no. I won beginner, and then I won amateur. And he was like, was rookie this good back then? And I was like, I don't know, but I knew amateur wasn't. Like, he, yeah. You know what I mean? That's not taking anything away from us winning then, but it's just like the game has improved. Like, the, Everyone overall has improved so drastically. And I don't know how many people watch film, but I feel like it, being able to watch film on Inside Foos has allowed me oh, yeah. to learn so much more about foosball in an analytical manner. You know, go and pause this. Check your zone out. See what they see what he likes to shoot on. Yeah. That's also so much that they didn't have, you know, before. So yeah. Well I'm just thinking like um, the kids that were out of their first or second tournament like over the last year that are now like high ranked amateurs on their way to expert when I met Logan was at Louisiana State. I'm, again, I've only been playing for a little over two years. Yeah. I met Logan at Louisiana State in 2020, almost about two years ago. Right. He won rookie singles. Okay. He's almost a pro. Yes. Jacob Balco was from his first tournament to making pro was less than a year. Yeah, yeah. So like, and th those guys are winning the beginner and like, if you go to a tournament, and you had to play one of those kids that was you know six seven months later an expert. Absolutely. And uh, Evan McGregor. Sam Dijon. Sam, Sam Dijon, Dijon was one that came up hot and quick. Yeah. You know, and um, and he's still so young. St These 14. kids are still so young. You know, and you, the spring, I think. even you know Evan's young, and it, it's hard not to put them in your own bracket. I was saying that about Isabel earlier today. Um, Brandon and I were talking, and um, I said, you know, it's so hard because I compare her to us, and you know, I'm like, yeah, she's got to stop, you know, d slow the pace down, and, and then I'm like. Hannah, she's been playing like a year, like yeah. maybe, and look how much she, look oh, how good she is. She's this another fast. good one. And I'm like, bro. <laughs> Louis, my, that Louisiana State I was just talking about in beginner doubles, she put me in the loser's bracket. Yeah, yeah, and, and you know, now she's whatever she's ranked now. You know, winning amateur singles, double dipping. Absolutely, people. and it's it's so hard not to compare her to where I'm at because you know she's my buddy. We play together. She's been in those tough matches, but it's like, I, man, I was nowhere near where she was is you know where she is when i was just getting into foosball like mentally yeah. physically anything so it's so cool to see that growth and it happens quickly because she's got a lot of great players that she plays against or with or you know she has that experience and that's where you're going to get the success and knowledge to move forward yeah super cool sucks for the the guys that get into it a little later in life and just have to get their butts kicked by these kids forever but I understand that Bracklin feels that. Yeah, I can relate to Bracklin on that. Good, He's good. another one kind of like me. But He's like, no one gets into it this late. Like, oh, shut up. You can do it. <laughs> I mean, there are plenty of people, you know, that are, you know, good pros, solid players that got into it later in life. Absolutely. But it's hard whenever you compare yourself to the prodigy kids. Yeah. When you Coming go look at Billy, Tony, rank, yeah. you know, and it's like, wow, they were so good. They'd already won so-and-so by then. And it's like, you can't com you can't compare that. Stop. <laughs> you know, those are the anomalies. Children that are going to be those guys, right? <laughs> like the next generation of those players. Right, right. No, it's so true. Hard to keep your head up, but. Oh, 3-3 in that game three. So that one's gonna go on back and forth. All right, just getting a little play-by-play -play update here. It's 4-3 in the third game, and Tom Yore has gotten two stuffs in a row. But Blake Robertson just responded, so now that's 4-4, four -four, and it looks like Shannon Coley is getting up front. Um, although I can't see the table or what's going on over there, I do want to mention something about, uh, oh, maybe I can from the live. Okay. Um, Tom Muir. I was watching him earlier today, and he runs he runs a really great zone. And of course, you know, him and Eric have played together multiple times. But to me, it was so interesting to watch him make decisions in the decision area between the top guy and the middle guy on his three bar when he's running defense based on who's shooting, where they're shooting, where they're shot the last time. He's so smart. 
and I was like, I never like I watched him stuff somebody earlier with his. He like got a piece of it, but missed it with his top guy. The next time, same set, he he does it with the middle guy and slams it. And I was like, wow, that was a really good decision. Like, you know, he realized that the first time. Man, I should have went and got that with the middle guy. And so that was cool for me to watch. It happened that quickly. So yeah, that's, that's experience. Awesome. <laughs> I mean, he's been doing it for a long time. Former world champion. Absolutely. I heard him described as the hardest working man in foosball. Okay. Tom was um one of the first masters that ever played open mixed with me nice. ever yeah i was terrible thanks tom shout out <laughs> <laughs> yeah i got to hang out and got to know him a little bit yesterday but uh, very nice guy he's a hoot i was so nervous i was so stressed we were playing at bardo um like maybe like 2019 or something like that i don't know he was like yeah we can play and i was so nervous and we were doing great and it ended up where we didn't finish the event everybody's like okay everybody can get your money back from mixed um we're not gonna have it. They can do that. They did it, and we were we were like doing well, like not like well, but we were like fifth, sixth or something. Yeah. And I was so excited, and he was like, "I'm sorry, buddy," because <laughs> he knew it was like my first time yeah. like playing with one of the guys. He's like, "I'm sorry, buddy. We'll have to do it again." I was like, oh, thanks. <laughs> well, now you're getting all the best players playing with you. Sometimes, sometimes I look up. <laughs> I'm thankful anytime I get to play with anybody in mixed. That's what I talking about setting goals for a late in life player. Yeah. Even if it's an amateur mixed event at Worlds. Okay. Shannon Coley is being heard by everyone in the room. Naturally. As they took that game. I was going to say, like, my goal, even if it's just an amateur mixed event at some, like, state event, I want to be good enough that, because the ladies get to pick, if it's an amateur mixed event, they can get the best amateurs in the room. Absolutely. there's only so many ladies. Absolutely. I want to get asked to play in a mixed event. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's part of one of my goals. Be like the top amateur or whatever yeah. at a tournament where I get asked to play in a mixed event. That's that's really cool. It's an elite list for the lower ranks. I'm sure. I'm sure. And uh, I see a lot of people struggling with that. You know, as a woman, a lot of people come up to me and they're like, hey, um, if anybody you know is looking for a mix if any of your friends yeah. are looking and i'm like yeah yeah and it's like these players that are asking me are really good players yeah and i'm like why don't you have a part and then i realize oh there's only like six people here that are actually eligible to play this event yeah and i'm like that is such a bummer <laughs> what's i mean <laughs> every know? time i hear like oh if there's any lady like there's always guys trying to get into a mix event it's like why do you even right. bother and like you know what i mean like if a lady needs a mix partner she's gonna find one yeah like that's not the hard part yeah but. for me it's always been about matchups i've uh i've played a few of those but um What would you like to say, Hannah Oh, very Smith? nice. I got a little play-by-play -play here on the end of that other match. It was 4-4. Eric blocked the ball, dropped wall pass to Tom. Blake got it, shot straight, two, and that is now two games to one in favor of Blake and Shannon. Oh, shot a straight pull. That's okay. Got it. He's just, he's just shooting pull shots? Oh, nice. Awesome. And it looks like we finally got the people we've been waiting on. They announced that match a while ago. I feel like we've been doing a good job sitting here riffing. Yeah. Sorry, I was making faces. <laughs> making faces at Solomon? Yeah. <laughs> Did they flip? Did you catch that? Mm, I don't know. Looks like Dewey's rapping. Yeah, okay, they flipped. All right. Just took my first bite on my Milky Way, and I'm ready. All right. There's your pregame interview with Isabel Stelly. There it was. If you guys didn't hear it, Isabel said that she was going to take her timeouts based around eating her Milky Way and her Sonic. So um, that's always a very solid strategy. You want to present that to the crowd? Yes. Show the us to the camera, right camera please. Yeah, this go. is a Sonic. Yeah. And we have the other item, the Milky Way. Very nice. That's what we're basing our timeouts around. And their corner oh, guy wow. for this match. You need to be... On a Milky Way commercial. Oh, yes. Thank you. I hope somebody clips that. I'm so done. <laughs> That's funny. Take a little look at Dewey and Maggie. Oh, Maggie disappeared. They gone. Dewey's sitting in the crowd there. <laughs> Blending in. 
There's that damn fly there. Excuse my language. So funny thing. I know. Did you, did you see it during the match? It was match? back here. It disappeared. I'm like, okay, thanks. You're like, cool, it's gone. And then all of a sudden, you guys were like having a deal. Yeah, we were like swatting it. I was like, oh, don't get distracted. And then I was like, she's going to call a timeout. And then we were both like, ah. And okay. then we like stopped. And then Bracklin said, he was sitting in the crowd. He has a white shirt on also. And like Safi and some other guy didn't know had a hat on sitting behind him. And he was like, yeah, 4-4, four, four, you got the ball in your five. I get swacked in the back. It's, and the guy behind him was like, yeah, I got the fly. And I I was like, what? He's like, yeah, you swacked it off my back, bro. <laughs> he was like, so that's what I was going through on your 4-4. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm glad you guys took care of it because that thing was pestering. No, I, I, we ne it just disappeared, and now there's one flying around back here. It could be the same flying. Yeah. Shannon said it was from all these Louisiana people. <laughs> yeah, I did. She was in here with us. <laughs> I'm just yeah, quoting. Yeah, he goes, they're the ones attracting <laughs> the flies. Right, they brought them here. A little update, three one for Jorn Holtner. Holtner over on table one. I gotta be honest, we're here doing this, but I really wish I could watch that, like actually watch that match. In this yeah, bleachers. that would be a good one. Yeah, for sure. You can see on our feed right now. There's a heck of a crowd there watching. And it's really cool that um, most of these finals have been played on Sunday, so you could tell all the people that you know around locally. They're like, hey, if you want to come see some foosball. Come Sunday. <laughs> <That's good idea. laughs> you know, you don't have to come on Saturday and stay here all that's day. That's Blake's family's here. Yeah, that's that's really really neat that that they showed up and they get to watch him do his thing. I know he's had a rough weekend with um, getting some luggage issues. Oh, so, yeah, actually, yeah. I, uh, I walked outside the airport and, like before I even got my phone out to call the shuttle. I ran into him. He's like, "Oh, I already called him." Like he didn't have a bag. He's like, and he told me what happened. Yeah, that's so unfortunate. But, I feel like that's been happening to a lot. Like I feel like it happens once every tournament. I can find somebody that I know, and they're like, "Man, I lost my bags." Like yeah. I think Tony ended up getting his like mis like lost or like maybe they were there they're late at at nationals. I think. Or maybe it was Tony. Tex Texas. Tony Spruden. He wasn't at Nationals. So, it, so it, Texas. it was Texas. Whoops. Um, and I was like, man, that's so unfortunate. But I guess with all the traveling we do, it's bound to happen here or there. Yeah, you get enough players flying over and over right. again. But the thing that I apparently come in here, there was a ton of flights that got canceled. Yeah, I was actually going to and from Seattle this past weekend or week. I was flying in and out, and we had so many issues at the airport. That's not And it's always, for me, it's always Atlanta. Um, it's That's where always, Blake lost his bag. Always a nightmare in Atlanta. That's what I, we were talking about earlier. And I was like, man, Atlanta airport. Yeah, Tommy Brewer they got stuff there Friday night. Yeah, it's not bad if you that you're just flying into Atlanta, which I've only done once in my life. Yeah. Because I can, you know, it's a six-hour ride. I can drive up there, but I okay. flew once uh, to meet up with a friend, and then we were going on a road trip from there. But if you have a connection to catch through Atlanta, it's a nightmare. Okay, I was the most proud I've ever been. We made it back um, from Seattle late night flight. Get in at like like 7 30 i had 40 minutes in atlanta to catch my connecting and i did it nice. and i wrote my mom i was like i've never been more proud yeah <laughs> i've had some close calls yeah no doubt tom and eric took the fourth game five one wow wow okay and we're heading to the fifth again that one's over on the foosball sports network on twitch you want to catch that exciting Randy Raposo being the absolute hype man in the crowd. Yeah, I didn't get the memo that apparently was you were supposed to wear red or blue today. Oh, yeah. You're wearing both. You clearly got it. Yeah, I'm in the loop. Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. The more you so, know. I normally would have been like, I don't know about that, but literally, there's so many people wearing red in this Yeah, room. I didn't even know that. I usually do Championship Sunday whites, like white on Championship Sunday is what we do in softball. But here, I like the red. I think I'm going to start doing Oh, we're underway. Okay, we got to get back on the table. Sorry, everyone. Yeah. We're red on Sunday. We're done here. It's already one nothing in favor of Brandon and Isabel. You can't miss a beat with them. They won one of these open mix matches or games. It was like less than three minutes. It took the whole game. Yeah, it's Brandon, man. He uh, he gets rolling, and you have to contain him. It's a momentum thing. You know, he's so good and has so many options. Um, you just can't let him get get free willing, as we call it. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's just, I thought that um, as Isabel does a nice job clearing there. And Isabel's a great goalie. He played the king you know? seat match as that one. Was that a stuff? I believe so. I couldn't see it too well, but I believe so. The, he played the king seat match against Brandon Moreland, and normally in singles, Brandon, especially in singles, Brandon 
gets people to speed up their game, gets them off their rhythm. Brandon Moreland actually did a really good job slowing Brandon Munoz down. As Dewey yeah. gets the five bar stuff there, it's now 2 1. Yep. And Brandon, three, Brandon Moreland three straight at him. Yeah, I saw the first game. Um, Brandon Munoz was down 4 1, makes the comeback. That was every game. Really? It wow. Was, it was. I Only think got the, first the first two went 4-4. Four, four. The second one might have been 5-3, but Moreland had early leads in all, all three. Munoz came firing back, and then Brandon did a little bend dome away. break and held on. Yeah. Really good one to watch. And Stelly now looking to clear again. And she tucks that one to the near side. Stubbed it, I think. Yeah. She can shoot that thing from back there. But great sh or effective shot either way, so they have a 3-1 lead. Cole Pepper now. Fires that one near side. Now 3-2. And Dewey. He, I want to say that he's, I mean, obviously he's playing very well. He's passing and scoring very well. But his five-bar defense has been impressive. Yeah, he, he has. Fires that one far side, and that ties things up. Now 3-3. And he's going to call timeout. Lied. She did not touch that Milky Way. Yeah, where is the Milky Way? Here we go. Get her in the dang game. Good girl. <laughs> <laughs> See, even things like that, like when you and Sully were going at it, it, you guys were clearly like so laser focused in that final. Yeah. Like, yeah. would you have been joking around like with somebody like that? We were literally joking the whole time. Well, okay, so <laughs> maybe if it's not you and Sully, but you know what I mean, like. It depends. It depends on the matchup and what you're trying to get going. Um, I don't know. Cole Pepper now, chance to take the lead. And it's about how you handle pressure. You know, maybe that you have to play kind of, you know, relaxed and laid back because that's when you do your best. Yeah. And she gets the block after she eats Joke, the Milky Way. Joking around about so, the Milky Way. there yeah. we are. I guess that's a good point. If she how makes this one from the back, I'm going to get me a Milky Way. Hands down. <laughs> I don't even like them. Well, she finds Brandon off the back Okay, wall. okay. He goes 100 miles an hour. That light's been taking a beating this weekend. So has all of this gear yeah. right here. Like, I just watched the oh, camera. I, I think it was your match where <laughs> I caught the ball. Nice. <laughs> flew over the thing and everyone cheered. Nice. It's nice to get a little applause back here, sitting oh, in my yeah. corner by myself. It's really about <laughs> us, you know. <laughs> and Brittany. Yeah. <laughs> as Maggie puts the ball back into play. I have to watch Sports Center tonight. Look out for the top ten. Absolutely. And Isabel clears that. Finds Brandon yeah! five. We are still rowdy over there on that other table. Yeah, uh, the table might might be putting that. Apparently, it's louder in our headsets yeah. than it is at home. As Munoz fires that one to the far side. Now four three in favor of Munoz and Stelly. And Brandon gets the takeaway. I'm surprised he paused. It looked like he was gearing up to fire that one. Oh, wow. Rolls it out. Shoots yeah. it. And it goes with mm. the left hook. And then uh, game one comes to an end. Brandon Munoz, Isabel Stelly. And now she goes to the, the Milky Way. <laughs> She's going to let you guys know that about it. Oh, that, yes. That was, that was intense. <laughs> Put that on her player card. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, take a look funny. over at Dewey and Maggie. It's just funny every time Dewey and Maggie they have no talk candy like there. this. You can never tell Maggie's back there. I know. Cute little Maggie. I love her. Well, she's more, Dewey is a very imposing figure. He's not a small guy. I'm going to leave that comment to you. Yes, but, he is. Yeah, I, mean, I wish I was half that tall. I would be so good at foosball if I was taller, I think. You might be half that tall. You think? I don't know. It's going to be close. He's <laughs> not nine and a half feet tall. <laughs> I guess I'm just extra short. All right. It's the camera angle. He just looks really tall. Even if you're only five feet, <laughs> he would have to be ten feet tall. Okay, okay, okay. Right? Bye. We're done. All right. Cut me off. I'm going home. <laughs> As Culpepper gets that one through. <laughs> so... Great shot. Um, he's been hitting that really well. Was that a cutback? Um, I think it was like a step over back to the middle. Okay. Like maybe a short push. I'm not sure. Still it. Yeah, Great defense nice. once again. 
fires that to the far side, and quickly it's 2 nothing in favor of Culpepper and Shaw. Okay, okay. We got the crowd involved. Yeah. One thing I want to mention is how um, Brandon really knows how to use momentum. Um, yeah, come on. You know, like when he makes a, an important ball or he gets some, you know, he gets, he makes his own fire. It's like to call it, you know, banging a five bar right there. That yeah. last one is making your own fire. It's just how it works. Um, so I like how he does that. And um, he leads that team with that energy. Meanwhile, Dewey and Maggie have been a much more subtle confidence. You know, they're, they're really put the ball away. And that was the first little chirp that you've kind of heard from him is, um, we have Sullivan Rue here to help us commentate very briefly. You want to get on? Hey, gang. Get on, <laughs> get on the bike. Oh, what? Didn't know what you were drinking. I thought that was a silver bullet over there. Yeah. As Dewey fires that one home now, 3-1. So Dewey and Maggie fighting their way back into this one. With the steal again. That's that five bar, D. It is. Cuts the that cut. one back. See, I was wondering where he was going to bring that into play because it's like, as a goalie who knows what they're doing, that is so difficult to process yeah. when you're, you're not used to blocking that. You know, to me, like, if somebody makes two cuts on me, I'm like, dang. Yeah, see, come on. You see the energy, yeah, the clap, that come back. Yep. Now 4-2. Yep. Reminder, Culpepper and Strong are attempting to double dip. Very nice. So they need to take second this man. game and the next to send it to a second set. Culpepper now. Tries to come near side and Brandon stays put. Oh, they didn't have a score. As Brandon clears that, or almost clears that one, Dewey gets the steal. Culpepper walking, taking a little more time here. Fires that okay, one on the near throws side. throws the rod, wins the game. Love to see it. We're going to a third game in the first set. Um, another thing that Dewey and I have talked about a lot is we're really good at, get, at getting to four, but it's the last one. Yeah. You know, that's a big um, that's a big hurdle for a lot of people. And it's not just, you know, Dewey, of course not. It's everyone, but we've definitely discussed that aspect of, yes, the hardest part is getting to four, but if you get to four and it's 4-1, it's not over yet. Your job's yeah. not done. You have to put the ball away. So it's those moments where it's like, I need to settle in. I need to really focus on my, what I can control and put the ball away. That was some of the most interesting kind of like just little quips that you get that I thought was good. Uh, Brad Anderson told to me at Texas State last year, as a goalie, you don't have to block five balls. You just have to block the fifth. There we go. Yeah. That's it's a good um, Essentially good way to look at it. Yeah, you yeah. got to get all five. The first four right. are worthless without the fifth. And it seems really like silly to say things like that, but after you watch matches and you're like, "Wow, I had them four two, and then they came back, or you know, or even four three, great shot." Culpepper continues the strong shooting. After Munoz, Munoz popped a very good rollover to start the match. Now one one. Oh, nice pass there from Brandon. Good and block, Maggie block Strong. Off the table. If a ball goes into the bleachers, it should be like baseball rules where the fan gets to keep it. I love that. <laughs> I think we should. If they didn't cost five bucks a ball, maybe we would. There we go. Yeah, that's <laughs> step one. I don't think a baseball <laughs> costs that much. It definitely doesn't. Well, Major League Baseball might. They're probably fancier. Maybe. I watched a cool production video on that. Anyway. Yeah, the, the <laughs> string around the court. Yeah, no, it's cool. Yeah. I've seen it too. Like marketing or something. Management 101. Watch that. Super cool. And back to foosball. Yes, yes. Man, <laughs> we've done a good job staying on the foosball topic. Yeah. Well. That was kind of foosball related. Anyway, Isabel now looking to clear. Nice oh, shot. Great shot. Good block by Maggie. Got that with the last it's line really, of defense. Yeah, it's a different mix the way she sets the ball up. You know, okay. Sprays it long. Randy being the biggest fan. Yeah. I love it. He wasn't the only one applauding. Another crowd no. getting into it now. I think they're really getting it in. Yeah, this trying to fire everybody up. This is a final, an open final. It is. Brandon blocked the ball. Good block. Table Good block, again. Maggie Strong. Maggie all fired up. Oh, I love it. And she's one that's not going to be overtly rude and holler in your face, but she is fired up. Oh, yeah, and you know it. It's like subtle, and it's just great. <laughs> I have nothing bad to say. Oh, yeah, Maggie's the best. For sure. You know, the more I commentate, the more I realize that I really don't have anything bad to say about most of the people in the room. 
Well, ideally so we want to keep it positive anyway. Absolutely, but it's like I can't even think anything negative. I'm just like I love them so much. These people are great. That's true. These are my people. I wonder when the day will come where I get a match for somebody that I'm just like, I can't stand this guy, <laughs> but I have to sit here and be nice. And, you know. <laughs> right. Hasn't happened yet as Isabel continues to try and clear against Dewey. And the more that Gets you commentate, the, the more you commentate, the more you're kind of like, wow, this person is really great at this. Like, you see the positives in people's game so much more versus when you're playing them. I think it's, it's easier when you're not in the fray. 3-1 here. Fire fired that one home, now 3-1. It's kind of, especially like the lower rank stuff, like you're getting a perspective on their game that they may have never even had. Yeah, you know? no doubt. Um, I had somebody say something about when I commentated one of the, the singles finals from Nationals, they were like, I really love the commentary. Like, I didn't think about that or this, and I was like, that's awesome. Okay, we got an update. Uh, table it. two over here, 5-5 five, five in the fifth game. No, uh, well, your scoreboard says 4-4. Four, four. Oh. It's 5-5. Five, five. They're in overtime. We got a timeout here on table one. That's the crowd watching over on table two and the back of Steli's head. <laughs> That's the front of her head. There we go. But, yeah, they're in overtime. That's a good match. And tough break ball sounded like. Went for Tom and Eric. Tom looked upset, but it went his way. Um, and we are back underway here as Brandon... We'll have the ball in the back of the goal before we have it even realize they're playing. Yes. And there it is. 3-3, three, three, just like that. It was 3-1 just a moment ago. Yep. Isabel and Brandon have switched. And Isabel gets the takeaway. Nice. That there was so go. nonchalant. She just like, yeah, I did it. Yeah, I'm gonna get over here and take this ball. Give it to my friend. Let go him shoot it. Go eat some Milky Way. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, okay. Fire. Where are we at here? We're going it's gotta to eight. be six. Uh, oh, really? Well, six, six. Means six, they six. Have to go okay, eight, right? I saw one have six. I couldn't see the other. Yep. And we are back underway. Here, do we put the ball back into play? Man, Brandon really just hops on there and does stuff before he even realizes he's doing it. Right. Oh, Ooh. big shot there from Dewey. 7-6, uh, Blake Shannon. Isabel now looking clear. And Maggie wow. couldn't dig that one out. Brandon gets a hold of it. Fires far side, and Dewey stands up his defense and gets the stop. They're going to eight. It's going to be 8-7 over there, 7-7. Seven, seven. Sorry, I'm getting excited about that one, too. We're here. Cole Pepper trying to clear. Gets through. Maggie stabs it on goal. Oh, nice. beautiful. Call it a runner. Love it. And another block for again. Cole Pepper. So not just his five bar, D. He's getting it done all over the table. Fired a big pull shot Banger last from time. the back. Let's see. He's going to have to get out there. Isabel able to reel it in. And that pass attempt was deflected by Maggie, but Brandon catches it on his five. Works that down to the wall. Tries Another the tap block. middle, and Maggie gets the steal. What are we doing? Oh, I thought she was going to shoot. I was like, what are we going to do here? Call timeout. <laughs> Maggie, I, we talked about it very cute before, but she does call timeout. Yes, of course. Uh, Bracklin's trying to get your attention. Oh, I thought he was waving at somebody else. Oh, well, he might be waving at somebody else. I just saw him waving. He don't care. I, I literally saw it here. <laughs> <laughs> Look how somebody's waving. Oh, it's Bracklin. Isabel getting up front now as Dewey gets back in the forward position so Brandon can try and block Dewey. We've got 7-7 seven, seven over here. Ooh. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. No, you're good. Easily distracted. I don't mind. I'll keep my eye on this one if you want to keep me up to date on what's going on over I there. I think we're going to know what happens over there. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> we'll hear it. <laughs> yeah. It'll literally be quiet and the crowd will cheer and we'll know Tom and Eric won or we won't be able to hear the crowd because Shannon and Blake are yelling. Players, I know we have some good that was so weird. I don't know if that was intentional or not, but if it was, it was really smooth. Yeah, and Isabel <laughs> catches it. She's going to She's about to bang it. She does and tries to go push side. Yeah. Oh, weird. Yeah. Weird. 
I know they did play singles against each other once, maybe twice. I'm not sure, but... Uh, well, either way, they get it. And now Brandon gets back up front, so it is now match ball for Brandon Munoz and Isabel Stelly. And Dewey Culpepper now trying to tie. Fires that one up into the light, and Brandon Munoz is fired up. Well, you have to be. We stop before I get You have camera. to be here. Isabel looking to clear. And Dewey gets the takeaway. Got another chance to tie it up. Nice Fires shot. that one home, and it is now 4-4. Four, four. This is it. In the third game, it's match ball all around. Okay, give me your prediction here. Are we going to second set or no? I love a second set. Oh, too late. But Brandon Munoz, it's not too late, Brandon. Dewey's been doing a great job blocking. Well, for a prediction before the ball is on his third. Oh. Great well, defense, see? great defense. He's had, what, five blocks here? Four, yeah. I know. Well, I had. that's kind clutch. of a prediction that Dewey was going to get the block. But anyway. Clutch, clutch, clutch. Ends up with Isabel. She's Isabel. looking to clear now. Oh, oh, wow. Nice pass attempt, but it ends up with Dewey. I like the way he dribbles off the back. I don't know that I've ever seen a player do that before. <laughs> that was the first thing Bracklin wanted to learn after he uh, played with Dewey when we get. Like <laughs> Teach me how to do that thing yeah. off the back of the goal. Oh, oh and it, it kicks around, and Isabel pounds the wall. Yikes. Yep. Felt that one over here, so we are going to a second set. Hey, second set. And this is a very little tight area right here. Like we've we've adopted this like recoil step back type thing, and like I think that's why me and Sully were switching sides. Yeah, so that you could <laughs> really let the rock fly. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I wish we could like zoom in to see who won the flip. Yeah. All right. Well, we're taking a second here between sets. They just called a match on two. Terry Rue and Eric Hiltner for third or better. Again, over on the Foosball Sports Network over on Twitch. So that should be a good one. Yeah. I'll be right back. I've got to run to the room and I'll be right, right. back. No worries. BRB. I'll save your seat. set to get the second set underway here. Culpepper and Strong gonna start with the ball. Brandon 
Munoz gets the takeaway. He has a chance to open scoring here, and Maggie able to keep that one out. Goes to a quick push kick, but Brandon turns it around. And Maggie fires that one on goal, and Dewey able to collect the rebound, so he's going to have a chance. And he continues to shoot well. one nothing now. Brandon does a nice job working that one down. Pounds that one home, and it's now 1-1. One, one. As Dewey working through the high lane. Taking his time here, making Isabel work. Tries the straight, she keeps it out, and it kicks back around and into the goal. Dewey redirect that with his five, and Isabel couldn't keep it out. Yes, come on, Brandon. Brandon. Surprised we haven't seen one of those already, but that's that big left hook that Brandon Munoz will fire to the far side, working a defensive switch right out of the gate here at 2-2 for Isabel and Brandon. now, tries to go quick to the far side, and Munoz keeps it out. And Isabel almost grabs that one, but Dewey reels it in. It's a quick little runner. Culpepper now surveying. Brandon was beating the middle, and he hopped back just in time. That crowd that was watching. just a moment ago over on table two has shifted over here to table one. Brandon skips one off the far wall. And this is a successful clear, but Maggie sends it right back with a great pass to Dewey's three bar, and he's going to have another chance. Fires that one short to the near side, and that makes it 3-2. Chop that one through, and do we not waste any time? That two-man pass. Do we can't get that one around Isabel? She sends a slow one up the table. Brandon almost caught it, but missed it by a little. So Maggie again. Has that one stuffed back into the goal now, 3-3, three, three, and Brandon is fired up. We're going to get a quick switch. Nope, they're going to stay put. He wanted to switch. I think she might have said no. And timeout is called. So you see the crowd. And Maggie. to work and Brandon gets a piece of that and redirects him to the goal. It's now 4-3. And Dewey and Maggie are going to switch. Fires that one to the near side and we're 4-4 here. It's been good back and forth here between these two teams. Dewey, the hard off the wall pass, well executed. Fires that one down the middle, and Dewey, Culpepper, and Maggie Strong take game number one. Good defensive effort. 
As Isabel tries to dial up a big one, but misexecutes. And Dewey again denies her. And he gets a piece of that one, but Brandon able to pick it up on his five. And again, the takeaway for Culpepper. up with another big block. And she's got to try and clear again. Dewey's been giving her a little bit of a hard time here, and he spikes that one back, but she does well to keep it out. And Dewey with a quick pickup. We'll have another three-bar opportunity. Fires that one on the far side. That was deep. Got that one out there. It's now one nothing. And more good five bar D by Dewey before Brandon quickly pounded that one through. Hard to the near side, we're 1-1 one, one, and we're gonna get that switch on the right. Isabel's gonna get up front. And Isabel immediately gets the steal and Brandon gonna get back up front. Him seeing him on the five bar. Fires that one near side, and it's now 2 1. Doing a nice job working that one through. So a chance to respond here for him. Tries again to the far side, and Isabel blocks it, but then Dewey stabs the rebound into the goal. And now they're gonna switch. It's 2-2. Two -two. Maggie gets a block, but Brandon gets the rebound. And Brandon does eventually work it through. And Dewey comes up with the block again. He's been playing some really great defense. And he just dropped a dime of a pass onto Maggie Strong's three bar. I apologize for the delay. I don't know, I thought they were having a conversation about something. It was just Maggie and Dewey deciding on whether or not they wanted to call a timeout. And Dewey says, yeah, let's do it. That was a monster pass. Brandon Munoz is now gonna switch with Isabel. He's gonna get him back and try and block Dewey. That's gotta feel pretty good to feed your own three bar from the back. Great catch by Maggie. Dewey now. Fires that one home to the near side, and that one pays off now 3-2, and Dewey says, yeah, let's switch again. They've only got one timeout left and two balls to get. Brandon works that one along the wall. And again, Dewey gets the block. Just clamping down on defense. Dewey dials up a huge two-bar shot that solves their timeout problem. Maggie can stay up front. It's now 4-2. It is match ball for Strong and Culpepper and Brandon. 
slows things down a little dink. Took a little of the action out of the room as the crowd was starting to get fired up for Dewey and Maggie. Dewey, of course, the local boy, but Isabel gets up front and gets the takeaway. So Brandon Munoz gonna have something to say about it before Dewey and Maggie take this one. Dewey's gonna switch, get right back up front. That was a monster pull shot from Dewey Culpepper. That two bar shot that he put home. And Maggie gets the steal and calls the timeout. And now on championship ball, Dewey Culpepper will have a chance to pass and score. That loud thud you heard was Brandon Munoz expressing a little frustration. gets a steal but it ends up with Isabel so they retain possession on a ball they have to have she sends a pass up the table and Brandon just can't catch it so now Maggie Strong tries a pass and Dewey just can't hang on he thinks maybe Brandon got him and my not color commentator, but expert an analyst behind me says it was close. As we see Dewey and Maggie. It's just a tough... If they ask me, I'm just going to repeat what Logan just told me. <laughs> well, do we gonna take it on the five is the compromise and he passes anyway. So Cole Pepper now fires to the far side and in two games in the second set, Maggie Strong and Dewey Cole Pepper have come back to double dip and defeat. Brandon Munoz and Isabel Stelly. Hats off to Isabel and Brandon for a hard fought match. But you really gotta respect the defensive effort put forth by Strong and Culpepper. As the crowd gives them a cheer, they receive their awards. Dewey's smiling now, but I don't think he knows he has to come see me for an interview. See how he feels about it after that.
to play, dude.
And we welcome you back to Inside Foose's coverage of the 2022 Mississippi State Championships. Another great matchup for you here on Table 1. This one for third or... Yeah, third or better. On the elimination side of the bracket. On the left, that's going to be Sullivan Rue at the forward position. And Michael Bates in back. On the right, that's going to be Shannon Coley playing goal for Blake Robertson, at least to start. This is a rematch. It was Sullivan and Michael that put Blake and Shannon into the loser's bracket. That's a match we got to see. And we had some statistics running on that one. And the key is that Michael Bates played great defense on Blake's three bar. Kept him shooting around 30%. And Sullivan Rue dominated the five, completing one more pass on nine fewer attempts in that first meeting. Sullivan really providing the biggest headlines of the weekend. She's currently sitting in the king seat of pro doubles. She double dipped Hannah Smith for women's open singles and her and Hannah are currently sitting in the king seat for women's open doubles. So this promises to be a good one. Shannon and Blake have stumbled a little bit well, not stumbled. They just played a very, very good match against a very, very good team. 8-7 in the fifth. They took down Tom Yor and Eric Hiltner. And what was a great match over on table number two to get here. Still waiting on the king seat match in open doubles. That one between Jason Wicks and Warren Van Landingham Jr. And the team of Terry Rue and Corey Taylor. <laughs> Corey Taylor and Terry Rue, the team that put Sullivan and Michael into the loser bracket. And it looks like we are ready to get underway here. And Blake and Shannon gonna start with the ball. Blake puts that one through the lane and has to grab it with the toe, but he does. All right, Sullivan now a chance to open, or excuse me, it's one nothing now. Sorry, I had a little distraction in the booth. It's one nothing in favor of Blake and Shannon. Sullivan finds a good tight straight there, and it's now 1-1. One, one. Blake picks that one off. And Sullivan steals it right back. And that high lane attempt is intercepted. And Blake eventually gets that one through. So now he has the chance to regain the lead here. Fires that one and Michael blocks him up into the air and off the table. So Michael Bates will... Puts it clear, and he fires that bank wide. Not the hardest bank, but just enough to get that in. That's actually how the first meeting between these two teams met. Michael clearing 7-7 seven seven in the final game and ending it with a bank out of the back. Now Blake has a chance to respond now due, down 2-1. Oh, and he go, tries to go quick and loses the handle. Tries to come back near side. And that ball is blocked up and under the bleachers. Oh. You get extra points for that. That, that ball literally landed in a gentleman's coffee cup that was sitting in the bleachers. Somehow they got to agree to a new ball. 
Oh, gross. Oh, there's Hannah if you want to tell her about her. All right. And we are ready to resume play with a fresh ball. So Michael sends that one up the table and the rebound collected by Sullivan. So she'll have a chance to make it 3-1 here. And again, the tight straight. Shannon cracks a little smirk. Sullivan again playing great five bar D. Blake eventually extra effort there to squeak that one down along the wall and hits that quick push side. And it's now 3-2 as Blake gets the takeaway and operates nicely along the far wall. Yeah, Blake. Fires that one to the far side, a little flippy, and it's now 3-3. Three, three. Sullivan fires that one to the far corner. 4-3 now. Blake now. Fires that one home, and we are 4-4 here in the first. And Sullivan nicely along the wall. She calls timeout with a chance to put away game number one. See her and Michael there. Shannon and Blake down here discussing it. Looks like Blake's going to get in back. Talking back and forth. has gotten his water and re-entered the pit. All right, and this will be Robertson in back as Sullivan tries to put away game number one. Take your time, patient, and Blake does block it. Blake says, hey, we'll take that time out. So it'll be Shannon Coley probably. He puts this one back into play here. We see them talking over their strategy. Michael and Sullivan, not much to say. Still 4-4 here. So Coley puts the ball back in play. Looking to take game number one. And Sullivan gets the block and steal. Yes! And fires that one off to the long hole. And she's pumped up. And Blake and Shannon say we want to switch. Nice shot there from Sullivan. Back 
back up. Sullivan warming up on that side a little bit. Heard her a little bit pregame talking about how that five bar didn't feel quite right to her. I think that's what Blake was thinking too when he said, hey, I want to switch. Set to resume play. <laughs> and I'm going to be joined once again as Sully gets that one through now, sent him in push out position and fires that one home. That was quick as could be. And I am now joined once again by Anna Smith. Hey guys, I'm back. Glad to have you back. Of course. Did you catch that first game? Just the end of it. Yeah, it was a good one. Yeah. Sullivan just continues to play very, very well. Oh. Nice. Nice pickup by Sullivan there. And that's something that's really important. Um, I, I didn't really focus on that as much as a forward until I had a, a veteran goalie uh, talk to me about it. Like, you know, um, as a goalie, you, you definitely want to clear the ball. But it makes your life so much easier whenever your forward can get to five down quick. Getting that five down, backing you up a little bit, and being in the right position too, based on knowing your goalie and knowing you know the area for what shot's happening or you know, etc. Yeah, as Pounded Sullivan, Sullivan makes Rue. Shannon Coley pay for that turnover, yep. it's now two nothing. We talked a lot or a little bit about how the last match between these two teams went before the match started. Yeah, and it's more more the same as Blake fires that one to the far side, and they're going to switch immediately. Sullivan taking a little bit more time on the five against Shannon. Tries that rolling push shot that won her game one. But Blake was sitting on it. And she continues to play great five bar D, and Coley can't hang on to that one. I think one thing that's key, too, is um, that you can get caught up in the match is realizing who's playing defense. I know for me it's like if I make a really good shot on a goalie and they have some certain tendencies and then they swap, I'm not always aware of it, especially if it's my drop, and I'm just like, you know, get pat, focus on passing or whatever, and then you get back there and you're like, dang, I shouldn't have shot that shot on them because that was a different goalie. <laughs> Simple, but. Shot. And Shannon able to steal that one away from Bates, and he's going to shoot. And that push Coley side. fires that one on the push side. Good yeah. goal for him. That's what they need to do. If they're going to get back in this now, 2-2. Two -two. Sullivan continues to pass incredibly well. Nice. Fires that one long, gives yeah. her out a toss, and she's fired up. Um, I like to note the differences in these two guys' defense, um, Shannon versus Blake. So on that one, it was a little more stacked up. I don't know. I think he was pretty committed. You know what I mean? It wasn't like he was trying to race her out there. It was pretty committed to, I'm going to block this on this position. Um, I'd be interested to see how Shannon works that into the game as well. And Sullivan takes it away from it Blake again. again and goes long, and it's now 4-2. And Blake able to get that one down along the wall. Great shot for that him. That was a great shot. To the near side, and Sullivan's going to get the ball with a chance to put away game number two. And a beautiful pass. Interesting. Different pace there. Yeah, different look. It was from off the middle, man, wasn't it? And she yes. fires that one wow. home. Wow. Great shooting. I'm this trying is to make a bias here, but I'm getting excited. I'm yeah. excited for both of them. I mean, Blake gets up here, bangs a dead bar poolside, like yeah. sick, nasty. And he's one that I really like to watch his game because of the way he moves the ball around and the way he works the ball to get the holes he wants to open, if that makes any sense. Um, you know, a lot of it's, it goes into a lot more in depth than just, oh, let's set it up and wait till they move out of pull side or push side or, oh, they're set up this way, so I'm going to go that way. There's more to it with him. Back to the layers, you know, he, you can almost like um, dictate what you want to happen on the table by that. You know, like, I want this push side to open. How am I going to get it to open? And it's just like, they know how to do that so well, especially on the five bar. They have so many different ways to work a wall pass. It's incredible. Yeah. <laughs> I've probably mentioned that before, but it's just really one of his aspect of his game that I really enjoy. Oh, yeah, and so basically a little reminder of how the first match between these two teams went. 
just like this. Sullivan and Michael took the first two games. Blake and Shannon fired back the third, dominated the third. And then it was a hard-fought fourth that put it away for Ruin Bates. Okay, so prediction here. Where are we going? We're going five? I, I would have to guess this one's going five. I don't think this – the last match only went four. Blake and Shannon are – Undefeated playing together this year. They're three for three so far. They've been fighting. They won a hard, hard nosed, hard fought battle against Yor and Hiltner. I that can't was, imagine yeah. that they don't go five here. Okay. But I solid, love the predictions. I love getting the, yeah. the, and Clay's fun to do that with too. He's yeah. usually right so much. It's like, do you know something I don't know? Yeah. Probably stats. Uh, yeah, well, he can tell you off the percentages, but right. Sullivan continues to dominate the five as she even gets that one through after Cole got a big piece of it. Blake did get a five bar to go to start the match. Sullivan's straight attempt is kept out by Blake. Do you see how committed the defense? Yeah. Like, that's such, I don't want to say ballsy, but it's kind of like risky. Gutsy is the Gutsy? Term. Gutsy, I'm sorry. No, <laughs> not very lady. -like. We're, not, we're not FCC related. <laughs> okay, good. Um, but, but it is. But it, it's often such an, a solid approach in defense, especially these upper level players. You know, um, everybody talks about, oh, I do so much better in pro and I can't win amateur. But it's like, yeah. um, I think this defense would not work against um a lot of players yeah <laughs> you know what i mean and you have certain players that are thinkers they, they, they just think more than others and they're going to take time they're going to read instead of you know a momentum or an, a quick look so really smart that he knows when and how to use that defense great job by michael bates out of the back shannon good job to reel it in and he quickly puts that one through the three and he's going to shoot here and bates denies him Fires that one home though, and it's two nice nothing. Shannon's really, um, he really does a great job picking those middles, even middles that you don't think are even there. And I don't know if it's like off a man, like a, a bob, or what he sees, but he's often really, really, um, really good at picking those. Oh. Pounds that one home, and now okay. it's three nothing. So right on cue, yeah, falling the script. Mm -hmm. Sullivan does a nice job working that one through. Her five bar, man. It's just been consistent. Yeah! She Great fires shot. That one home. Yeah. That was a different defense by Blake. It was. Yeah, it was different than the. Than she, the she didn't waste any time. No. Blake gets that Quick one. Quick down. Down the wall. That one goes into the corner. Oh, Bates goes with the pass, but it's a little bit too much of the wall. Oh, Sullivan almost sends that back where it came from. Nice. That was gorgeous. Do we have the flower? It's back. It just landed on me. I brought it with me. It's all that food you had, as <laughs> Bates gets another big block. He's really played phenomenal goalie. He has. And I'm so... Uh, I hate that I haven't got to see him play more goalie before this. <laughs> yeah, I've never seen this game before. You know, yeah. you know, I heard the name. Uh, and honestly, he's there's no emotion. There's nothing coming out of him out of the back. No. Nope. Mm -hmm. Everybody else getting fired up, cheering. The other three competitors all very fiery. Okay. He just hits a monster bank, reaches back, pulls the counter, Sullivan yells, and then he just goes right back to work. And I wonder how, if he practiced that series. I don't mean, he's a master. He's probably done it his whole life. But I personally have never got to see him shoot a bank series. And I've not, you know, it's it's so good. I would definitely think I would have remembered it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he's <laughs> hit it against one of the best teams out there, right? Absolutely. These guys know how to beat a bank series. They know yeah. how to do this thing, so... Um, that's interesting, and I know that you have to. Um, he has some options to pass out of that as well. I always wish um, our people were mic'd up. I think we need to mic somebody up for a match. Well, so I don't day. know that they would want to be mic'd up. They don't, but I would love it. If they would. So before you came back over, <laughs> not here, like the team stuff, but like just during the t like, like yeah. funny things during the match. Well, also people tend to not watch their language while they're playing, unfortunately. So. I mean, we don't have to broadcast it, but like we could oh, edit so we out, could, we could like yeah. bleep it out, you know. That'd be nice. <laughs> and Sullivan gets another. It was a block and then a tip, so now Bates again. Wow! Fires the straight just like that. It's three three. What a huge momentum shift for Drew and, you know, and Bates. Crazy! I was literally thinking, you know. Has he shot any straights? <laughs> but that was spot on. Perfect timing. It's just it's never there. 
it, it isn't. And it's, it's often you have to angle it. And, you know, you noticed Bl Blake switching those five and three, five and three. I wonder if he timed that switch or if he was looking at something or king off which man. You know, that's He wow. gets another one, back. and it is now match ball for Sullivan Rue and wow. Michael Bates. But Blake not wasting time. Hammers that, and the shot goes Great into the block, corner. Michael Bates. Bates has hit three shots in a row. And he's going to have a chance to hit a fourth to put this one away. And Blake gets enough of that one to block it off the table, so Shan will have to put it back into play. Wow. I'm excited. This is a good match. <laughs> yes. And wow. Coley dials up a big push shot, and that makes it 4 4. Still champion, or match ball, excuse me, for Rue and Bates. And Sullivan puts it through. She's going to have a chance to put this one away. She's nice call. call. Very good. So we know Sullivan's going to go nuts. Do you think Michael will react at all? No. Okay. No. Stone cold. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> he's actually one of the. Of yeah, he's actually one of the funniest yeah. people that I know. Blake's just, trying to uh, deal with that fly. My guy. Blake's um, getting back and trying to block. Or he was already. In. No, he wasn't. Was he? They switched. To, yeah, they switched to start this. Never mind. Yeah, Blake's in. Yeah, Coley hit the shot out of the back. They switched. That's what it was. Okay, I'm just going to ignore it. All right. Sullivan Rue now for the match. Fires it, and Blake keeps it out. Hit, yeah. Don't look like it sprayed a bit. I think it might have yeah. kept the ball. And Sullivan denies Blake's pass attempt. Shannon catches the ball, calls timeout. And these goalies have really played lights out. I mean, our forwards are just rock stars too, but this game here has been dictated by goalies. <laughs> you know, of course, fours have been fabulous, but, you know, Shannon making that last ball from the back. Yeah. That's huge. Michael Bates shooting those banks out of the back. Yeah, he got three in a row. That's amazing. You know, how it was much three does nothing. that yeah. Right, yeah. Sullivan, they got on Sullivan's game a little bit, and then Mike Bates says, well, you know, I can do it from back here too, and dials yeah. it up. And that's hard to do in, in moments that are really clutch, to, to have the confidence to shoot. And the Sullivan back. gets the Steals takeaway. It. And she works it through. The thing is solid, the five bar, man. And she wow. fires it home. Oh, a hug. That was great. It, it was Good, a little, Mike. Bit, of, a little bit of a hug. Good, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Oh, cute. And he kind of smiled. That was almost, yeah, a smirk. Maybe. And in three games. I was, yeah. Wow. Crushed. Blake Robertson and Shannon Coley, one of the best teams here. People thought that, I mean, they were, I had them as my favorite to win this weekend. And Sullivan Rue and Michael Bates have beaten them twice. She's on a different level today. Yeah, she's looking a little emotional. Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think that's. These that are Blake's these mom? are, huh? Blake's family's here. Is that his? Like, no, that's oh. it's not. That's oh. uh, Kaylee Dawkins, Teresa Sullivan, uh, Toby Sullivan's wife. They're from Mississippi. Okay, gotcha. Super cool that she's getting these great finishes and open doubles. You know, it was the same way kind of for me at nationals, which um, I played with Derek Brown. He was lights out, and uh, I think we got fourth. I think we got fourth or fifth. One of them. And it's fifth. Fifth, yeah, or fifth. We were. I, I Sorry, didn't get third. I didn't mean to mess you up. One of them, yeah. And I was like, wow, like, here we are. I'm playing against the best of the. This is open doubles, you yeah. know. And it's like so cool, and just it's so cool for women to do that. Um, oh, yeah. Keisha and I were talking about that a while back, and it was like the women have really progressed. You know, now we're competing with these men. We're placing in these bigger events. So he's in the finals of pro singles. You know, it's just like that is so, so monumental. It's like so cool to see the, the women and yeah, grow that way. in the finals. Sit in King's seat. Someone's yeah. going to have to come and double dip her the way she's playing. Yeah, and uh, the way she's playing today, I don't know yeah. if it's going to happen. Um, I imagine it would. There are some great players still in the pro singles bracket, though. That is for sure. That thing is stacked. Um I'm probably gonna. I'm going to get out of here and go and watch that uh, final on two. Brackland's there, so I'm oh, gonna yeah. have to go check go him it. out. Yeah, but, thank you for um, joining me. I'll be back. Um, we can do this off air. All right, folks. Yeah. As soon as we get another match call, we'll yeah. be back. See you guys.
got we got paper towel. Hey Brittany, you got any more paper towel? Someone just for one. Right? Yeah. Right. yeah.
go. Four of them here. Come on. Jason Wicks, Warren McLean, Courtney Hill, Terry Rue, Ellen Rue, and Stan Hill. Probably got poison in it. Just, it's just got a little arsenic. They're poison apples. No. I like their dollars. Super spaces. We got it. Is that why you haven't changed shirts in two weeks? Two weeks? I don't have the Shane shirt on anymore. <laughs> Balls changed so drastically in the last 12 hours. I haven't seen any of these freaking pink balls all they're weekend. They're getting you know? to the bottom of the barrel, and all the dust settles at the bottom.
Welcome you back to Inside Foos' coverage of the 2022 Mississippi State Championships. Got another good one for you here. Jason's got the ball, so. On table number one, on the left of your screen, that's Jason Wicks in the forward position. Warren Van Landingham in goal, both out of Texas on the right. Out of the state of Louisiana, that's Terry Rue up front and Corey Taylor in the back. This is the open doubles winner bracket final for the king seat. The winner goes on to take the king seat. The loser goes on to face Sullivan Rue and Michael Bates. And moments ago, we saw put on an unbelievable performance against Shannon Coley and Blake Robertson for the second time this weekend. Jason and Warren on the left, on the right, Terry and Corey. Terry and Corey are the team that put Sullivan and Michael Bates into the loser's bracket. Those are your three teams left, and we are set to get underway. And Terry, we're going to start with the ball. Seen him several times already today. He's been passing very well as he continues to do so here. Sets up. Fires the straight. And just like that, it's one nothing. And Jason can't hang on to that pass. Probably get more switching out of the team on the left than on the right. But everybody on the table is very capable of playing all five or all both positions. Come on, Eddie. And Jason can't hang out on that pass. It was a dime from Warren, just unable to hang on as Terry now. Does a nice job digging that one out. And I now have the pleasure of being joined. You ever done this before? Uh, beat down, yeah. Oh, nice. All right, so you're not a rookie. But I have the pleasure of being joined by Eric Hilner. Eric, thank you for joining me. Yeah, no problem. As Jason sits up, for the rollover, fires that one down the middle, and it's 1 2 1 now. Did you get a chance to play either of these teams this weekend? Um, Just Jason and uh, Warren. And they played us exceptionally well. They've been playing well all weekend. Tough field to get here. Probably. I don't want to blow your eardrums out. Is that better? Just me adjusting my mic? Unfortunately, the guy that we need to help... Uh, Adjust this mixer in front of us is on the table. <laughs> nah, no problem. It's a little better. All right, cool. Yeah, sometimes I forget to put my mic a little closer to my mouth. Uh, either way, it's 3-1 here in favor of Rue and Taylor, and Jason Wicks now going to have a chance to cut in that lead. 
Fires near side, and Corey able to keep him out. Uh, speaking of Terry Root, uh, you played a match against him earlier. Did you get that one? Uh, no, he got uh, he got me in that, but it was uh, the one that I got was a uh, a booking, and then it came with the the curse of the booking, and that was about that. But Terry always plays me. Uh, he always he beats me up off the two row. I'm gonna look at that. Yeah, he's got a good one. But I know you did play well on singles this weekend. I saw you take down Blake here on table one. That was a big win. Yeah, appreciate it. I've been working on the singles game a little bit instead of just sitting in the back and playing goal. As Drew fires another straight, now 4-1. All the shots been off Terry? Uh, I believe so, yeah. As Jason fires that one from the second man. Take a little more time here. Miss executes on that and drops it right on the Terry's three bar. Warren's still baiting him for that straight, even though he's already got a couple this match, and yeah. he gets it again. Yeah, too big of a hole there. And just like that, game one goes to Taylor and Rue, and we are going to get a switch. So if you're Jason and Warren, you just lost 5-1, what are you going to do different? Um, I wouldn't be surprised if you'd see Warren actually jump up front. I saw him playing a match earlier uh, today. Was that today? No, it might have been yesterday. That It looked like Warren uh, played most of the match in the forward position, so I wouldn't be too surprised if, if we end up seeing a switch if things start kind of going off the rails here. What, uh, what configuration did they go with when you guys played them? What's that? What configuration did they go with when you guys played them? Uh, Jason was up front, and he didn't need to do anything. He was lighting me up like a Christmas tree, so it was uh, there was no need for them to uh, for them to switch. That's that saying one. something. Uh, yeah, he, sh he shot very, very well. Real quick read, and he executed, he executed everything. A lot of noise coming from Taylor 2 over there, the Amish Doubles Final. That's live over on the Foosball Sports Network. Set to get game number two underway. Wicks puts the ball on the play. And Terry playing good five bar D here. And again, gets enough of that to keep it off Jason's three. Jason almost gets the steal, but ends up on Terry's five. They're having fun over on table two. They certainly are. Eddie Bowden and Bracklin Buffkin have the king seat in that amateur doubles for that. Eddie is a boisterous gentleman, to say the least. It's Terry now going back to work on the five. Gets that one down to the wall. And that time, Warren able to jump out there and block that long. trouble clearing here. Yeah, I'd like to see him try to feed that ball up to Jason, kind of get Jason involved in this match a little bit because it's definitely going to take him and scoring well by, you know, Terry's getting his possessions and he's been scoring pretty good. Warren got a couple of blocks here these last couple, but mm, another block. It's not one there after Rue got a little crafty and went off the back wall. That's something you see often in doubles. And Wicks now another chance to fire that one home, and he does, and it's now one nothing. and he looked like he wanted to switch. But yeah, he was going for a switch. Warren said no. I think Warren's got a little confidence after getting the last couple of blocks there. That's an absolute to do so as Rue continues to pass very well as that one goes into the corner from Terry. A good shot put yeah, up the table by very Warren. Very good shot, yeah. Now 1-1 one, one, 
as you hear the celebration from the amateur doubles final. And Terry blocks that one back into the goal now, 2-1. Good defense from Rue. Wicks now another chance. Fires that one to the far hole, and we are tied up at two apiece. Terry continues to pass at a very high percentage. Fires that one long, great, great shot. shot. Yeah, good patience. That's now 3-2 in favor of Rue and Taylor. That ball kicks around and Terry reels it in. And Wicks finally able to get a takeaway on the five. There from Jason. Fires near side. That was posted. Yeah, that was out there. That's now 3 3. And Terry again down to the wall. He's really done a good job establishing the wall this weekend. He fires that one down the middle, and they're going to switch up 4 3. And Corey Taylor playing some good five bar D as well. Wicks now. Denied by Rue. Going quick there. And Jason not able to get the steal. Corey reels in on the five, calls timeout. That was a big ball. I would have liked to see Jason at least get a little bit better look at it. Let the defense cycle once before taking that. That's a pivotal, pivotal ball. Yeah, especially his first look at Terry's D. And it'll be uh, Warren getting up front, trying to play defense against Terry's five. Jason now getting him back. Up. Bluffs. Yep. Talk Jason off the straight. That's how game number two goes. So, Rue firing on all cylinders here. Curious that little fake there that he threw. Don't see too many pull shooters do that to get. Yeah, hitch, waiting for the bob. And popped it as soon as he moved off it. Got to give it to Corey Taylor, too. He's been playing good defense. And he got that, drilled that ball on that five when he needed to. Yep. Looks like they're sticking with Warren in the back. Yeah, you think they might consider giving him another look now down two games to nothing? Maybe they think they see something they can adjust on without switching. So that final that was making all that noise over there on table number two. This fly has been messing with us all day. Uh, looks like Bracken, Buffkin, and Eddie Bowden held on. Took that one down, so congratulations to them. Everybody else is. Oh, there's Jason. <laughs> Terry and Gory went all the way back into the corner by the trash can to have their little team meeting. Talking strategy, yeah. yeah but everyone is back. Does Tommy Atkinson just watch matches all day? Every match, he's sitting there watching. Has been for years. That's how Peter at a high level being a sponge as Wicks gets the ball in play, and it grew immediately seals it away. 
Yeah, Terry playing very good five bar D here. And he continues to shoot well. It's now one nothing. And Wicks and Van Landingham not gonna budge. This is Jason gets a little too much of the wall on that one. Terry might have gotten a piece. Taylor now. Oh, beautiful pass. Good pass, yeah. Why would you do anything else the way Terry's shooting right now? Tries the straight, reloads. Fires that one down the middle, now two nothing. And now we're finally gonna get that switch as Van Lanningham gets up front. See if he can stop the wheels from coming off here. This switch should have maybe came about midpoint last game, so that way Warren has a, a little bit of experience. Uh, you know, maybe he can pick up on a couple of things when he's, you know, you're already down in a game. Yeah, it's always tough, especially, you know, kind of back against the wall down 2-0 on the game counter and on the scoreboard. It puts a little added pressure to come in and try and stop the bleeding. As Warren now gets it through. Fires near side. And Taylor keeps him out. They're just looking to clear. That's Corey back there. Yeah, just looking to clear. No, that's Corey back there. Oh, yeah, his last name's Taylor. Sorry. I've been oh, I thought you were saying Terry. No, Taylor. Yeah, uh, sorry. Yeah, I got you. Yeah, and I will say it's something that I've been trying to work on. I bounce back and forth between first names and last names. Sometimes I find it necessary, like during Open Mixed when the Ruse played the Atkinsons, I kind of had to use first names. Yeah. As so that one, I don't got picked up and shoved into the goal. It's now 3 nothing. Yeah, sorry, Corey Taylor. You don't not see any better. Shane. Shane? Shane. He goes by Shane? No, but sometimes he goes by Shane. Okay, well. You'll, you'll, have, to, you'll have to ask him about it. Well, maybe if they win, we'll ask him about that in their <laughs> post-game interview. Either way, he's playing fantastic right now as yes, he gets he that is. block. Tries a slingshot, but gets hung up. Tries a pass, but he gets a fresh 15 out of it. Again, just trying to feed the ball down the table to Terry. And Wick styles up a big shot from big the back. Shot, yeah. Just what the doctor ordered if you're trying to get back in this game. It's Terry taking his time. It continues to pass incredibly well. I love how he gets out of that brush series of that quick wall. Such a good pass as Wicks keeps that straight attempt out. And Rue fires that one home, and it is now match ball in favor of Terry Rue and Corey Taylor. And Rue gets the takeaway. And Van Lanningham's got just enough of that to keep it off Terry's three. Steps. Corey Taylor now fires a shot on goal, but Jason stays home. Jason gets another good one on goal, and Warren able to grab the rebound. Setting up off center. Lots in the middle there. And walks and fires near side. So Van Lanningham and Wick showing some life here in game number three. And Van Lanningham gets a stop, but Rue able to dig out the rebound. And goes right back to the wall. Terry Rue. Another good block by Wicks. Rue catches the rebound. Rue tries to go with a big left hook there. Not a bad time to do it, up 4-2. And Wicks has that one denied. And 
through. More good five bar D. And landing him up. Ham able to hammer that one through the lane. Fires down the middle. So a little too much straight there, too. Yeah, yeah. And timeout called. So Terry Rue going to get the ball, ball with a chance to pass and score to put away the match. Terry Rue going to work on the five and puts it through the lane. Rube bluffs. Oh, and Stubbs and loses the ball. Not something you see him do often. And Warren, good wall pass, but just a little too hot. Oh, and Taylor almost finds Rue off the back wall, but Terry can't hang on. Mix another good clear. Another, another good pass there. Yeah, with a like little hot, jumped off the wall. Yeah. And Warren playing some better five R D here. Terry Rue, so again, it'll be Corey Taylor's job to clear. Oh, and Taylor sends a slow one on the table that finds all the way to the back man, but Vix keeps it out. Oh, beautiful pass. Great pass, yeah. Good eye there by Wicks. And Taylor again. Coming up big on defense. Tries a pass of his own, goes the long way, but Rue still gets it. And Terry calls timeout. So Jason's done a little bit better of a job blocking Terry. Yeah, I think this was, like I said, I think this was a switch that needed to come a little bit sooner. But they've been pulling, like I said, they they played us uh, in the other configuration, and they were they were great. So got to give Jason his uh, his opportunity up there to to adjust. But yeah, obviously a little bit more success this way. Let's see, a big block here if he gets it. And Terry Rue doesn't waste any time, fires that one home, and in three straight games, Terry Rue, Corey Taylor have defeated Jason Wicks and Warren Van Landingham Jr. to advance to the king seat. Jason and Warren will go on to face Michael Bates and Sullivan Rue. Did you get a chance to watch that one? The, that was that was a good match. That was only, uh, I think that was only four games. Three. Was it three? It was three straight. It was three straight. Wow. Yeah, I, when we walked up, it was 2-0, and I looked at it, and I I asked someone sitting in the crowd, I go, is it actually 2-0? You know? Yeah. Yep. And it's like, and I, you know, I saw that match, and Bates was putting, uh, he was putting heat on goal with them banks, and he scored, I think he scored three. In the three. Yeah. Well, they were down 3 nothing when he did that. Yeah. He yeah. got the two inside bank, outside bank straight. Yeah, that's it. I mean, she's good. Look at Sullivan, what she's doing this weekend. She's yeah, King, that's, King the, that's the headline, singles, right? right? Yeah. She's playing, you know, obviously the women's stuff, but we've heard yeah. that a hundred times. The real yeah. headline is King Seaton Pro Singles, which really upset we didn't get to see that match. He got called around table six. But they beat Blake and Shannon twice. They yeah. put them in the losers. And that one only went four games. Yeah. And then the second time it only goes three. So she's playing out of her mind right now. Uh, well, Eric, thank you for joining me. Hey, appreciate it. I wish I could hear a little bit better. <laughs> yeah, well, as long as they can hear you at home, that's all, right. all that matters. I don't yeah. think they don't want to listen to me talk, so yeah. they've heard enough of me this weekend. Appreciate it. I'll be back probably later. Yeah, man, you see that chair empty? It's all yours. All right. All right, folks. Going to step away here for just a quick second while we wait for another match.
Actually, folks, uh, I'm going to step away. I may, depending on when they call this match, I may be back for the start of it. I do need to step away uh, at some point. I think Hannah Smith, if she's not in a match, is going to come fill in for me so you get to listen to her. Uh, but I'm going to go over and hang out with the guys on Foos Talk Live for a little bit, give them an update about the weekend. But either way, uh, I'll be one of those two places, and you'll be able to watch whatever matches up here next for sure, whether it's with me or without me. So sit tight, and we'll get you some more good foosball in just a little bit.
Anyway, welcome you back to Inside Foos' coverage of the 2022 Mississippi State Championship. It was fine. Sorry, Brandon Moon just messing with the tail. Yep, good. good. All right, sorry. 2022 Mississippi State Championships. We've got the loser's bracket final of open singles on the left of your screen. That's going to be, I'm going to put the full names in. We're not in doubles anymore. That's Brandon Munoz on the right of your screen. That is one Terry Rue. Just saw Terry take the open, or open doubles king seat with his partner, Corey Taylor. This match getting called up real quick, very quickly. And these guys actually got, they were at the table within three minutes of its being called. They're already wrapped up, and it's only been eight minutes. That might be a headline. We are still free live on Twitch and YouTube. I never did that one before. Taking a quick look at the Twitch comments. Jeff, you don't have to attack our graphics because Clay is being a wise guy. It's not very nice. Anyway, looks like we are set to get underway here. And Brandon going to start with the ball. Brandon chops that one down. And Terry able to deny Brandon his first attempt. So Brandon Moreland is currently sitting in the king seat as Munoz puts a great shot on the goal from his two bar and it's one nothing. Brandon Moreland has the king seat and but to get it, he three owed Blake Robertson and Brandon Munoz. If you know anything about Brandon Munoz games, he plays 100 miles an hour and generally gets other players off their rhythm. Brandon, Mun or Brandon Moreland actually did a good job slowing him down, getting Brandon Munoz to play his pace. So impressive feat for Brandon Moreland. The winner of this will go on to face him. As Brandon denies Terry's clear attempt. And again, gets the takeaway. He's going to have a chance to make it 2 0. Fires to the near side and does. That was deep. That man was out there. And Brandon gets enough of that one to keep it off Terry's three. 
And Brandon clears and chases successfully, grabs him on his three bar. He's gonna do that a lot. It's a big part of his singles game as he tries to flip over on the straight and Terry gets the block and the spin of the ball sends it flying right back in. Now three nothing and Terry's gonna walk away from the table and collect himself. Look at Brandon there and the rest of the crowd. And Terry nicely along the wall there. Fires that one home. That gets him on the board now 3-1. Uh, my first look at Terry in singles, I believe a lot of matches this weekend, but doubles at least. He's been passing very well as Brandon works that one along the wall. Passing and shooting very well, playing at a high level. He fires, Brandon Munoz fires that one. Again, that was that man was out there. Good shooting from Brandon. 4-1 now. It's Brandon. Gets a piece of that pass. Terry able to work it through. Sets, takes his time. Tries to shoot it down the middle, but Brandon gets a big piece of it. So Terry will go back to work on his five, and he works up a big left hook, and that cuts the lead to four to two. Nice pass there from Brandon. Chance to take game number one. Fires that far side. And Brandon Munoz takes game number one. When I say Brandon plays fast, I mean fast. He and his partner Isabel Stelly won a game. I think it was the quarterfinal of Expert Mixed to get to the King Seat match. They won a game in less than three minutes. It was like two minutes and 46 seconds. He does not like to slow things down. So Terry probably trying to do that as Brandon gets a takeaway here to start this game and gets it through. And Terry Rue trying to do a little cha clear and chase of his own and he's able to get it to his five. Sorry. Brandon gets a takeaway. Oh, wow. That was mean. Great roll out into that push kick. Spraying it back to the near corner. That was a fun shot as Rue works that one through the hole. Terry a little too long there, fires in the wall, but able to grab the rebound after it goes off both walls. And nice job finding that straight hole there for Terry, now 1-1. And Brandon gets his pass temp back, and again, and Vate. Eventually able to hammer it through. Fires to the near side, and he's got a 2-1 lead. Nice pass there from Terry. Tries the straight. Brandon keeps him out. Oh, and Terry tries to clear and chase, and Brandon jumps along the wall. Taking a little bit more time here. And fires down the middle. Now 3-1 in favor of Munoz, and Terry Rue calls timeout. Trying to cool off the red-hot Brandon Munoz. Brandon rarely takes his hands off the rods during timeouts. As Rue puts the ball back into play. 
Good brush down there. I guess my buddy Eric didn't want to come keep me company here in the booth again. Watching from the stands. As Terry fires that straight in the wall, and Brandon does a good job to flip over and dig it out. Oh, and a beautiful two to three pass from Munoz. Right along the wall. Fires straight and blocked up off the table by Terry Rue. Brandon gets a big piece of that. And Terry tries to roll an inside bank, and Brandon gets all that, so that gets blocked up off the table. It's currently under table two where they've got an expert doubles match going on. out of the back. Oh, it looked like he might have even stubbed that one. I don't know if he hesitated or stubbed it, but came out a half a second later than I expected to, but he fires that one home, and it's now 4-1. It's a big piece of that, and Terry eventually able to work the second effort through. And Terry fires that one down the middle now, 4-2. Brandon fires that one near side, and Brandon Munoz rolling now up two games to nothing. Good five bar D from Brandon Munoz. And again, he gets enough of that to keep it off Terry's three. So again, he goes to work from his two bar, looking to clear. Set up for a bank. Whiffs it a couple kick strokes, but Terry ends up coming up with it. Terry fires that one long. Great shot there out of Terry, and he's up 1-0 now in game number three. Oh, and Brandon's, Brandon Munoz tries to go to the left hook, puts it into the wall, and it comes right back on him. So now Terry up 2-0. As Brandon picks that one off, loses the handle, regrips. Fires to the far side, and Terry keeps it out. Terry bluffing a bank series. Tries to go inside wall, and Brandon blocks that. Terry goes right back to his pull shot, fires that one on goal. Sorry, a little hiccup there. Uh, promoter started announcing the women's open doubles final. I'm about to announce it on one, but we're busy over here. So still 2 nothing in favor of Terry Rue. And Munoz is able to pin that one down. Clear and chase, but Terry got a hand back there to hang on to the ball. Terry, or Brandon trying to clear from the two with his left hand. Now we're going to get back there and shoot. And Terry picks that one off. Chance to go up 3 nothing now. Throws the ball. Fires on the middle and Brandon denies him. And again, Brandon beats him long. Great defense out of Munoz as he blocks him again. That one leaves the table, so Brandon will get the ball back. And he's able to work it to his five. 
Uh, sorry, that looked illegal to me, but I guess it's fine. Again, long link into foosball. My brain's melting. As Rue. Able to get that one along the wall. Sets. Fires, and again, Brandon Munoz is going to grab the rebound on his five. And he advances. It's been 2 nothing for a little while now. Both these gentlemen clamping down on defense. Brandon Moreland's made his way into the bleachers. Again, he gets the winner. Oh, and Brandon... The pass got tipped. He caught it anyway and fired it into a quick pole kick. It's now 2-1. Impressive series from Munoz. And again, I can't I would love to see the stats on this one. He has blocked several Terry Rue three bar shots in a row. Is that clear attempt? Oh, Terry getting a little crafty there and fires that one down the table. The ball flying now. Terry getting a kick in, seeing if he could beat Brandon at his own game. As that one is blocked back his way as well. So Terry even struggling to clear Brandon, just playing some great defense. And again. Man, Terry just cannot beat this zone. So he dumps and clears, but Munoz gets back there and gets a hand on it. Oh. And he's all pumped up. I think he just said Scrappy Roo as a reference to Scrappy Doo, which is awesome. But, yes! And Munoz finally fires that one home. So a good defensive goal breaks the ice for Terry Roo, and then Brandon Munoz fires right back, and Terry Roo calls timeout. And again, Brandon Munoz took away for half a second, and then his hands are right back on that rod. And we are ready to get back underway. Good pass there from Terry. And Terry fires that one home. First three bar possession he's scored on in quite some time. He's had a number of them. Beautiful runner there from Munoz. Fires near side, and Terry denies him. So Terry Rue up 4-2 in a game he has to have to stay alive in this event. And stubs the pull shot, and he calls his second time out. out. Terry acknowledges he's out. Brandon with his hands on the rods. And Terry puts the ball back into play. Terry Buffen Bank tries to clear and chase, and Brandon gets the ball whacking around and eventually ends up back in Terry's goal area. Terry fires a good shot on goal, but can't beat the zone, and Brandon eventually hacks it through, so Terry going back to trying to clear the ball. And another blocked shot. And that one kicks around the table. Didn't go in on the initial bounce, but on the second it does. And so now 4-3, still in favor of Rue. Terry's out of timeouts. As that pass ends up in the back corner.
Oh, great save by Brandon, but then it comes back and goes in. So Terry Rue takes game three, stays alive. Great initial attempt by Brandon, but that ball eventually worked its way into the goal. So good adjustments by Terry. It looked like Brandon was going to run away with that one after the second game. But Terry coming back and taking game number three. Taking his time on his two bar. Terry Rue now up one nothing. As he continues to play good defense here. And Brandon almost able to grab that one of the three. You know things are getting serious. Brandon Munoz has just shed his hat. I don't know if I've ever seen him play without it. So Terry shoots that one up the table. Brandon grabs it on his five. Brandon now fires near side. Can't get it to go. And Brandon thinks that one in, not 1-1. One, one. Terry fires that one home now, 2-1 in favor of Rue. Brandon able to get that one through now, chance to equalize. Fires that one to the far side, and we're all tied up at two. And timeout called. Tied 2 2. Terry now looking to take the lead. Fires that one down the middle now, 3 2. Brandon taking a little bit of time there on the five, able to work it through. Tries the far side, can't get it to go. Yep. And Terry fires that one in the near corner now, 4 2 here in game number four. Yeah. Terry fighting to stay alive. Folks, I'm supposed to be going on Foodstock Live here in just a second, but I don't want to leave you, so I'm trying to find somebody to fill in as Terry works that one through. All right, looks like I found a willing substitute. Munoz fires that one down the middle now, 4-4. Four, four. As 
Brandon steals it. So final substitute, but it might not matter. Brandon gets this ball. J.J. Hearn, correct? Keith, by the way, nice to meet you. Brandon gets the ball on the three. Taking his time, walking, and calls timeout. All right, I'm gonna pass this off. JJ's willing to sit in for me, I appreciate that. Uh, basically, just put the headset on, talk about the match. When they're done, you can just take it off, put it down, and I'll be back for the next one. All right, appreciate it. Hello, everyone. All right, Brandon calls Tom in, sets it up. Goes down the middle, blocked by Terry, and shut back up to the five. Two big Ds on the five by Terry. Brandon passes the ball up to the three yeah. and shoots it down the middle. Well, that was interesting. Glad I could help you guys out. Thanks a lot. I'm sure it made that last ball a lot more interesting with me commentating.
Yep, I know. I'm crossing the terminal. I got up for some pieces of it. I brought them. Terry said he has a couple of small splits on his fingers. That's why he's got them taped up.
Hey, my mic was hot too. Great. All right. And we welcome you back to Inside Foos Coverage of the 2022 Mississippi State Championships. We are hope hopping into the open singles final here, the Battle of the Brandons, part two, as Moreland takes a 2 1 lead here. And I have the pleasure now of being joined by recently minted amateur doubles champion at Mississippi State, Bracklin Buffkin. Bracklin, thank you for joining me. And uh, sorry I got in here a little late. I was over on Foos Talk Live there with those guys. Give them a little update. But happy to be here. 
So did you get a chance to see the first match between these two guys? The King Seat match, yeah. Uh, basically, yeah, Eric was saying the same thing, and I don't know how to mess with that stuff. Where's Jason? Okay. Uh, Bracklin's having a hard time hearing me. I just don't want to blow out anybody's eardrums at home. All right, perfect. Uh, so basically, Brandon Moreland, 3 old Brandon Munoz, which I think was a little bit of a shock as he gets that five bar to go, now 3-2. Brandon Moreland, I'm just going to stick with the last names here. Two Brandon M's. Moreland, actually, for the first time that I've seen since I started watching Brandon Munoz play, actually managed to slow down Brandon Munoz. Got him. Yeah, got him to start shooting, taking a little more time on his three bar, watching his shots. So... Not too many people can control the tempo against Munoz, but Moreland did a great job.
Let's do it. Too loud? Yeah, a little better. Can you still hear me? Yeah. All right, we welcome you back to Inside Foos' coverage of the 2022 Mississippi State Championships. Uh, that might come back on its own. Yep, there you go. Got another good one for you. Another final here on table number one. It's the Women Opens Doubles final. I do apologize, Brackland Buffkin going to join me again, and I appreciate that, Brackland. Thank you for joining me. Yeah, man. Uh, I do apologize. I had a little technical difficulty there with our audio at the uh, second half of that open singles final. I do apologize. Unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about it now, but that was a great match. Brandon Moreland taking care of Brandon Munoz in pretty commanding fashion. Another 3-0 match between those two. So congratulations again to Brandon Moreland putting on a very impressive display of poise and control. All right, so on the left, Hannah Smith, Sullivan Rue. They have the queen seat. On the right, Maggie Strong, Keisha Rue, trying to unseat them, going for the double dip. Although, talking about the other events that have taken place so far this weekend, going to be a pretty tall mountain to climb. Hannah and Sullivan just took down a very good team in pro doubles. The two ladies on the left played the women's open singles final, put on a good show, went overtime in the second in the third game of the second set. Sullivan eventually coming out on top, and Sullivan has been dominating all weekend, playing forward in open doubles, currently sitting third or better, defeating Blake Robertson and Shannon Coley twice in seven games between the two matches. So we're gonna have a good one here. Really just silly playing out of her mind this weekend. Absolutely out of her mind. Yeah, just dominating up front. Getting in the back, if she gets in the back, she does what she has to do, but she's absolutely dominated up front. I mean, there are top masters who have been playing since before Sullivan was born that can't dominate the five bar like she did against Blake. Yeah, they've, they've just, no one's had an answer for her today at all. So. But if any lady team can get them, it's Maggie and Keisha. Yeah, Maggie's played awesome today, too. She had an awesome, awesome showing in the open mix final. Yeah, her and Dewey Culpepper came back and double dip. Brandon Munoz and Isabel Stelly playing some fantastic team foosball. Great defense all the way around. So this will be a good one. I was just double checking to make sure this wasn't a rematch, but that's right, it was Isabel Stelly, Kathy Ackerson in the green seat match. And we are underway. And Hannah, are we looking at clear hair? And 
making a good block there. And Hannah gets it back. And Maggie able to get the takeaway. So Maggie got a chance to open scoring here. Maggie, of course, one of the strongest forwards on tour in these women's events. Keisha, one of the better goalies. Her and Terry also had a nice run in that open mixed event. And Sullivan takes away her mother's clear attempt. And that one walked back into the goal. Now 1-0. Bracken, what do you think Maggie and Keisha are going to have to do to pull off this double dip? Um, obviously, obviously they're going to have to find some answer for Sullivan um, in some way, whether it's the three or the five bar. Um, and uh, Maggie's got to find a way to score, which she usually does. She's very crafty. She's very smart. And, uh, you know, Sully's, Sully's got to answer to her five bar, too. Maggie's got a very impressive five. Um, she's a smart player. Um, and she's made a lot of noise on tour since she's been back. Absolutely. So really, yeah, I mean, Maggie's going to have to execute, and they're going to have to find some way to slow down Sullivan. That's pretty much what it boils down to. Um, and, you know, who, who better to do that than, than Keisha? You know, she's um, she sees her play all the time. She watches her play. You know, they live at home together. So um, obviously she's she's probably got some tricks up her sleeve, but um, she's she's got a, a, a big task. Is Keisha able to clear there? So Hannah put the ball back into play. Anna puts a great shot on goal, but Keisha able to get out there and block her. Oh, Sullivan tries the quick pull kick off that pickup. Tries the middle. So Keisha doing a good job in the early going. Still 1-0. Oh, and good pass there, but Maggie can't hang on. Sullivan doesn't waste any time putting that one through the high lane. And again, Keisha able to keep Sullivan out. Oh, and beautiful pass from Anna to Sullivan. Again, so Keisha holding up her end, but Sullivan's taking a lot of shots here in the early going. I don't know if Keisha's going to be able to keep her out long enough as Maggie could clear there. Going to have a chance now. And good rolling push shot to the long hole, and it's now 1-1. Beautiful off the wall from Sullivan, who shoots a rolling push out of her own. She went with that rolling push shot because Maggie did one. Uh, it's it's quite possible, you know. She's a she's a rhythm player, and uh, sometimes I think she's got the attitude of I can do it better, and <laughs> she normally does. And Maggie gets another steal. Tries to go in a little push kick there, but Hannah able to keep it out. I guess it also could have just been the fact that her mom was doing a really good job blocking her. Yeah, yeah, she's um, she got to find a way somehow, and that's normally how she finds it. And another good pass that Maggie just can't hang on to. And Sullivan, again, not wasting any time and gets her with a dink there. So mixing up a little bit, trying to open up that goal. Now 3-1. Oh, and another good pass, just a little off the mark. And another good shot. Keisha really playing some good defense here. Almost turns that one over, but she's able to get it back. And another good clear. So Keith, did you get to watch it? Uh, get a chance to watch any of the um, of the World Cup footage? 
Uh, ironically, I did. I covered it from home. I was oh, cool. 7.30 in the morning at my house covering matches from France, uh, sitting on my couch. Unfortunately, I didn't get to see a lot of the Americans play. Yeah, um, it was an experience, man. I, it's something that I, I think everyone should experience. It was awesome. Yeah, it was very cool. I know that you guys got to go over. You guys were... You guys played a lot of foosball that weekend. You went straight from Nationals to the airport to fly over to France. Yeah, absolutely. We absolutely did. But it was um, it was cool. It was definitely an experience that uh, we'll never forget for sure. That's all. I mean, it really, it's, you know, if we're, you're a fan of this sport, it's the best players in the world coming together, competing for the nations as Hannah drops another beautiful pass. So with the hammer. Yep, drops that one home, and now it's 4-1. And actually, that got commented on uh, when we saw some of the earlier matches in this event. Uh, you know, Kathy and Isabel trying to take the queen seat from Hannah and Sully. They're not just the, one of the best teams here or on the Tornado Tour. They're one of the best teams in the world, if not the best team in the world. Uh, I absolutely agree with you, man. Uh, it, it was really cool to watch them play in France as oh, the she, they do pass. that. Yes, um, It was really cool to watch them gel. Um, and it, it's it's interesting because they're both young and they're you know they're not in their primes. I don't believe they're, they're both playing really well, but um, I think they've both got so much more um, to see in the next couple years. And uh, it was it was cool to watch them play and adapt um, with I would say with much less uh, multi table experience than anyone else there. So it, it was really cool to see and watch them perform over there. Yeah, as Maggie stabs one in with the five, and then it's another defensive goal. They're the ones that call timeout. So Maggie, with two quick ones, getting them back in it now, 4-3. Yeah, I know they only took home the silver, but I mean, when I heard that, I didn't get to see the match, unfortunately. When I heard that, I was definitely shocked. The team that beat them, uh, I had seen one of their games earlier, and they had been struggling a little bit, but I guess they got it together. Yeah, so the team that they beat, um, you know, they actually put out Mylon Tran, who was, I believe, picked by everyone to, w to win everything there. You know, she won singles, um, and I believe everyone thought she was a shoe-in to win uh, doubles as well, and they accidentally um, upset them. So um, it was interesting. Um, I, I, I don't think they were expecting to play them in the finals either. Um, and it was interesting to watch them play. They were, they were very good on Bonzini. They were very good on Tornado. Wouldn't be surprised if we got a rematch of that one in a couple of years. Uh, I agree, and uh, I think Hannah and, uh, and Sully are ready for that. As Maggie gets the takeaway they need to get them back in this match. She tries the dink, and Hannah able to jump out there and block it. Try and clear. It was 4 1. Keisha and Maggie putting up a good fight here. Oh, and Maggie that time able to jump that pass attempt. It was right on the mark. Maggie hammers that ball through the lane, and now she's got a chance to tie again. Again, answers the call, and Hannah going to call timeout. So some good defense here. Late going is a game number one, keeping Maggie and Keisha in it. It's probably Shannon Coley's on the bleachers taking notes, watching Keisha block <laughs> Sullivan. Someone better get up there and watch. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Where Sullivan and Michael Bates waiting to play Jason Wicks and Warren Van Landingham in that elimination bracket final of open doubles with the winner. Sullivan has the chance to put both of her parents out of open finals. That's interesting. Terry Rue and Corey Taylor sitting in the king seat of open doubles. As Keisha wheels that one in after Hannah and Sullivan switched. So that's Hannah playing defense on the five there and Maggie able to get it by her. Maggie Strong. 
fires long and catches the wall. Sullivan reels it in, and we know she can do damage from that two bar. And Maggie able to intercept. And she oh, fires wow. that one home, and we are at 4-4. The team on the left switches back, so that's Sullivan back up front. And Maggie gets the steal. And that one is blocked back into the goal, and game one goes to Maggie Strong and Keisha Rue. Impressive grit. Out of Strong and Rue, they were down 4-1 before firing back to get that one. If you're gonna attempt a double dip, that's a good way to get started. So Sully going back to work on the five, and game two is underway. Her pass, a little off, and she stuffs her mom. Another violent just feels a little mean. Yeah. And she quickly fires that one along the wall. Beautiful. Fires that one and gives the rod a toss. I mean, obviously they are family, but right now they're just fierce competitors going at it on the table. Yeah, I'm sure they've, they've learned to deal with that. You know, it's, it happens a lot, it happens often. As Maggie gets a takeaway there. And Maggie fires that one home, and now 2-1. Back and forth we go. As Maggie gets a big piece of that, but Sullivan's still doing a nice job to grab it. And Sullivan fires that one of the long hole. So 3-1, but we've been here before. And Sullivan able to get enough of that one. Oh, we got some big trophies heading in here into the pit. So two-man fires that one to the middle, and it's now 4-1. Same situation we found ourselves in in game one before Maggie and Keisha clamped down and fought back and took it. Last thing you want to do is let Sullivan and Hannah get on a roll. All right. Looks like we're being asked to take care of the handing out the trophies here. Unless Shannon stays in the area. This is some pretty big impressive trophies. As we got a look at Maggie and Hannah, or Maggie and Keisha. Sully and Hannah. And Maggie puts the ball back into play and quickly Goes along the wall. And Maggie steps that one back in, and here we go. Now 4-2. That's how it started. It was literally almost the exact same goal that got them to 4-2 in the first one with that five-bar stab. So he says enough of that, puts away game number two with authority. And it's all laughs on the right side of the table. Meanwhile, Hannah and Sully all business. First time I've seen Michael Bates smile all day. And that might be the last time you see Michael Bates smile ever. <laughs> he doesn't do it much. He's, he's got a flat face. He's got a he's a he's a really flat kind of guy, but somewhere there's some aggression in there. There's some there's some fire in him and you know, they pulled off that those two impressive games and at no point could you tell that he had just done something incredibly cool. Yeah, so he's he's too cool for school kind of guy. Bates was actually one of the first masters I ever met. Um you know, I started playing foosball last year, and um, there were some guys here in the Mississippi that uh, had a few tables, and we went by their house to play, and Hannah was telling me, you know, uh, Bates will be there. He's he's uh, sort of an older master from, from Mississippi, and I met him, you know, and it was 
an odd way to describe Starstruck because it was like, oh, cool, my, the, the first master I've ever seen. But it was, you know, I'd heard of Tony and I'd seen Tony play, Tony Ryan Blake, you know, and it, it was it was different. Um, he was he was definitely not as uh, I'm trying to think of the word, you know, he uh, charismatic as I guess um, as they are, but um, still not an excuse on the foosball table. He's definitely got what it takes and he plays his game. Yeah, put on quite the show this weekend. But I know what you're talking about with the Starstruck the first time. I mean, I've only been at this for a couple of years now. And, uh, the first time you meet that master, it's like, oh, neat. I actually wasn't. I didn't even really know what that meant when I first met. It was actually Tony was the first master I met. Yes, Maggie gets that one on the wall. Still looking to open scoring here in game number three. Feels like we're in trouble, doesn't it? <laughs> Donald just standing here over our shoulder. Hannah sends a good shot at the table, but Keisha able to reel it in. That shot sent back her way, and again. We haven't. <laughs> I would never on air. Donald Wilson having some fun with us. As Hannah brings that ball to rest. Maggie again playing good defense. And she gets the takeaway. And nice shot there from Maggie, getting a little crafty, taking her time. And it's now 1-0 in favor of Strong and Rue. Yeah. Sullivan wastes no time responding. It's now 1-1. Yeah. And again, Maggie with the five-bar stab gets that to go, now 2-1. that one through. Tries the dink. Keisha stays home. Yeah, and Keisha sends a great shot sliding to the far corner. That makes it 3-1 now. And Maggie comes up with the ball after it kicks around for a second and she's going to call timeout with a chance to go up 4-1 here in the game number three. So great response from Maggie and Keisha. They're still laughing over in the corner. And again, Anna and Sullivan, small business. Got a nice little crowd drawn here now in the booth. We're in the booth, they're in the bleachers. <laughs> it's been a long weekend up here in the booth, man. A lot of foosball. Switch into a rollover. I don't know if I've ever seen her shoot a roller. But she fires that one home, and it's now 4-1. It is match ball for Maggie Strong and Keisha Rue. And Sully's pass tipped off the mark, so they take possession with a chance to put the first set away. I hate it when someone shoots on table one, and the ball goes in immediately from one of the other tables. And it sounds like it went in. He just tries that same shot. That one goes a little wide. And Hannah with another beautiful pass. Finds Sullivan's three bar. And she fires it home. It's now 4-2. And 
Young. Maggie sends that one off the back wall, able to get it back to her five. And Maggie nicely off the wall. Thinking about what she wants to do here. Tries to hit it on the roll. And he gets a big piece of that clear attempt. She's able to get it to Sully's five. Good five bar D for Maggie. And again, Maggie denies her. Good fight there in the middle of the table, and Hannah's the one that ends up with it. And Maggie gets the takeaway, so she will call timeout with another chance to put this one away. You ever played with a jacket on? Uh, I don't think I have, man. I, I don't even know how anybody even kind of thinks about doing it. <laughs> then you got a player like Todd. I guess Todd has just been doing it for so long, and he's always so cool. But I play two balls, and I'm sweating if I was in shorts and a T-shirt. I'm almost curious if, it, curious if it's like a fashion statement, more or less, because you know you'd have to win a jacket to play in a jacket. So it's true. I mean, maybe you could that's just what it wear is. a re regular jacket. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Show with like a coat on. I'm still waiting to see Rich Cotter play in his furs. Uh, Rich in any of his outfits is always a fun one. <laughs> and Maggie slides that one in, and Hannah and Sully just look at each other a little. Dumbfounded almost as Keisha Rue and Maggie Strong have sent this to a second set. Impressive performance from Maggie Strong and Keisha Rue. And it's all smiles on the right side of the table. Oh, well, I was going to film the camera over, but they both just sat down. I promise they're, they're down there somewhere. Tommy Atkinson's been sitting right there all day. <laughs> Man is a fan of foosball. Crowd growing. There's a bunch of people behind us watching the match. Bleachers are full. Oh, Tommy scooted over. Oh no, same spot. You know I gotta ask you what kind of insight you just gave him. Uh, well, long story short, just to clear the ball. You know, find a way to clear the ball. Um, I, I think she needs to stay out of the middle of the table. Mostly Mag Maggie seems to be there in the box a lot. She seems to be in the box, um, and it doesn't seem to be working. So you're gonna have to think outside the box, so to speak, um, and get out of the box. Do something else outside of the box, um, and mix mix the passing and and the shooting uh, up a little better. I, I think she kind of has been streaky. She passes three possessions and then she shoots three possessions or something like that. So um, mainly, mainly just mixing that up a little bit more and uh, be a little, a little more deceitful. Well, this might be a developing story here. Looks like Hannah and Sullivan might switch. You think that's part of the conversation? Hannah just unwrapped and she was just warming up on, up front a second ago. I didn't see him flip, so I don't think they decided on signs or anything. Did you get a verdict? Not yet. Oh, we'll find out in a second. Getting a little loud here on a Sunday night. 
Everybody cut loose at the end of the weekend, having a little fun. Oh, yeah. Well, got to look at our friendly promoter, Shannon Coley, there. Everybody's on this side of the table. Uh, looks like we are going to switch sides. Oh, I didn't even notice Maggie was down there. <laughs> there she is, making her way back to the booth. So here's a question for you, Keith. If you had to choose one, who is your pick for open singles at Worlds this year? Well, I'd probably just go with the easiest answer. I'd say Tony. I know he's having a shoulder problem. He's been talking about it all year. And I know Ryan put on one heck of a performance last year, winning every event he played in. But until someone keeps Tony off the podium twice, I mean, not, you know, he's still on the podium. Until somebody keeps him out of first place twice, I wouldn't gamble on it happening two years in a row. Yeah, I think sort of like Clay says, uh, he, would, he would never bet a dollar against Tony. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Clay would all, yeah, statistically speaking, money's on Tony. How about you? Um, you know, uh, I'm interested to see what Munoz is going to do this year. You know, I think he's a strong contender to at least be in the final. Um, it seems like every time he plays Tony, he gets a little closer. Um, but, you know, Tony just has the experience. Tony has it. He's been there. He's done that. Um, so, I don't know. I would definitely put Tony in the top, maybe Munoz. Um, I'm interested to see if, if Ryan will play. Um, and if he does, if he'll try as hard as he did last time. Um, but who knows? The way Brandon Morland's playing, we might see him in the final. That's a good point. If he replicates any semblance of what he did here this weekend, he's definitely going to have a shot at it. All right, now I'm a little confused. Something happened here, and I don't know how to flip the names. Oh, that's how you did it. Nice. Oh. So I was doing a little differently. How did you just do that, Lip? Oh, you're just double-clicking on There we go. All right, there we go. All right, folks, if you've been sticking with us on Twitch and YouTube, this will probably be our last match on those platforms before we go back to InsideFoods.com. But before then, we have the exciting conclusion of this Women's Open Doubles Final. Second set. Yeah, I think everyone in the chat should go in right now and comment who you've got chosen to win this match. Yeah, let's take odds here. As Maggie can't connect there, we are underway. And Maggie continue playing good defense. Someone eventually gets it by her. Sullivan fires that one home, and it's now 1-0. And now looking to clear. That pass attempt denied. Play strong defense and a beautiful pass up the middle of the table grabbed by Sullivan. Tries to dink. Keisha's sitting there waiting for it. Great grab there by Hannah to keep that one off Maggie's three bar. Yeah. 
Maggie will reel it in. So she goes to work on the five. Looking to clear, and Sullivan denies her. And that one blocked up off the table, so Keisha able to clear. You know, I notice Keisha seems to be hitting the ball really well this weekend. You know, she's had some trouble with her hands recently, but she is absolutely hammering the ball this weekend. Her two bar looks great. Sure does. So puts the ball back into play. And great robbery there by Maggie. Bluff and pull kick. And tries a little rolling straight on her push kick. Or push, excuse me. And battle for the ball, and Maggie comes up with it. All right, Bracklin didn't ask you guys for your pred prediction so you can waffle. Pick one or the other. Say that again? <laughs> we only got one prediction. It said, I don't know who to pick. They both have a good shot. You're asking for a definitive answer. Who do we got? Uh, I'm gonna say, um, I, think, I think I think it'll be close. Um, you know, I think at least one game will be close. Uh, for some reason, I feel that Sully's really gonna fire up here and put it away. Could be wrong, but I, I'm feeling a two straight here. I met the folks at home there in Laughlin. I knew who you were gonna pick. You got a long ride home if uh, <laughs> you pick anybody else. It's Mackie fires that one down the middle, and it's now one-one. Oh, and Sullivan drops that pass. Uncharacteristic for how she's been playing this week. Two little mis-executions there in her passing game. That's not how she's been playing all weekend. And Hannah with a big pull kick down the middle of the table. So 2-1 now in favor of Smith and Rue. And he tries the off the wall and Sullivan takes it away. And again, she's off the mark on her pass. Maybe needs to collect herself a little bit here. That has not. Oh, good little bank shot there for Hannah. Short bank, I should say. She hit pretty hard. And that pass attempt is picked off by Maggie and advanced. So Maggie now, chance to tie it. And Maggie puts that one home, so now 2-2. Two, two. All right, we got our first prediction. Jeff thinks Maggie and Keisha are gonna pull it off. So Maggie fires that roll over under the wall. And Maggie with another good block. And that shot on goal, but Keisha there waiting for it. But they, they got tipped, right? Yeah. All right. Keisha puts a good clear up the table, gets tipped into the goal now, 3-2. And Sullivan nicely along the wall. Tries to short. Keisha keeps it out. And fight for the ball, and it ends up with Hannah. up with it on the three. She's got a chance to make it 4-2. Huge ball here. Wouldn't be surprised if she takes a timeout. And nope, tries to go with a short pull kick and loses possession. So now Sullivan off the back wall. Yes! Fires that one long. And it's now 3-3. Three, three. pass there from Maggie. And Maggie doesn't waste any time going to that far corner. Now 4-3, it's game ball. And Sullivan hammers that one through the lane. Oh, and she tries to go with the dink, but mis-executes and ends up in the corner. And Keith's gonna call timeout as they take possession of the chance to take game number one. Talking it over. Yeah. 
Sully and Hannah. Sullivan's smiling at least. Maybe it's just that side of the table. everyone bowing to each other <laughs> <laughs> and we are set to get back underway and Keisha will put the ball into play and Hannah does a good job keeping that one off Maggie's three bar she fires that one on the table fight for the ball and eventually Maggie is the one that comes up with it Still bluff from the pull kick series. Sits back up for a push. Tries it again. She put that one on the wall. Looked like Hannah was there. Oh, and Hannah puts another great pull shot or pull kick onto the on the goal. Man, run out of gas here as Keisha responds in kind. It's the same slider we've seen her hit. And Sullivan's the one that comes up with it. Keisha. Wow, not wasting any time there. Sold in all business. Yes. She fires that one to the long hole, and it is 4 4. pass. Sets up for her push. Tries to split. Hannah gets the block. Calls timeout. It's a very enthusiastic timeout call. See Keisha Maggie talking it over. Back, looking to clear. Yeah. And Maggie blocks her shot and spikes it on her. And Strong and Rude take game number one. A little bit of a stunner there. in the crowd. So then Hannah in the wall. Shannon Coley off to our left trying to get the crowd into it. So Bracklin, if you can get in Hannah's ear right now, what would you tell her? Um, I think it's more of a Sully thing right now. Um, not that it's a Sully thing. I just think I would have some, the only advice I would have for Sully right now would be um, to settle in. You know, she doesn't seem to settle in. She seems to rush a few possessions. Um, you know, it's, it's unfortunate when ball goes loose on the table and it lands on Maggie's three or something like that. So um, I want to see her slow down, maybe try to settle the ball and um, just take her time a little bit more on the five. I think Maggie this set so far has sort of, out five her. I think maybe the last game of the last set too. Maggie's out five her. So um, maybe just slow down, take your time. You know, you, one of the best fives in the world, not only in women's but in the world. And it's um, just uh, I, I would say slow it down. She's kind of playing at Maggie's tempo, and uh, she needs to play at hers. It's a great observation. She's been out, 
operating at a very high percentage on her fly bar all weekend as we see her drop another one there. And she it was just mis-executions. It's not that Maggie got D's on it that she wasn't connecting. It was just off the mark. Yeah, Maggie, Maggie likes to roll. Um, she, she's sort of a rhythm player on the five. She takes a lot of time on her three, but on her five, she's a rhythm player, and uh, it, it sort of seems like it's a feel for her. And, um, you know, if you let her roll, she's she's going to get the ball a ton. And um, you either have to be as good or better or uh, control it, the tempo yourself. That's Hannah looking to clear here now. That one rip. And Keisha reels it in. And Keisha got one of those earlier. That's a great shot, but Hannah able to jump out there and get it. And Sullivan comes up with it. Tries the roller, and Keisha reels it in. Rolling push up, that is. I also call it snake shot or roller. And it takes that one out. And Hannah puts a good shot on goal, and Keisha does well to keep it out, but Sullivan comes up with the rebound. Fires that one just a little too long into the wall, and Keisha stabs it back on goal. Great, great defensive effort there from Hannah. Silly comes up with the loose ball yes. and fires that one long. It's now one nothing. Uh, Maggie can't hang out of that one, so Anna again. Keisha mis-executes and drops it right on a Sullivan's through bar. She fires deep and Keisha comes up with the block and the crowd getting into it a little bit now. Seems like at least the last few possessions, Sullivan's kind of quick shot a little bit. Yeah, I agree. It's, it's less than five seconds each time, it seems. So Keisha now puts the ball back in play, looking to clear. Able to find Maggie's five. And that off the wall is a little too high, but on goal, and it goes in. So now 1-1. One, one. Sullivan takes the ball away and advances it quickly and fires home. And it's now 2-1 in favor of Rue and Smith. And Maggie is right back with the same off the wall pass and still can't hang on, but this time Hannah reels it in. Good stabs back on goal. Come on. And this time it's well, Rue and Smith that pick it up. And timeout is called. It's 3 1 in favor of Sullivan and Hannah. Strong putting the ball in the play. Just a reminder if you're just joining us, after being down 4 1 in the first game of the first set, Maggie Keisha fought back to take it. Hannah and Sullivan fired back to take game number two, and in a good third game, Maggie and Keisha completed the first set, descended to a second. 
And then Maggie and Keisha came out firing in the first game of this one. What a shot. To take game one, and then now Keisha sending that one up the table. So it's now 3-2. Maggie with a chance to answer and equalize. She fires that one long, and it sounded like she clipped the wall a little bit. Hannah keeps it out. And that clear attempt does land on Sullivan's five. She slows down a little bit there. Catches on the three. Takes a little extra time there, and again, can't get it to go. Again, Keisha continues to play great defense, and yet again, and the ball kicks around the table. The ball kicked around on the corner, so Keisha's turn to try and clear. Maggie almost with the takeaway. Oh, and Keisha puts a good shot on goal, and Maggie grabs the rebound. And she rolls that one out there, and just like that, in a blink of an eye, we're tied up at three apiece. With the steal, she continues to play phenomenal defense. And Hannah comes up big with the block. It's only 3-3, but with Maggie and Keisha getting those last two, it feels like it's important for Sullivan and Hannah to get this next ball. Sullivan there, finding her groove again on the five. And she calls timeout. Great match here. Who do you think Terry's cheering for? Do what now? Who do you think Terry's cheering for? I don't know, man. <laughs> He's just, just hoping for a good game. Yeah, I'm just hoping the ride home tomorrow is all right. <laughs> not too awkward. Still talking it over. Maggie and Keisha are ready to go. And Sullivan will put the ball back into play. Yes! And she fires that one down the middle, and it is 4 3 in a game they have to have. And Maggie, good pass off the wall, but she loses the handle. Oh, wow. And Hannah gets one on the table, and it kicks around, and they get the break to send it to a third and final game here in the second set. Oh, yeah, I've been, my mic's still hot, sorry. <laughs> and 
And we are down to the final nine balls. Uh, actually, I assume it'll be overtime if it comes to that, right? Correct, it will be. If it makes it to 4-4, it will be overtime. Well, that's actually a good take. <laughs> you know, I like this one, too. He says, I think Maggie seems to have a knack to get the ball a lot. She's a fighter. You know, that that has seemed to been the case this match. You know, she's she's really, really, really scrapped. Um, you know, I think Sully scrapped with her on the five. It gets a little crazy, and then somehow the ball ends up in Maggie's possession, whether it's the five or the three. If it's the five, she ends up moving it to the three. So she's done a really, a really good job of scrapping, um, and it has paid off. Very true. That's what you, sometimes you yeah, have walked away from match, man. Like, oh, you got every loose ball. It's like at some point, you have to acknowledge the fact that some people are just good at picking up loose balls, and Maggie definitely one of them. I mean, obviously Sullivan very good at it too, but Maggie seems to be winning that battle in this match. Yeah, without a doubt. Actually, that's another good point. Terry's probably just happy that it's a uh, a long, hard-fought match from something maybe Sully tires out before their <laughs> open doubles match sure. if, if they get that far. You know, there's I'm sure there's no no emotion to feel but happiness when when your wife and your daughter makes it to a final two. So uh, you probably look at it from that perspective. I'm I'm sure he's feeling good either way. He's probably proud. Sure. Well, he's always just constantly smiling. Nicest man in foosball. That's right. for her five. And we are set to get this third and final decisive game underway. Maggie puts the ball into play and gets it along the wall. Rattles at the table and it's one nothing. Nice pass there from Maggie. Tries the middle and gets the pickup on the rebound. Speaking of scrapping, that's it right there. That's it. You better stay in front of the ball. So one one here. And Keisha, another good block. Now Shannon's over here taking notes. And Keisha call. Oh, nope, comes to a dead stop. So she puts the ball back into play. Fires that one on goal. Good shot there, but Hannah equal to it. go. That's it, man. Lane Sullivan got a, all of her five bar, her first pass. She immediately passed it through and then fires off a shot like that. Now with a 2-1 lead. Sullivan ham Sully hammers that one home. We're all tied up at two. You know, I don't know if it has something to do with the headset being on or what, but when she hits that ball, it's, it's like you can feel it in your chest. Yeah. Oh, there's another one, yeah. man. She just reels it in. Catches it in the air against the wall. <laughs> oh, sends that one wide, and Sullivan comes up with a loose ball of her own. Takes a second here. And fires that one long, gets around that front man. It's now 3-2. So it looks like Sullivan's found her three bar. Sully sits on the wall for that one. Good D. And Maggie gets a piece of it, but Sully's still able to grab it. And she sends that wide. Okay. 
So Keisha again looking to clear. That ball kicks around. Keisha, nice job reeling it in. There is oh, oh, wow. almost, but yeah, another one of those balls just kicking around the table, and Maggie almost grabbed it. Hannah's shot is collected. Maggie can't get that one. Oh, nice advancement there from Sully. Tries to dink. And a great pass there, finds its way through. Maggie Strong, oh, and she mis-executed. She's smiling, but, oh, another beautiful pass from Hannah to Sullivan. And Sullivan calls timeout with a chance to make it 4-2. Oh, that makes Austin watching. <laughs> I know it, man. And all four of these ladies have played in a ton of events. I don't know how they do it. Continue to play at a high level. Guess I'm just not in foosball shape. But this has been a marathon here. 3-2 in the third game of the second set after the first set went three games. Uh, for the individual that acquired on Twitch about open doubles and singles, open singles has been played out. Brandon Moreland took that one over Brandon Munoz. As the ball gets flying around here and it comes to rest in between, so Sullivan tries to get away with a quick one there. <laughs> uh, Keisha reminds her, nope, that's our ball. So then he puts it back into play and fires one on the near wall. Tries a back pin shot. That was crafty, but she sent it wide. Open singles has been played. Open doubles has not. Three teams left in open doubles still. But this is probably going to be our last match here on Twitch and YouTube. As Sullivan can't grab that one, so Keisha will have to put it back into play. I'm feeling one from Keisha here. She's gotten a couple big ones so far. Oh, and I think Sullivan was looking forward to it. <laughs> and she's able to clear, and look who comes up with it. Maggie drops her wrist, gonna go for another snake shot, taking her time. Fires and sprays that one in the corner too. She's smiling because she knows she misexecuted. Sullivan, great pass there. And again, Keisha able to keep her out. Yes! And Sullivan stuffs Keisha back into the goal and it is now championship ball for Sullivan Rue and Hannah Smith. Don't count Maggie and Keisha out. We've seen him come back from down 4-1. And Maggie slides that one in, and it's 4-3. The composure to do that in that moment. It's one of those ones, if you get it, it's like, oh, yeah, great call. <laughs> if you don't, you're thinking about it for the next two weeks. As Hannah puts that one, or excuse me, Sullivan puts that one through the lane and fires it home. And a great shot. And in three games in two sets, Sullivan Rue and Hannah Smith hang on. Great performance from Maggie Strong and Keisha Rue. But in the end, it's Sullivan and Hannah that hang on to become your 2022 Mississippi State Women's Open Doubles Champions. So we've been doing interviews after this. You want to go interview Hannah and Sully? Man, I'm actually up for a match right now. All right. I'm pushing my luck. <laughs> well, appreciate you keeping me company. I guess I'll take care of it. Yeah, man. And uh, we'll see you. Good luck, brother. Hey, buddy. All right, folks. I'm going to hop around the table here, and we'll do this interview.
Get your champagne. <laughs> Over there, lovey. Oh, you want to take that? Yeah, you gotta get your champ. Champagne toes for the champ. They pick your trophy up. Terry's gonna get a pick. Hold it back up. Hold it back up. Hold it back up. All right, guys, we're here in the pit with Sullivan Rue and Hannah Smith. Ladies, congratulations, hanging on. What were you thinking as that uh, went down to the the third game in that third, second set? That was really rough, honestly. Um, there was a lot that went in that we really couldn't have done anything about, and she's really tricky. And she's always wanted to get a bunch of, you know, bonus shots, which that's her game, and it works, obviously. Yeah, um, I think... Another key thing was Keisha shot well out of the back. I was like, she's pounding me back there, so I was just trying to break up a piece of it. But uh, we, we took us a hard time for us to get going. We didn't play our best. That was not what we do. But um, we found a way to win, and that's what champions do. So we figured it out, and that's, that's good enough for today. <laughs> well, great to get to see you guys do the interview together this time. I know you already squared off once earlier. And I saw you guys taking down some pretty big dogs in pro doubles, too. So maybe we'll see you guys back here in a little bit. But appreciate your time, and uh, good luck the rest of the way. And uh, go enjoy the, the victory. All right, folks, don't go anywhere. 
Our next match has already been called up. It's that open doubles elimination bracket final. Oop. Gonna be up in just a second, so Sullivan having to run the marathon here. Goes from one big match to another. So this match getting ready to get underway here. Uh, folks, we are unfortunately going to shut down on YouTube and Twitch, but we will continue to... Uh, sure what time is it? You guys have been so nice. Keeping the comments positive. We'll do one more. We'll shut it down after this one, because this is going to be a good one. And if you're going to chant for it, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll stay with you guys. Oh, stop punching the table. You knocked on our monitor. Huh? All right, at least Jeff said please. And it looks like Hannah Smith's going to join me for this one. You can take your time. No rush. I'm sure you're exhausted. But we are ready to get underway here, and Sullivan and Michael are going to start with the ball. And Sullivan works that one through the lane. And tries the little spray dink there. Interesting note, somebody's already commented on it in the Twitch comment section, but Jason and Warren Van Landingham are not going with the setup that they had been. They it didn't switch until late in the King Seat match against Terry Rue and Corey Taylor. But they ended up switching, and this, this was working better for them at the end of that match, so that's probably why they're sticking with it. But Jason had been playing up front for most of the event as Sullivan puts that one through, still waiting to open scoring here. And Sullivan fires that one home, and it's one nothing. Hello. <laughs> I'm back. <laughs> well, Hannah, thank you for joining me. Congratulations on your victory. Thank you. As Warren can respond here, and Michael keeps him out. Do you know who Cotty Womple Adventures is? They're, they're saying hi to you. Oh, Twitch. hello. So, yeah, this is actually fun. <laughs> We're on Twitch so they can actually talk to us and we can see what they're saying. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah I haven't seen this yet. Um, no, I don't know who that is, but hello. <laughs> Sullivan just hammered that long. And they're up 2 two nothing now. And Sullivan gets the takeaway. there from Sullivan. Oh, and Jason stubs it and turns it over. And Sullivan now with a chance to make it 3-0. Bangs it. Oh, yes, you do. Oh, um, my Banzini partner. Let's see. Lisa Tolley, or it's going to be um, Rebecca Terry. Rebecca Terry was the person that, uh, some reason, this kind soul took me on and was like, I will play women's doubles with you, even though you've never touched a Bonzini table. And I was like, girl, you are so brave. <laughs> but she did, and we won, and she was a rock star. So shout out, Rebecca. 
In the meantime, it's now 3-0 in favor of Rue and Bates, and Bates continues to play good defense. Hey, Sullivan's last shot just barely missed the far corner. And Warren puts that one into the wall, and it comes to rest, so Bates will put it back into play with a 3-0 lead. Looks like it's Rebecca. Oh, hey, perfect. <laughs> and Michael Bates dials up a big bank. I would like to know how many he's made um, this event. <laughs> yeah, we've only seen him here on table one, and Warren mixes it up there to get them on the board. Still down 4-1, but that gets them on. As Sullivan puts it through and uh, loses the handle a little bit. Jason. Fires that one, and Warren does a great job snagging that. Tries oh, the nice. left hook, and it fires oh. back on his own goal, but Jason does well to keep it out. I love aggressive players that do that. You know, like, it's a momentum thing. Like, Warren grabs it, bangs it. Like, you know that, that left hook is just second nature to him. Yeah, it's a reflex. I hope mine is that way one day. <laughs> yeah. And Bates sends another bank shot, but Warren able to get a hand, handle on it. As Michael now looking to clear. Oh, Chase. Penel. Penel, sorry. Yo. Chase called a match with me at Worlds <laughs> last year and he informed me on how to pronounce his last name as Bates' pass attempt goes the long way but does find Sullivan's three bar. And she fires straight and can't get it to go. You're getting a lot of congratulations on your win there. Well, thank you to everyone. You're all so kind. Oh, hey, my buddy Kevin Lennox, one of my frequent partners. Good buddy. Listen. Well, good to know that. Yeah, I got to remember to keep checking and looking over there. It's so cool. It's a cool yeah, feature that I haven't uh, got to play with yet. Makes it a little more conversational. Yeah. Oh, Michael stubs that one and just unfortunately drops off to Warren. And Warren trying to go a little too deep there, put it into the wall. The hole was there. So Michael now will put the ball back into play. You know, after watching this, I might go back and check out some film from this weekend on zones and stuff and I might work in this bank series because this thing is banging. A lot of people try it but he's doing it at such a high percentage as he does it again to put away game number one. And another cool thing that I've kind of figured out about banks from watching these, you know, the, the European style is phenomenal. They're so good at banks and not everyone shoots it mega hard. It doesn't have to be that way. You know, they can literally like just make the perfect contact and that's that gets you the good angle and you don't force it and um that's something i need to work on but i think michael's doing a really really great job warren open scoring here in game number two starts it up so Levin and michael are a team that you have to come out and you have to handle your business quick so i think um that was a really good adjustment from warren you know um and she has a good five bar she, they're all four which are great players so you have to handle what you can control and do your best to keep out the slop. Sully takes it away on the three. Bug that one. Caught in a back pin and gets that wow. sliding little dink. From this angle, it didn't look there. <laughs> that no, was good defense didn't. by Jason yeah. in my part. I know it went in, but it looked like it wasn't there. And Michael takes that one out. 1-1 one, one now here. You know, you often wonder, like, maybe this is the tournament that gets Bates back into it more foosball you know how cool would that be i mean you how know, do you not how do you not want to keep playing and come back for the next one yeah just this. in time for worlds that was a great pass attempt Warren. Pick it off. yeah and find a little bit of a groove here now on the five and again puts into the wall now. Fires that one down the middle. Able to clear, but Wicks reels it in. Oh, and Sullivan with the pickup okay. stabs it home, and it's now 2-1. Um, playing with the lead here is also key. Um, you know, Maggie and Keisha are both such phenomenal players that I told Sully after, I was like, man, it really felt like, you know, they were just felt like I was playing from behind every time. <laughs> and I was like, it's literally the first game and it's 0-0. Zero, zero. Why do I feel this way? <laughs> and I was like, this has been a marathon. So um, it definitely, does it make a difference? I mean, I'm sure it can't not make a difference whenever you're playing with the lead. You know, you're a little more confident, but you have to be able to rein that in and make sure that you're doing the appropriate, you know, timing. You're not rushing. You're not pressing. You're not kind of getting too slap happy instead of, like, catching the ball, stopping it. 
etc. Blah blah blah. <laughs> no, that's a great point. It takes a little bit of the pressure off. Yeah, it's easier said than done. And I know a lot of people oh, I talked to, the defense there was fire. Yeah, she fired that out there. <laughs> She calls timeout. Yeah. Not a bad idea. I don't know how her arm is still um, functioning. <laughs> how many events have you guys played? You're still going to Pro Doubles together. Yeah. yeah. She's amazing. But I know they play a lot at home, too. So maybe she's ready for this. Well, so, you know, young. Yeah, uh, that does help. I've heard. Yeah. Not falling apart like some of us old folks. And she fires that one along the wall. Chance to make it 3-1 here. And she Very fires nice. it long, and Sullivan Rue starting to heat up a little bit here. You know, those, like, critical points right there are – that's a critical point <laughs> is my yes. – what I was trying to bring up. You know, 2-1, it's like, yeah, you know, great job. I fought and I've got the lead, quote-unquote lead, but it's minimal. You know, but if you make this 3-1 point, things can go really different. It makes you feel better. It was a great, great block there by Jason. Yes. Changed it up a little bit. Yeah, nice job there. Tries to send wow. a slow one up, wow. and Sullivan just takes it away. Rolling, yeah. Goes with the rolling push, and Jason was waiting for it. Tries an outside slingshot. Rolling slow things down. Nice path there for the lane. Warren gets that one on goal, but Bates was there waiting for him. It's been all pushed so far. Fires it again, gets that one to go, rattles it home. Now 3-2. Nice job advancing. Warren's another player that really does a great job mixing up timing. You know, he's, he's done nothing but shoot at the push side. Okay. And okay. And maybe yeah. it's a game plan. Let's yeah. establish it. You know. Um, well, no, I was, just, I was about to agree with you. Like the fact that he's but, still getting it. Right. Up his no, timing, and yeah. it's you know like isolating is so big in this game of foosball, and it's. I think um, that would be a great starter point for you know people just getting into foosball. I was saying you know just isolate. If you're having a hard time reading the defense, isolate. Literally just bang push, bang push, bang push. I know I'm gonna time it. So like. Of course, defensively, you know, Michael's going to have to make the adjustment and be aware of that. But then again, you know, Warren's a great player. You can't just sit over there. So it also is very tricky. But And he does a great job switching up timing, as I was saying. You know, he's one that when you play him, it's not like, oh, I'm definitely going to get some blocks. No, like he can literally run away with this thing. So both of these forwards are really, really solid. So a nice job. Hammering that one through as Wicks and Van Lanningham have shifted nice momentum back there. their way. Now 4-3 for them. And Jason did do a great job. And Jason tries to go off the back wall. Sullivan was ready for it. Oh, and a beautiful pass. And Warren grabs it. He's got a chance to put away game number two. And Bates comes up with a big block Great as he block. comes back pole side that time. Tries to straight. Van Landingham able to get a big piece of it. Bates able to keep it out. Very and nice. And there's that bank that he's been so lethal with all day. And it's now 4-4. Four, four. He's really seeing it well. You know, he's got something figured out about clearing because he's cleared an extremely high percentage and He's made a bunch, too. <laughs> yeah. So um, um, I'm really glad to see that from him. I know sometimes coming back, if you don't play regularly, you come back on tour and you have a little difficult time reading the zone or you see something that you don't see when you play with your buddies at home. But clearly that's not the case here. And it's not that Jason and Warren are running a bad zone. It's just um, little small changes, you know, that you can see that need to be made. But I don't have any doubt that this is going to be oh, that, I saw, a really I, tough game. That looked very, very casual. Didn't even realize they... Jason oh, yeah, got yeah. up, put the ball back into play, and fired it. Gets up so. front, bangs one. It's like, ah, you can have it, buddy. Yeah. Let me get back in the back. <laughs> that was so nonchalant. That was, yeah. I mean, Michael Bates has been nothing but stoic all day, so it's just kind of like didn't even realize the they were going. battle of the stoics. Everybody was had stoic. <laughs> yeah. But either way, we go to game three, tied up one apiece, and Sullivan's going to have a chance to open scoring. Oh, and Warren 
can't hang on to that one. And gets that one just wide of the goal and gives Sullivan a shot at it, but she can't reel it in. But yeah, it's funny you were saying about uh, Michael Bates. Nice grab there by Van Landingham. He's playing at such an incredible high level, having great success with a young forward that everybody's excited about seeing play. Yeah. How do you it, not catch the ball again? Right, I know. And that's the thing we all kind of like joke about around home. It's like, Michael Bates going to show up? And they're like, yeah, he's going to show up and he's going to get top five and whatever he does. And everybody's like, what? And they're like, man, it's like riding a bike for him. It literally is. Like, yeah, playing at an extremely high level here. Absolutely. Drop that one, and Van Lanningham made him pay for it, but still, so far. And he gets okay. it with the dink. Oh, so he might have rushed that one a little bit. And Warren goes with the hook. Bates keeps it out. And very again. nice, very nice. It's like they start to get down a little bit, and he says, hey, I'm He's just like, going to right. in real quick. Okay, hold on a minute. I'll get this one. Yeah. Those three in a row that he got <laughs> in the match against Coley and Robertson, they were down 3 nothing, And he yeah. just stepped up. To me, that could have been his own problem. Um, for Just from what I saw. Yeah. But I'm sure that's a change that they will make very quickly. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? They're both great players. Didn't mean that in a shot type <laughs> way. It sounded really bad. I'm sorry. Oh, no, it's okay. We're late in the weekend. I tried to make <laughs> a joke is. earlier on the radio show, and everyone's like, man, you sound like a trigger. I was like, I was just trying to kid around. <laughs> Ouch. Which reminds me to go find Logan Hearn and let him know that if he hears it, it was meant to be me. <laughs> Logan's stuff. He can handle it. <laughs> okay, yes. another hook. I'd love to see yes. it. Keep banging it. <laughs> Goes with the quick Nifty. front pin. And it's 3-1 for Wicks and Van Landingham. Now, this is a momentum shift that we're going to have to get under control here if Bates and through there we go um that'll that'll get it back going right you know direction. what i mean yeah. um but you could really see warren's feeling it you know he's banging the five bar he's getting any shooting the front pin like i love seeing that yeah <laughs> just as a watching turning around and operating with confidence and Bates absolutely again gets the block but warren gets the rebound and it keeps the goalie on their toes you know if you get away with two or three quick ones then that's two or three less that you have to do with whatever game plan you have going on <laughs> As Warren fires that one quickly to the pole side, so that gives them a 4-2 lead here in game number three. Momentum seems to be swinging back in their favor. The team. Oh, hello. Sully and Michael. Well, Sully has left the building. <laughs> it's just funny, like this side, you get to see a good shot of the crowd, and this side is just like blank wall. <laughs> yes. Tucked away in the corner here of this ballroom, but been a great time all weekend here in the pits. And Sullivan goes back to work. And Warren redirects that pass. Bates trying a little first pull kick there. Just wide of the goal. Mm. Oh, and Van Landingham stuffs that one back into the goal, and just like that, it is now two games to one in favor of Van Landingham and the Wicks. Van Landingham Jr. and the Wicks. There we go. <laughs> Want to be official about it? Absolutely. So we're what here? 2 1? 2 1. 2 1, okay, yeah. I was just watching the point get pulled over there, and I wasn't watching the games. Okay, we have a switch. Interesting. First time I think we've seen him switch all event. Um, may, Yeah. Maybe so. At least that I've seen. I saw maybe early on. Um, maybe I saw Michael up for a ball or two, but I know Sully has really been up front for the for the most of the event. Here we go. Bates fires that one down the middle. Now one nothing. And you know, I don't want to say it, but maybe Sully is a little tired, if not physically, but mentally. I know yeah. I'm drained. Um, oh, so this there. could be a really good change for her. You know. Sorry, I glanced up. What was the... She just gets stuck. A hook. No, uh, a hook. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, Bates going back to work. 
Michael Bates' five bar is is tier one too. The heck was that? Sounded like a metal water bottle or something. There we go. Bates okay, far we is have one of the far side, not too. Are we going five here? We have to, right? I'd love for it to We've go five. To. Everybody We've would love for it to go, go five. five. Yeah. If no you doubt. don't want it to go five, let us know on Twitch. Yeah, and get out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Bates tries the middle, not there. That's a good block back there, by Jason Wicks. Sure was. Oh, that was odd. And Jason's pass attempt didn't have as much on it as I'm sure he would have wanted. As Bates tries a hook, but Warren got a piece of it. <laughs> Some hot mics over here, man. Who let you guys yeah, in the man. booth? <laughs> as that one goes now, two two. Uh, no. We can't. We can't find the after dark graphic. You guys want to? Uh, you know what? I'll get on the mic. I will get out of here. I will and let do. You guys. No, no, no. You can hang out with them if you want. Oh God. Okay. I don't. I, I would like. I trust you to keep it relatively like, no, take professional. Take a break. Take a break. All right. You're right. Yeah. That's good. Well. Well. Uh, what? No. I gotta do the final. I gotta do the final. All right. Come here. Come get this one. I'm getting out of here. You can have this one. All right. Yeah. She's yeah, getting sick of me anyway. All right. Sorry about all that, folks. A little confusion here in the booth. We're having fun here on a Sunday night. Wait, there's cheese sticks? Uh, see? All right, folks. I may have to apologize for what's about to happen, but now I have the pleasure of being joined in the booth by Blake Robertson. Blake, thanks for joining me. Blake Robertson. Who's that? Oh, man, you ain't got to apologize for me, man. How's it going, <laughs> Keith? Yes! Oh, Sully so with the push. Home. I just thought you were going to start saying Michael's nickname on Uh, I mean, that's, you know, it's a real fact, you know. It, with the newsletter, when it came out, you know, Michael Booger Bates, and we, you know, Master Bates, he's a pro master. I mean, I'm not lying. Oh, that's, I didn't even put together that it's actually uh, a See, you got a dirt, yeah. it's because you got a dirty mind. See, I apologize to the crowd out there listening <laughs> in. <laughs> For, I'm sorry you had to listen to Keith all day, but we got some real people we all here. Are. And let's see who's in the chat. We got Chase Pinnell. Oh, man. Chase, go work on your computers. Uh, in the meantime, it's 4-2 now as Sullivan and Michael have been ch switching back and forth here. Yeah, they're fighting to dig dig back in this uh, in this match. They're down 2-0, right? No, it's 2-1. They, the, they took the first. This is the fourth. So, oh, wow. So if they get this, it goes five. Five, yeah. Wow. We're going to have a treat for the folks at home. Can you imagine? Dude, Sully, she threw straight at me and Shannon. I know. I, I don't. I, right I, and violated me. I haven't been violated. I, I mean, I've been, I've, I haven't been <laughs> violated that in so long. But, yeah. Yeah. I She's mean, playing great. She won, what, pro singles? She's, what, playing for King Seat and pro doubles, won women's open doubles. Uh, might have to, she took King Seat and pro singles. I don't think they played that yet, have they? I'm I'm pretty sure someone told me they won, or she won. I, I could be mistaken. Nope, she's still waiting to play Safi. It's a rematch of the King Seat match. Safi Saiba. I like Safi. Louisiana, Louisiana homie. All right, we're going to get a switch here. Jason Wicks going to get up front to try and guard the five bar of Michael Bates. I've always loved Michael's little five bar. He's always got really good five bar D and actually decent five bar offense. He's got a nice little brush and a little tic-tac. Nothing strong or overpowering, but Jason gets a steal. That was a nice little steal, yeah. And Michael gets a piece enough of it to keep it off Jason's three bar. What's Sully? What's Sully going to do here? Pass? Oh, yeah, pass gets it up. Goes the long way, but gets it there. Michael's shooting pretty good, too. I actually saw that. Uh, that's something I would do. <laughs> no, you wouldn't have rocked it all. You would have just, just would have pounded ooh, it. Got the wrist. Warren with the slinger, a little slider from the back, make it 4-3. You're right. I, you know, I wouldn't have just, I would have just went. I wouldn't rock it all. Ooh, see? That's a nice little pass right there. And a timeout by up. Michael Bates. Does Sully come up and shoot it? She does. Wow. Good they call, Keith. Sure. But they didn't hesitate. No, nah, that's probably the better call, and, man. Uh, we're going to get the switch on the left side, too. Also, I didn't actually say hi to Kevin. Kevin, good to see you, buddy. And Sully fires it home, and we are going five games. Bang, bang, chicken and shrimp. <laughs> 
How you doing? Hi there. Got K Dog up here too, man, but we only got two mics. Yeah, we only got two, but. Hollywood in the house. Can I have an autograph? And we're already underway, and we're going to have a chance to open scoring here. Oh, wow. Th that was quick. I know. They, they keep doing that to me. I, I, I don't seconds. like that. I, I'll take as much time as I need. And Warren fires that one in the near That was side. authority. Yeah. He hit that with authority. All right. he's he's He might be upset. Someone hurt his feelings. I think that's Sullivan push -up. Oh, I don't like Michael up front. I'm not going to be honest in the fifth game right now. It's what got him back in it after they were down 2-1, and it looked like it was getting away from him. So. Yeah, but here's the thing, though. Like, you might have to go back to your what got you there in the first place because this is what matters. This is the pressure, right? I don't know if Michael has it, and Sully's playing, being Sully right now. Oh, we'll see. I don't know. I could be wrong. Oh, by the way, I want to let you know we did get our Twitch chat up. So I've been, I've been, oh, I've been, I've been, I've been communicating Sorry. with the chat, Long Keith. Day. I know. We're going to take over the Open Doubles final, me and Kevin. We're going to have a vote. I think I have to do that one. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I would never. I love your commentary, dude. That, you have man. a nice voice for this. I All right, here we go. Let's talk about foosball. Got the Warren on the five bar right here. I love his five bar series as well. Oh, see, that's that defense from Michael Bates. Nice steal to the three bar, setting up the roller, shooting on Jason Wicks. He's actually been shooting kind of decent, Keith. He has. Jason playing pretty good deep, too, though. Let's see who comes out on top here. Fires near side, and it's 1-1 one, one here. I think and we're going to get switch. a yeah after every point right now. Warren's five looks a little off. Watch. Oh. Oh. He heard you. He did. He had to prove me wrong. Setting up the roller, not moving, shooting on Michael Bates. Wow, hits the corner on the push side. Good D by Mike. Mike's going to put the ball back in play. And he's had a bunch of bangers off the banks on this one, too. Blake, you're to more buzzed than Lindsey Lohan. I feel like you kind of always talk about that, though, aren't you? Yeah, I mean, I was more buzzed than Lindsey Lohan at 9 a.m. this morning. <laughs> Come on, man. You got to develop a British accent now, too. Me? Yeah, remember when she did that? Lindsay Lohan all of a sudden started talking about a British accent? I actually don't even really know who Lindsay Lohan is. That might be before my time. Oh, dude, no, but the bank not. shot. He corners it on the inside bank. Thank you for Picked refocusing. Picked up by Warren. Huh? Thank you for refocusing on the foosball match here. Of course. Of course. This is what I'm here for. I love foosball, man. It's my home state. I'm happy. Having a good time. Y'all know what it is. Bang, bang. 2022, Mississippi State. Rocking, rocking, rocking. Michael throwing a D. One more time here wow. again. Go finds the, the wall. It goes straight up in the air. Lands back on the three bar, setting up the pull shot, hitting the slider three we'll quarter. Warren hit that one. It's now two one. Starting to feel like this one might head for eight seven. Mm -hmm. well, we'll see. Haven't had. We've had a couple overtimes here on table one. We haven't had an eight seven yet. You guys had one over on table two earlier, didn't you? Uh, yeah, that was one of the most craziest matches I think I've been a part of. That was insane. I had to dig dig in places that I haven't, you know, dig since I was playing in the sandbox when I was younger. 8-7 with Tom, you and Eric, and, man, it was a battle. Up, down, up, down. It was a good match. So he's trying to pass and clear the ball. She's having a little trouble right now. Yeah. And she pounds it from the two bar with a push. You should just keep saying stuff. <laughs> oh, I'm they, sorry. Am I talking too no, much? No, no, no. I apologize. No. You said Warren wasn't passing well, and then he hit the pass. You said Sully was having a hard time clearing. She buries the hey, shot. Hey, she got, she got stuffed like three times, and then she rips the shot. So if the pass yeah. isn't there, you know, what's the option? Yeah. You got to take that shot. But you know what? You are correct. I think you're on to something there, Keith. Yeah, it's like the reverse of the commentator's curve. <laughs> You're just good luck. Man, I, I need some of that after I, um, the way I played this weekend. Bates does a nice job keeping that out. It's still 2-2. Two -two. Oh, dude, this is a, a, a crucial moment for the bank. So oh, selling fighting. Way to fight and save that. Warren was going to get that. See what he does. That's a good little zone for that bank. Inside's there. Inside's there. Okay. I knew it. I knew it. Get out. Have you played this game before? Well, Michael did that a couple of times to me earlier. But yeah, that was shot. that was the one that's open. It's up to the goalie to actually block that. But uh, you know, Michael scored three out the back to end the to end our match. So So now they're up three two here in the fifth, Keith. Oh, and, and now Warren's up to the pool. He got called timeout here. Oh, he rushed it. That was a big ball. 
It is. The difference between 3-3 oh. three, three and 4-2. Right. Wall pass. I'm, I'm, I'm terrible right now. No, man. I'm telling you. You're, just, you're on the mark. Everything you say. <laughs> <laughs> it's the opposite. Oh, my gosh. What a Balake. I don't know. Rivers. Rivers. Jason oh. fires that one home now all tied up at 3-3. There's that big ball. Now 3-3. Three, three Bates is, gets up front. Yeah, that does a good switch, too. The five bar for Bates, I think, is very good. And um, what do you do here, though? Mike's going to shoot. Setting up the roller. Looking over the defense. And he Fires pushes far the side. Oh. It is now champ or match ball. Match ball to go to the finals yes. of open doubles. For Sullivan Rule and Michael Bates. And they went for, what, $50 in the Calcutta? Is that really what it was? I mean, we'll talk about it later. I don't know if... Yeah, that's a good idea. Good call. Yeah. I, what Calcutta? I, uh, what, I can't spell Calcutta. No. Is I've that never, a K? I, I've never been there. <laughs> I've Wicks, never been there. Wicks, I heard it's fun on vacation there. <laughs> Wicks calls timeout with his back against the wall. And also, uh, it, let me ask you this, because you had to experience this earlier. Everyone loves you and Shannon. But okay. When you're playing against a team like this, you know everyone's cheering for, for, for Sully. Like and Sully and Michael? Michael, right? Right, right. Okay. So now Jason and Warren are kind of experiencing the same thing. Sure, like, What's sure. going through your head to try and overcome that? Um, uh, You know, it, it can motivate you or it can, uh, you know, it can bother you a little bit. It just depends on the person and your personality. You can channel it. Like Tony would probably channel that and it would, you know, don't poke the bear type thing. So, I mean, I don't, th I love that type of stuff. I wish that my family was here earlier and they were cheering and, you know, I wish there was more just a louder and more pressured environment that would make the game a little bit more, not that, you know, foosball is not exciting enough already, but I, I, I love that idea. So when you're playing against it, you, you hear it, you see it, but you still have to, you know, your eyes are on the table. You're playing your game. You can't let it bother you. Meanwhile, so he's putting shots on goal like the ball is our money. Michael's on the five. Oh, dude. He rushed it. Misexecuted the pass. Sully trying to dump it. Did Sully score this? <gasps> Almost. What a pickup by Mike to end it. To end the match Michael here. Michael Bates. What's he do? Calls, calls timeout, and Sullivan Rue is going to get up front with a chance to put this away in advance to the final, where she gets to try and double dip her dad. How you doing? Man, what a headline that would make. Man, uh, if you want me to commentate that, I will too. All right, you're welcome. Are you sure? Yeah. Oh, thanks, All man. I'm right, having fun up here, dude. I, I love, love having it. you in the booth. Oh, man, I love it. We, oh, man. I was looking for you earlier, but. I know, man. Dude, I Well, man, I've been playing nonstop, it feels like, all day, and I finally, well. I'm obviously out, so I've been out for like an hour, a couple hours, so. Sullivan wow. He might have wasted that one. That ball flew. Well, he did that slingshot with the one guy. Oh, here we go. Michael setting up the bank. Inside's still there. He tried it. And Sullivan comes Picked up the, with the ball and another chance to put this one away. I think she banked. Well, oh, no, goes take your time. Dink, take but your she time. gets another one. Take your time. Take your time. Breathe. Oh. Fires it, and Warren comes up with the block. Wow, this is good. This is good foosball. Yeah, I mean, I'm sitting here on the edge of my seat to solve it again. Her five bar has been every, – oh, there's – everybody's Dude. tight. They need to breathe. Tell her her five bar has been bad, and I guarantee you she'll just <laughs> – I know, right? Oh, good shot there from Warren, and Jason grabs the rebound. And he's looking to send it to overtime. Oh, he loses the handle. Fires far side, and That's we're headed for extra balls. What more could you ask for? Extra balls is what we're asking for. <laughs> <laughs> when I say it, it sounds like that. Um, I, oh, I'm sorry. I, that's what I thought you said. My bad. You see that shot <laughs> they just put on goal? That did. It was a short. It was a good shot. Yeah. It's a clear. All right, let's see what Michael does. Let's see if he works the five. Nope. There you go, going into the tic tac down to the oh, wall. Now when Michael does edge. that, yeah, he's that's when his five bar is really good. Let's see if he looks over the defense, setting up the roller. And no, he goes straight into the middle, and now we're five four with the advantage on the right side of the table, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, match ball for Sully and Warren Michael. gets up front. Perfect soundtrack for this match right now. 
I, I can't believe this music, man. I wish they would really kind of like let me a uh, nice pass right here to end the match right here. Sullivan Rue. With the steal and the pass. And Fire the shot. Home. Bang, bang, chicken and shrimp. And Sullivan Rue. It's going to the Michael finals Bates in of open overtime. doubles to play her dad, Terry Rue. And Corey Taylor. No, Shane. Somebody told me. What you don't know the Shane story? I don't. So, uh, uh, Eric man. was in. I think it was Eric in here earlier telling me. I got Big E dog. So, so they're at a local tournament. You know, they're from the same area, Lafayette. And uh, I'm. I, I, don't quote me on this, <clears throat> but I believe the story goes. Terry and Corey drew each other in the draw, and I guess um, they were fighting. Corey. It's like one of Corey's first tournaments, and they're winning. And Terry keeps calling Corey Shane. <laughs> but Corey's too nice of a guy to to correct, to correct them, and they're winning, and he wants to win. So he was Shane for the entire tournament, and then they win, and then all of a sudden he tells Terry, hey, by the way, man, my name's not Shane, it's Corey. <laughs> nice. Well, so, that's a great story. I feel like we should talk a little bit about what just happened because that was incredible. Yeah, man. I mean, that was, that was awesome, man. Michael and Sully are vibing. They're doing really well. They're making good switches. Um, Michael's doing nice banks out the back. Sully's even scoring her push out the back. The five bars working, the three bars working. Everything's working for them right now. And they have all the momentum. So it's going to be interesting to see. I know we're going to have a little break. So I am um, I'm going to go do a shot. I'm going to go find some alcohol. All right, man. And well, then I'm going to come back. Me. I'm actually going to step out of here, too. It, it, Terry Rue just walked up to the table like he meant business. Well, he's gonna. he needs to warm up. The, uh, cause oh, they're going to go I, right I, into this. All right. No, well, they're going to they're gonna warm up. I, th I mean, the way Sully and Michael's playing right now, I think Terry might, might want to hit some balls. And they, oh, they, there they go. They just called it. I can't do. Sully just won a women's open doubles final. Played that tough match five games over. Pro singles final. She's still got the pro singles final. A play. women's open doubles. She already played a two-set overtime match against Hannah for women's singles earlier. And now she's got to play this. How the heck is she doing it? Genetics. Just, like, being Gen young genetics. and in good shape still and, yeah, like, being yeah. able to go 100 miles an hour for Yeah, eating six hours. Look, you should look over there. She's eating donuts, bro. That's like well, the uh, sugar high. Anyway, I mean, let's go take our little break. Let's and do we'll it. Come back. We'll be back. That was fun. All right, Blake's trying to talk me into it. If we have 10 pleases by the time we get back from our little break on that chat, we'll stay on Twitch and we'll do this open doubles final on Twitch.
Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine, I guess that's good enough. We are ready to get underway. Blake still taking a quick little break, but he'll be back with us in just a minute. Sullivan's pass. This is the mark, so Corey Taylor going to look to clear here. <laughs> that one's stuffed back into the goal, and it's 1 0. Yeah. We're going to figure out what balls we're going to use here. And we are ready to get back underway here, and Terry Rue going to work against Sullivan. Terry's been passing really well all weekend. It's been a topic of conversation here in the booth. As Michael keeps that one out. Oh, and a beautiful pass, and Sullivan just can't hang on, but she's able to get it back on over five, and she fires that one through the lane. Chance to make it 2-0 now. This is a rematch. Terry and Corey put Sullivan and Michael into the loser's bracket. 
That one was over on table five earlier in the weekend. So I don't know exactly how it went other than who won or how close it was or anything like that. But Terry now, chance to equalize. Sullivan hammers that one through as we're tied 1-1. Yeah, we were going to get this one off of Twitch. We were going to call it a night and go back to JustInsideFoose.com. But Blake talked me into keeping it on Twitch and YouTube so you guys can watch this one from home. If we can get you guys to ask nicely. So appreciate you all doing that and sticking with us here as this promises to be a Good one. Terry's pull is disturbing. So is Sullivan's push. A little yin and yang. As Terry now fires that one long, and Michael meets him out there. And Terry fires that one home now, 2 1. Yeah, don't worry, folks. Blake will be back. Yes. And Sullivan gets the defensive goal there, and it's now 2-2. Two to two. Everybody that's left in the room that's not playing in a match is sitting around this pit trying to watch as Terry puts that one through. You want to hop out? I think Blake's going to come back, but you're more than welcome to keep me company in the meantime. All right. Anna Smith now going to sit in for a moment. And Terry calls timeout. Oh. As soon as she sits down, someone came over and asked her for something, so she's got to get off the mic. You want me to tell the crowd you say hi? Sullivan says hi, everybody. She came over to get some gum. And we are ready to get back underway here. Terry now setting up. Faking, fires that one on the wall. Nice job to grab the rebound. Everybody says hi. Do it. Oh, they were, maybe they were saying hi to Sully. Oh, hello, Sully. <laughs> anyway. Michael did a good job keeping that one out. Terry's pull is disturbing. Yes. <laughs> Understatement of the year. <laughs> That's Corey now trying to clear. And Sullivan mugs that one. Wow, what a grab. She's going to have a chance to make it 3 2 here. Fires. Good shot. Corey, nice Pretty job so. getting out there. Tries the middle, and Corey again gets a good piece of it. And Sullivan calls That's a good out. call. Yeah. And you wonder about these matchups because they're all, they've been playing each other since Sully was born. <laughs> you know, like Corey knows, and uh, I mean, should they, he's aware of her game and she knows his. And I love to see that matchup in the open double smile. Yeah. <laughs> like, how cool is that, you it's, know? It's, yeah, really, really cool. So a roost taking home first place no matter what. Absolutely. I have to make some room on the trophy shelf for that. <laughs> Sullivan loading up. Tries to fire the short, but Corey, another you know, good job keeping that out. And Michael Bates, nice job keeping that off. Terry's three bar. You've seen Michael be deadly from back here, and that one cleared up the table. Pass attempt a little off the mark, so Michael again. Oh, that pass. Just a little off the mark of Sullivan, and she continues to play great defense. Yes! Wow. And she stuffs that wow, one back into the goal now, 3 2. 
Blake and I had this conversation at the end of the last match. You guys had to play that women's double final. Correct. You played in a long final earlier. Correct. She's still got to play the pro singles final. I heard you guys are going very deep in pro doubles. Yeah, we played three or four in pro doubles. We literally thought we were called up for women's, and then they were like, nope. Um, can you go play another round of pro? And then we went over there, and we played um, another round of pro, and they're like, oh, can you play women's now? And that was like a marathon. And then she had the other open double, so it was like, yeah, we... She played the loser bracket final, and now <laughs> she's here doing this, and she's got more to go. She's really running the gauntlet here. She calls timeout and lets Michael get up front. Really impressive. And, you know, I would use that more, his ability to come up front. I know she's a powerhouse up there, but certain situations in this open doubles final, um, he can take a few more possessions up there just to save her for long term because this match is going – it's going to go deep, I think, my prediction. What's our game What's our game count here? Oh, well, this is the first, first game. First game, okay. They had a few marked, so it wasn't Jerry sure. gets that one home, so – it's now 3-3. Sullivan tries to go quick there, puts it in the wall. Fires that one through the high lane. Two man. Is that true? Oh, point. yeah. I think Chase Pennell is sitting at home. I think he's right. All three points for Sullivan and Michael have been spikes. Stuffs, whatever you want to call them. Sullivan redirects that one back to Corey. So almost gets to take away again. Good five bar D. And now Michael's turn to clear. On oh, that pass again, Sullivan had a shot, I just couldn't grab it. Michael continues to work it though, he's not afraid to keep trying to feed her the ball. Oh, and he mis-executes a little on that one, and Terry. Timeout. They call timeout before he tries to capitalize on that turnover. You see so much of Terry and Sully's game, you know, and uh, even the pace. Yeah. You know, how, how they play pace. It, it, and you can tell they play a lot against each other because they both are aware of when to take those timeouts and how to work it, but um, – they're both momentum players, and they have those quick, fast pickups that are really hard to keep out. But those two are used to it. You know they know each other's game. So, wow. Terry fires that one Great home. shot. So now two in a row for them. It's now 4-3. And more fighting for the ball, and Sullivan's the one that comes up with it. Yes. Fires wow, that nice. straight. Now 4-4 four, four here in game number one. What do you think? Are we going 10 games? Heck yeah. <laughs> Man, I would I would feel genuinely bad for Sullivan if she had to do that. Feel bad for her arm. Or I'd have to warm up my shot so I can yeah. do something different. I hope they play pro singles for her next. Is that ran out and ready to go? Or? Yeah, Safi. Safi okay. came back, so it'll be a rematch of the King Seat match. Okay. Terry Rue. Fires and Bates keeps it out, and nice job there to get it back. Bates from the back. Seen it before, he tries to pass. I've been informed it's a cardinal rule you don't pass on 4-4. Four -four. Well, you know. If you can get Sully the ball. I don't know. I'm torn. Wow. Fires that one, nice block there by Corey. Tries to clear, and wow. Sullivan with the takeaway. See if she can capitalize. Yeah. Wow. Fires that one down the middle, and game one goes to Win Sullivan and Michael one. Bates. Well, they need three games to send it to the... Second set. <laughs> yeah, it's been that kind of long weekend here. As Terry puts the ball into play and Sullivan blocks it up off the table on the five. Don't see that every day. A, f a pass attempt get blocked up off the table. They're like, where does it go? <laughs> yeah, Michael, yeah. 
Yeah, see, even Terry didn't know. Yeah, that was weird. <laughs> That's how rarely that <laughs> happens. And Terry with the takeaway. Michael got away from the series that's been treating him so well so far. He did have a turnover on it last time. Fires that one down the middle, middle. now one nothing. Terry's a player who really isolates. Um, whenever you're playing defense against him, sometimes you just feel like you're on an island. You know, um, when he takes his time. Sullivan responds. Unstoppable. <laughs> Yeah, that was a good good comeback there. You gotta keep these games close. You know, you can't let somebody get carried away because it rolls into the next match and you know this is gonna go long term. So you really wanna just stay in there fighting, even if it's a four four ball because or four three. You know, you have to keep that though. You can't let it be a blowout because that really you can't let the momentum shift when you really don't need that. Well for longer matches. Terry Next fires straight. that one home. And he's drew rugs at home. <laughs> <laughs> Where's Jim? I was sad, what if I was here? It's a pretty good impression. Nice. Oh, gets nice. It with the dink. That's almost automatic for her. It's such a good, crafty shot, especially with the way she fires to all the other right. options. Right, uh, out of the roll. And when she learned that, her game really, really took off. Terry now looking to regain the lead. Michael really baked nice. into that. <laughs> Straight, and he fires long, and it's now 3 2, and we're getting a defensive switch. Corey Taylor going to get up front. Sullivan nicely along the wall. You think she's tired of passing the ball? <laughs> she's been doing it for like oh, the last man. 12 hours. <laughs> and it's such a high level, too. I know. That's what I asked her. I was like, are you tired of doing this? <laughs> are you bored? She sends that one back her dad's way. That's a good question. She's got a question in Twitch. Is this the first father-daughter matchup in an open doubles final? It very well may be. It has to be. Right? I mean, yeah. Who, yeah. Who else? Any tournament anywhere. I can't think of anybody. That That's a great question. As Sullivan gets that nice clear from Bates, digs it out. Wow. And dinks wow. that one home. Now 3-3. Three, three. Back and forth we go here in game number two. I love this. I'm glad it's close. This is such a good This is game. awesome. What else could you ask for? Right? It could not get better. Small little regional tournaments providing quite a lot of great All foosball. All the content. <laughs> Terry Rue. Fires that one, and Bates gets the block wow. and gets it back. Way to dig it out. And, you know, we keep talking about Sullivan and how well she's playing in the marathon she's running in with all these matches yeah. back to back to back. Michael Bates has shown up. You and I talked about it a little no bit doubt. in that last match. He's really playing out of, out of his mind as well. Absolutely. You know, I've seen Michael show up out of nowhere and play phenomenal forward, which I think is so incredible. Wow. Nice straight, and now it's 4-3. Game ball for Sullivan and Michael. Wow. And Sullivan gets Jesus. the takeaway. Left hook. No, I'm not kidding. No, no <laughs> we're working on it. <laughs> Sullivan taking her time. Yeah. Fires it long and gets it to go, and she is fired up. We're going to a third game with Sullivan Rue and Michael Bates up two games to nothing. Well, I'm glad you joined me. It looks like Blake stood me up. Yeah, I think he's got uh, more. <laughs> what was that? He has other things to go entertain. Uh, he was just going to pop out for a second and come right back, but I saw him talking to Eric outside, so maybe yeah. he got wrapped up in that conversation. Probably. As Terry gets back to work here on the five. Nice. Puts that one through the lane. Fires that one home and gives okay, it a lot of toss. Okay, gets it going. Uh, one of your points committee colleagues is asking. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> if Sully wins, do we have to move her to master? No. Sullivan gets the takeaway. I don't know. We'll have to Fires the oh, long. Okay. The rod toss, a recoil. Let's go. Yeah, I don't think she ever let go of it. No, she just kind of banged the table. Banged it. And Terry gets that through despite Sullivan getting a pretty good piece of it. And Terry finds the straight. Good shot there from him. Now 2 1. I would like to see some stats on uh, times for Terry's shooting percentages, you know, because I feel like he shoots a really high percentage in the first five seconds. Yeah, he doesn't do it often, really so when he uses it. Exactly, exactly. Oh, 
Maybe. <laughs> I don't know yet, Chase. I'll think about it. As Bates sends that one up the table. Corey does a nice job to keep it out. You know, putting those banks on goal is difficult, even if you're running a great zone, because it can just chip off one of those guys weird, and in it goes. Yeah, it's just a hard ball to track. Like you were saying earlier, you don't necessarily have to hit it the hardest. Correct. Because it's just a harder ball to track. And that pass attempt almost intercepted, but Bates gets it back. Oh, Jacob Balco says, hello, Muhair. Oh, that guy. <laughs> Who is he? he was no, what's up, Jacob? Oh, a nice shot. Sneaking the booth wow. at Nationals. Do it. He was sneaking his, booth in the, uh, his way into the booth at Nationals. Yeah. His Bates looking to clear. And that, the pass. Okay. Terry just got a piece of it. Mm. And Sullivan. She's on it. Reminds she's like she's court. seen that one before. She's got to be. She spiked him first time. Three right. times in the first game. Yeah, this is one of those times um, that when you play someone that you're they're used to you and they're kind of, oh, wow, great shot again. Well, he just keeps Weird. clearing it and finding I know, three. I know. Good things happen when goalies clear the ball. I'm taking notes. Fires that one <laughs> long into the wall. And Corey does a nice job keeping it out. And a quick okay. clear attempt. Quick clear. And now he finds Terry's three bar. Fires that one down the middle, caught him on the switch. And Blake's back. Hey. It's up to right. you. You beat I'm him. I'm getting out chance. of here. You're going to get out? <laughs> you watch didn't stand him up. <laughs> okay. Here's Blake. I'm getting out of here. All right. Thanks, Hannah. I yep. appreciate it. You guys can fight over it. That's <laughs> okay. Oh, and Terry with a great steal, but can't quite hang on. So Bates going to get another shot at it. Otis is the guy running the bar out there. Otis is the guy running the bar. Out there. Sorry, off top of there a little bit as Ter Terry works that one nice. Mike, Mike check, Mike check, Mike check. And Blake's back. Uh, Blake's back. Guess who's back? Back again. You missed the match. I'm no, I know. I'm sorry. I'm late. Two games to nothing. Uh, I heard. That is crazy. How's yeah. it been going though? Uh, back and forth. Okay. Uh, it looks like that uh, Terry and Corey, I'm going to call him Corey so everybody knows him. That's what it says on the screen. I know. Exactly. Oh, you didn't put Shane on the screen? I did. <laughs> All right. So it uh, looks like they're, they're fighting. They're up this game, right, in the third game, 3-1, as Michael puts it in play with the bank. They were up in the other matches, too, and Sullivan and Michael put up a good fight. It is just amazing to me how well she's playing this weekend. I mean, her her we results. Talking about too, Michael Bates, guy that hasn't been out in forever, and he's playing lights out. Dude, I, I couldn't. I think I was. Uh, well, Michael's from my neck of the woods. I mean, he lives about 15 minutes down the street, and um, Michael was one of the best masters here in Mississippi. He was one of the best players here, so it doesn't surprise me. But you're right. I don't. He doesn't really come on tour no more. He doesn't really, you know, play on. So nobody really knows him. So I haven't seen him in the finals of an open doubles since. I mean, this might be the first finals of open doubles I think I've seen him on tour, actually, to be honest. But he's a very strong player. As it's now game ball for Terry and Corey. And we got a switch. Michael Bates is now up front, so he gets that takeaway. Gets that one through, and he's able to hang on. Bouncing around on him a little bit. Michael Bates tries the near side. He's been shooting pretty quick when he's been up there. Yeah, he doesn't really look too comfortable, but I know he's bouncing back from forward to goal, so I know that could be kind of tough. So corrals that. You know they got to be feeling just so much pressure, though, especially being up 2-0. Ooh. And Terry turns it over. Costly mistake. See if Michael makes it. Right, see if he it. takes his time or if he, he's rushing. Yep. Someone needs to go to tell Michael uh, what they tell me. <laughs> Shoot faster. Yeah. Take a look at the chat here. That is another good question. What's up? There's, I'm assuming there's been another push shooter in an open doubles final. How long has it been since we saw a push uh, shooter? Decades. Decades. I mean, I that a push shooter in the finals of open doubles on tour, that is a, I don't know, could solely be the first? I mean, very possible. Maybe. Maybe not. Yeah, but Clay's not going to have that stat. We might have to go to the Jim Stevens uh, archives there. Might have to that get an answer to that. Might have to look at the hieroglyphics in the caveman walls back in the 70s. I don't know. 
Michael now again. She's Jeez. taking his time there. A little bit. <clears throat> Corey's throwing up some good D right now. He is. Oh, he tried to slam And honestly, shot. he blocked a lot of shots in the first two games, too. Oh, did he? Yeah, it's just able to hammer him out. Right. Oh, for game one, Sullivan spiked him three times. Oh, yeah. three points were spikes yeah. in the first game? That's a good way to start the finals of open doubles, if you ask me. If you're coming out of the loser's bracket. Yeah. Good Bates job, Mike. fires that one deep to the far side, now 4-2. Yeah, Terry Rue and Corey Taylor is on the left side of the table, and you have Sully and Michael on the right. Thank you, Mike Billerakis, for that. And if you don't know, you can follow his channel, CR Cloaks. Yeah, Chris Doobie had a nice little push kick back in the day. and Yeah, and yeah, I was thinking of him, actually. Well, no, he, Chris Doobie shot the pool kick. He didn't shoot a push shot. Another father-daughter duo. That's a good one right there. Can't yeah, it, 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 there's no way that's happened before in an open doubles final on tour. Oh, man. Right? There's a lot of things happening. I love it, man. I love making history. This is history in the making. Yeah. It's Terry sends that one long, and Sullivan does a nice job to grab it. Yeah. Wow! And she fires that one home. She's a uh, she's hype. She is hype. Was she's the, the whole room yeah, I guess Dan Barber might have been in a few. I don't if, open uh, doubles. Open doubles. I don't know. I don't know of, but I don't. Maybe I don't doubt it. Mike says if he wins, he's an asshole. We're not. We don't have the after dark graphic. It's a hole. Oh, I'm so sorry. I'm <laughs> so good. sorry. You're good. <laughs> now. Uh, all right, so we got the steal over here on the left side of the table. Terry puts it in play, trying to pass it. Michael with the five bar D picks it up. Great. Bringing it back over. Man, nice wall pass. pass. Yes. Yeah, Chase, but have they ever played against each other? That's a good observation. Ryan and Mary have made it. They probably made a final together. Mike taking his time on the bar. And he Fires ties it up at just four, like that four. Bang, bang. It was 4 1 just a second ago. Match point for the right side of the table to take it to a second set. Michael with the five bar D. I told you, that's that dude. You don't want it. That's a bad neighborhood. On that. Oh, we're gonna talk about something. Oh, there's flies there's everywhere, that fly. dude. Solvents from. I don't know who invited that fly, but he needed to get up out of here. Out all day. That might be Michael's little friend, man. See, look. Michael calls timeout. That's a good. Switch. That's a good call. You know, I, I think you know this is huge, and then something <laughs> like that happens. You just need to go ahead and just. Take a timeout. There's no reason not to. You know, the only bad timeout is a no timeout, you know? That's true. That's a great way to look at it. How many times do we see players? I know. Coming from Blake Robertson, who calls timeouts all the time, so. Do you not call a lot of timeouts? Well, I do now, now that I'm a little bit older. But when I was younger, I didn't know what a timeout was. I couldn't spell timeout. Well, Michael put it in play. Could not connect Corey with the shot on goal Man. with the pull shot. Sullivan does a nice job of keeping it out. That's actually a good observation. I don't know of another father-daughter duo in football. Oh, shoot. That was a good shot right there off the back wall. Sully gets it back. Does she try to pass or does she shoot here? 4-4, four, four, she's shooting. No, mm, she's going to call timeout. This is a big this match point for them to go a second set. She just so, looks at Michael and asks him something. Who, 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 no, okay. who could have imagined Sullivan Rue, Michael Bates, about to potentially go into a second set of the open doubles finals with 13 masters 190 players you know tommy Agnes is here you got the, you know you got legendary players here so she's having a hell of a weekend oh a nice pickup by mike on the yeah. five got away with one there as she lost it terry couldn't grab it mm. Mike puts it oh, in play, goes nice nicely pass. along that wall pass. A little hesitation wall. See, sets him up the roller to win the to win the first set. Michael Bates. The Taking his time push this out, time. Push out. Oh. Wow. Got over good a second later. Good D. When you called it. Good D. Well the push was there and then uh Corey hopped over. Corey yeah. came over at the last time and Michael took a little bit. Wow. Oh so good shot on goal for great Sullivan. Great block by Corey to keep that out. Mm, this is a danger zone right here. You don't want to be shooting down the middle of the table. He should be trying to pass. But I, there, that, that was it. See what Sullivan Rue does. Ooh. Oh, nice job keeping that one out. His dad sent it back home in her direction very quickly. Dad was not having it. Oh, another good one. And Gosh. nice. Corey's playing good D back there, man. It's not, yeah, he's playing not great like goalie. He's getting lit up, and that bank shot is kept out by Sullivan. 
Oh, that's okay. Dicey pass attempt there. Mixing it up. Fires, and mm. Terry can't come up with it. Michael sends it back to Corey. Man, tensions are high on that table right now. He's trying that bank Michael shot, Mike. Gets Mike's got it on the five bar again. He's been pretty good passing the ball so far. Let's see what he does here. Guess that went through the lane, but Terry gets enough of it to keep it off his five, and Sullivan able to reel it in. <sighs> mm. Try a little pool kick there. What's she thinking? Uh, uh, banging. Oh, oh my God. God. Bang, bang, bang. Going through a second table. set. Three straight. Yes. Oh, unbelievable. Nice are, you so Key, are, you, Key, Key, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? I'm not kidding you, man. This wow. is an incredible, man. Look at that right side. Look at that guy right there. Look, Brandon Moreland and Tom Yours back there spectating the Open Doubles final. Just to let you, everybody know. <laughs> get a look at the team on the right. Yeah. Yep. Unbelievable. Wow. All right, so they got 15 minutes, so, um, yeah. Right, well, let's let's, let's go to the chat. Anybody, yeah. uh, how many people we got watching there, Keith? Uh, it doesn't tell me how many unless they're chiming in. Blake, how hard is, well, is it to close out that third game for real? Oh, well, in that position that Sully and Michael were, to, to be in an open doubles final, to play against your dad, to be in those shoes, and the field, you in the losers. and you're down in the game three-one, and you come back four-four, and to close that game out, I mean, you got to dig, dig, dig. It's almost like when you start in Egypt and you end up in in San Francisco. That's how much you got to dig. You got to keep digging and keep going and keep going. And I mean, if I had to explain it, that's how I would feel because I've been in those moments. I had one of those matches earlier. You know that. That eight seven final that went down to the last ball in overtime with Tom and Eric, and it's just a fight. Like we saw, Keith, me and you both noticed that last ball was lasting forever. Yeah. Corey was playing great goal, keeping it out. Sully doing the same thing, and then Sully takes it home with the push shot. I mean, that's just incredible. Yeah, Captain Blood asked a while, said, I doubt there was ever even a mother versus daughter women's open finals. That actually well, happened about two hours ago. Right. Well, I think that's actually happened. And it's probably happened a couple often. times. Often, yeah. yeah. That, that, I do believe that that's happened often with, between these two. It's the yeah. same people. You know, it's key. It's the Rue family. And what a family that they are. You just give a shout out to them. Is dad in a win win or a lose lose? Oh, no, no. This family, is com this, this, this family is competitive. At the end of the day, they all want to beat each other. They go home, they practice every day. Neither one of these, neither one of these teams are is thinking lose, lose, win, win. You know, they they want this title. At the, when you're in this moment, you want the title. Oh yeah, that's all you're thinking you're not about. Thinking about the fact that it's your no, you know, your daughter. No, on the side your of daughter's table. doing well enough. Yeah, She's in not. college. She does, she makes straight A's. I think, and she might have did her homework. <laughs> you know, last night. I don't know. She's doing well. Well, let's play foosball. Uh, Chase and what'd you say his name was? Mike. Uh, yeah, CR Cloaks is uh, Mike Bill. They're having a conversation about Terry Moore. Terry Moore actually forfeited out of open doubles. So, yeah, they went out in two, but he didn't actually play. Yeah, no, he didn't. Him and Ca Cavalier, uh, his back was hurting, so, so he couldn't yeah. play. And they, they tried to drop out. Uh, Donald then didn't get the uh, word in time, so they ended up just forfeiting out. Actually, that's a good point. Gracie Sully had to beat her mom and now her dad. Um, that will be a first. I, I, I can't imagine that happening. Yeah. I mean, how do you go home to that? I mean, basically, she she needs to take the keys to the house. Yeah, kick them out. She's basically <laughs> getting the master bedroom when she gets home. <laughs> yeah, but no, I mean, obviously, this is unbelievable. This is going to go down as one of the best matches of the year, if not the best. All right, we got some uh, uh, e dog rowdy getting there, getting man. rowdy in the crowd. Yeah. It's getting it's getting live yeah. here. In Can we get him on there? Oh, he's just uh, the, 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 Tom Yours tapping him on the shoulder. He's the one doing the yelling. But we can't see Eric. Can we get him up there? Oh, so, that's yeah, the other no, guy. He's too, we can't too, get like dead front of the table. Basically, just right of Tommy is out of view. There's a lot of chaos right Actually, now. Eric, going on. Eric's smart. He found like the one blind spot because he's just <laughs> to the side of Kathy. And he's just to the left of Tom with that angle. Oh, so yeah, he's up there though. Yeah, you could, you could definitely hear him. 
Man, a lot of fun here on a Sunday night. Hey, man, this is what we do, man. We do it big in the sip, baby. You know what it is. Country Grandma, Dirt South, you know, come on down. I think you're going to need a bigger venue next year. Up man, yeah, this room too tiny, man. We're going to need more liquor, too. <laughs> <laughs> Blake, who was the first master you beat that you were like, WTF, did I just beat them after they always beat me? Oh, uh, who was the first? Singles or doubles? Or just in general? Probably just in general. Billy Pappas. You beat Billy Pappas, the first master you beat? He wasn't the first. Is it the first master? Or the, the first, first where you were like, man, I can't believe I beat him. Yeah, I mean, my first master was Steve Mose. It was in Kentucky. And I turned around after that, played Trevor Park, beat him, and then turned around and beat Marez. So my first master turned into three masters. Um, doubles, though, with definitely Billy Pappas, though. He's like, you know, I started playing in 05. That was his prom. He's basically like my foosball hero, blah, blah, blah. He's incredible. Incredible person, too, off the table. I'm very good friends with him. And, um, yeah, I got him a couple of times in doubles, and he was probably, you know, that guy when I beat him. I was like, what the, you know, WTF. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, That's of nice. course. I feel like I got where it's getting late here. It's almost midnight. I didn't even realize what time it was. 11.38, yeah, night's still young. Appreciate that, Hannah. Yeah, yeah, I, I didn't mean to kick Hannah off, by oh, the no, way. It's fine. Are you sure? Yeah, well, she said it was. He I feels mean, bad he kicked you out. I, I, I feel bad. You know, I'm, I'm a southern gentleman. I'm in Mississippi. I don't want to kick. I, I did not want to replace Hannah at all. If Hannah, it, Hannah, would you like to commentate? No, she's about to go on a winning's run. Oh, they. Oh, nice. But I do appreciate you thinking of me. It's very kind. I love that you're practiced enough that you're turning around talking to her, but you know to keep talking to the mic so everybody at home can still hear you. Ah, uh, you know. <laughs> That's yep. a pro move. Hey, I gotta, I'm here for the people. I'm the people's champ. Let's go. Let's go. All right, looks like we got all four players back at the table. It's rowdy. Still got a, probably a couple more minutes until we still get started in the second set, ladies and gentlemen. So someone suggested it. You're in the situation you're tearing on the flip. Someone is texting me, and they're upset that I did not know who Lindsay Lohan was. And I'm going to give a shout-out to her back home watching. Who's that? Uh, exactly. That's my point. No, who's, who's giving you a hard time? Oh, this is a very special friend of mine back home. She's uh, tuning in, and she texts me, and she just said, you know, she's uh, offended. You don't, do you really not know who Lindsay Lohan is? I heard. I kind of heard of her. Girls. I have seen Mean Girls. That's Lindsay Lohan. She's the main one at the yeah, table? Caddy. The blonde. No, the redhead. The, see, the girl see. that they're mean to originally. And oh, infiltrates oh them. okay, 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 okay. So I'm told. I've never seen it. <laughs> I, I heard something yeah. about Parent Trap as well. She was also in the Parent Trap. Really. Yeah, I think I was maybe nine. I was, I was watching music you're videos. You're not that much younger than me. How old are you? I'm uh, 31. I'm 33. How you doing? For now. For now. By the end of the year, it might be a little See, different. see, you're an old man. So you're 31. So you wait, 91 that? No, that's not hey, baby, 1991. I'm a 90s baby. 09 alumni. We got Sullivan Rue here trying to take down everything. Titles, championship, rings, jackets. It don't matter. Bang, bang. Ain't nobody got time for that. Hey, <laughs> ask, look. Ask it where's Sullivan, my heart. Good luck here. finding that. Hey, see, this is that. what they should do, man. They should hire me to do this. DJ, I'll be part-time DJ. I know you want me to play some music. I see you. You want to say hi to the folks at home? Hey, say hi to the camera. Well, you got the mic. Oh, you want to say? Oh, oh, yeah. wait, wait, hold on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Deuces, don't go What up? Hey, so gangster. Hey. Hey, everyone. Oh. And I really hope that I was. Something happened. We lost no, no, no. me. Oh, no, you're good. There you go. Okay, back. I hope these guys are commentating my match excellently. I'm sure they are. I'm trying. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. Let's see if I can pull this one out, guys. <laughs> Boom! Bang, bang, chicken and shrimp. There you go. match interview. From the daughter. From the dipper, at least single dip so far. The single dipper? I don't know. I didn't skinny dip. dip when I was younger. Is that a thing? 
It used to be. All right, here we go. Here we go. Looks like we got it. Looks like Terry's going to put the ball back in play. We are back playing, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Yeah, helps if I get the camera up. I know. I saw that. I was waiting for that. I appreciate you. Here we go. Michael with there. the steal on the five. I feel like that's been huge since I stepped up. I mean, Michael's five bar D. Oh, oh. Sully turned yeah, it over. Yeah, that's my fault. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, folks, if you're watching on YouTube, it's showing up as Texas State. As Terry fires that one home, that was on, on me. I didn't adjust that. I didn't know how to adjust it. Yeah, Sully turned that ball over, and uh, Terry took advantage. So one nothing now here. Mike with the one. pass, setting up the rollover, looking over the defense, tries to go down the middle. Corey there with the block, setting up on the push side. Tick tacking, weaving back on the push. Back to the pool. Oh, tries to dump the pass. Terry's not there. Seems like Corey's having a little easier time clearing against Michael. Sullivan really gave him fits as she puts another good shot on goal, and Terry takes the ball away and fires that one through the lane, and he can't hang on. He hasn't dropped many passes all day. Is it possible Terry Rue feeling the pressure here? All right, so I got another message out here. He goes, if you see this, his prediction, this is Jacob Balcos. He's messaging everybody up in the booth. <clears throat> oh, is he? Yeah, he's he got Hannah, too. Oh, okay. He's saying that uh, it's going. Sullivan Ooh. fires that one home. So she gets it back. She He goes, prediction this set going for Sully giving them two scoops. As Terry goes back to the wall there, he's going to have a chance to regain the lead. He's got to get it past Sullivan first, though. She did block him well in that first set. And she does it again, talked him into the wall. Sully, how many can she score out the back this match? Hey, your commentator curse got... Reverse commentator curse apparently isn't flying anymore. I told you I went to go do a shot. I'm good now. I'm cleansed. I'm cleansed. I am cleansed. Oh, and Terry oh the Tom, you are special. The Tom, you are special. Off the back wall, he pounds it home. So if anybody was wondering if Terry Rue is pulling punches, there's your answer. That's oh, I, I know this. You know this family is. Oh, yeah. They they know how, they know. Folks at home were speculating. They would be upset with each other if they didn't do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, Sullivan reels that one in now. 2-2 two, two here in game number one. Oh! She fires another one. Down. And I got to see Is if that I three? Understand. Is that three? Uh, that's three. That's Mike, three? We got a reaction out of Michael Bates. He has been completely stoic all day throughout all this high emotion for, the, for that team. He has been completely stoic, and he reacted to that. I wonder what he's feeling right now. Got to be, gotta be good, right? Probably like he's on cruise control. Just hang out and watch Sully go to town. <laughs> I mean, she's outscored him this game. <laughs> Let's go ahead and say that. Oh, uh, yeah. Terry's not giving him that wall no more. Sullivan heard you ask how many she can get out the back. She's trying to give you an answer. Well, I was curious. I was curious to see how many she could score. That was a nice lane pass by Terry, setting up the pull shot on Sully. Looking over the defense. And he fires and she blocks him again. Why is she trying to pass? Yeah, why at this point? Oh, it just sends it that one a little that. wide. Michael Hammered picks it that up ball. on the five bar. See what he does with it. Got to be thinking lane, right? Oh. Good pass. Good pass. Setting up the roller. Michael Bates taking more time here. Can he get a two-point lead here in the first game of the second Can't set? Oh, go. nice block by Corey, but he gets the rebound on. Michael's going to look over the D. To get a two-point advantage here in the first game. Oh, can't get that one that to go. Nice. And Terry grabs the rebound. Nice pickup by Rue. Sullivan's done a nice I can't see if he quick shoots are here. I can't say Rue. Yeah, got to be specific. The fire. Oh, she left him a little too long on that straight. She did. She did. That was too big of a bait. Ties it up 3-3. Three, three. Michael had two shots to go up two points here in this first game. This first game is huge, by the way. Yeah, you just got 3 0 and, you know, and imagine Sully scoring three out the back and then losing the first game. True. Don't want to waste them. Might have to imagine her scoring five out of the back. Oh, able to clear that one through with Terry. Picks What's the up. chat? I haven't looked at the chat in a while. It's been firing off. I've been having a hard time keeping up with it. Yeah, and paying uh, attention to the match at the same time. Terry Rue, chance to make it 4-3. To go up in the first game, Terry Rue. And Tries again, straight. Sullivan answers the call, fires one up the table, and she's going to get so, it back. Sully's going yard. She tries to bank, yeah. gets it back. You know what? She's playing with no fear, having fun. She's gotten loose. Oh, Michael with the nice pick up on the three bar. Oh, we're going to have a timeout. Time good call. Do it That's here. a good call. Sully's going to come up here. Hot hand. That's a good one. Blake, I really think that they are taking Terry out of this game by the switches. What are you thinking? Yeah. Um, taking Terry out of the game? I mean... 
Michael's five bar D is very, very well, is very good, and um, he's passing the ball very well. And but this first game, you know, Sully scored three out the back. So I mean, you know, you could put Terry anywhere, but. The switches have been amazing. Sullivan Rue. Setting up to take the 4-3 uh, lead. Fires that one into the wall, gets it back. Puts that one on the wall, too. She's going to get another shot. Corey Taylor's got to feel like he's standing in front of her firing squad right now. I mean, he's doing a pretty good job so far. He is. Takes her time. Fires wow, the straight. Wow, that was a dead bar yeah. straight. And now it's 4-3. Yeah, I don't think Terry's not necessarily out of the game. He's playing pretty well. But, you know, when your goalie scores three out the back, you know, what are you going to do? Yeah. And he goes straight, straight again. 4-4. Four, four. Maybe Sully's pulling punches. She feels bad for her dad. Uh, I don't think she no. does. <laughs> Obviously, but she's giving a Michael straight. gets Terry the pick. Does he call away. timeout? Does he call timeout and bring Sully up? He yes, does. he does. He's going to let her get a chance to pick it away. Bang, Terry bang. Let's go. Himself. He's Let's frustrated. See. He dropped that ball. Look, uh, uh, show Sully. Let's see Sully right here. That's that. That's that focus. Look Ice at Mike. water in the veins. Mike's like, please, please save me right now. <laughs> Sully's looking calm as a cucumber. She's thinking about that math test she got on uh, Monday. Yeah, the important that, stuff. That nursing, that nursing quiz. She got clinicals on Tuesday. Sullivan resets. As she puts it back in place, setting up the push shot. Fires wow, that Taylor was a good a block. block. That was a good block. She it was it back it, though. It was there. She's taking her time. She's got Tries ice in her veins. Again. That's okay. I'm okay with that shot. She took her time. She did what she was supposed to do. Corey's just. Corey puts it going up. The Corey's table. playing good goal right now. Grab by Terry, looking to equalize here. No, this is to win the game. Oh no. Uh, we got a fire alarm, ladies and gentlemen. Fire it's too hot up in here. On. The roof, the roof, <laughs> the roof is on fire. We don't need no liquor. Let that sucker burn, burn, I really burn. hope there's not an actual fire. They don't have to actually evacuate You know what? Us. You know, it's so much like how many times I, I live on the 11th floor and the fire alarm goes off maybe twice a week. I still take the elevator. I mean, there's only so many times you could cry wolf and I just don't care. If I'm going to die, I'm going to die. Thank you, Jay Burt. Quieting it down in the pit here a little bit, but again, how you hear fire alarms? So hey, often. chat, chat, can y'all hear this? By the way, I'm just curious. I was about Ramsey's uh, or Ray. I don't know. Uh, I was about to comment on that. People just don't react to fire alarms anymore because it's like you know, it's they, not a real thing. Yeah. Yeah, they, they can, say yeah, yeah, they can yeah, hear oh, it. Of course. of course. Oh, yep. All right, just checking, just checking. Yeah. Okay. Everybody's spamming the fire emoji in the chat. <laughs> There's people leaving the room. They may actually be kicking us out of here. Uh, there actually might be a fire, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, we're back. Hey, all they right. Either put it out. Either way, they got the alarm. Well, thank off. goodness it's four four in the first game of the second yeah. set. We, yeah. <laughs> You gotta tell Sully to cool it off. Shooting so hot. All right, left side of the table. Terry Rue is getting ready to put the ball back into play. Uh, they're out of timeouts on the right side of the table. Terry sets up. Crowd's getting looking over Michael's D. And wow. I think he just put that in the wall. What's the odds of Michael scoring this out the back right now? Pretty with high the, the way he's been shooting. Is it the oh the in, the inside bank's taken? The outside bank maybe is there? Nope, nope. Inside bank. Yep. Oh, nice way, pick feed up. Feed you forward. That's the name. Of the game. So fires. Home. Are you kidding me? Four in a row. Four in a row. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Quit distracting her, man. She's trying to focus. I didn't know she could hear me. I didn't know I was. I, I'm sorry. Oh, I apologize. I apologize to absolutely no one. Loose. I apologize to absolutely no one. Conor McGregor. <laughs> Terry's. He's the one trying to stay focused. So here's the, here's the, the thing. Table laugh. This is the thing that I've noticed since I've been watching. Terry has not been capitalizing on the three bar. Five bar has been a, actually Michael's have a pretty good five bar, but he gets some passes in. But here's the thing too: they're rushing into the second game. If I was on that side of the table, I would take my time. You got 90 seconds before you have to step up. And you know what? He puts the ball into play, and that happens. Drops a pass. He's, you know, been, I mean, yeah, he's been five and so well all weekend. Oh yeah, for sure. Nice little steal right there. there. And let's think. Um, yeah, but that, that's a huge win, though. When your goalie scores three out the back, you got to win that game. There it is. Kit Terry Jerry comes back. That that's one. how you come back. you got to come back with vengeance. 
Michael with a nice brush down. Setting up the roller. Going to look over the defense of Corey Taylor. And pounds the pull side. That was a nice shot deep. the pull. 1-1 one, one here. Terry goes into the weave. Trying to pass it to the three bar. Nice middleman pass. Looking over Sully's defense. Setting up the pull shot. Terry taking a stone here. Yeah, he is. And he hits oh, the middle. Shoot. That Bounce was a good shot. To this, is what Terry, this is what Terry needs to do. Ooh. That pass was actually there. He just mis-executed it. And then he tries to go through the lane. It drops it, and it goes to Corey Taylor in the back. And Michael almost picks that one off. Corey just needs to try to clear right now and get it up to and get it up to Rue because Rue is in the game right now, and this is kind of what he needs to do. He's focused. Sully has the ball. Right. Hey, that right, one kicks around nice, the table. Unlucky break for the left side of the table. Good break for the right side, but 2-2 two -two here in the second game of the second set of the Open Doubles Final at the Mississippi State 2022. Hall of Famers, shout out. Kevin Hemphill, Chris Cavalier. Terry Rue. Subs it. That's okay. That's all right. He went for it. Sullivan just quickly fires one on goal. Oh, Taylor yeah. does you a nice know, job to keep it out. You know Sully wants this bad. Wow, Corey, Corey. Taylor enters the ring, and that's his first goal out of the That back. was a nice little slider out of the push. That was a good shot. Corey's playing good. And nice pass by Mike. Good job taking his time. See what he does here. Setting up the roller, looking over the defense. Tries to push side. Can't Great get D. It, grabs his rebound. That's a good D. You can try again one more time. Looking middle, middle. Oh, and see, the and it's there, side. and and Corey and get, got gets out there to up. make the block. And nice grab there, delicate touch for Terry Rue to hang on to that one. Fires the straight. She's tried to bait him to that a couple times, and they're gonna switch. So he's gonna get up front. Dance with the one who brought you. This was their setup all the way here for the most part. Very few, if any, switches. So bang, bang. That one long now, 4-3. Terry can't uh, handle that one, and it's going to go to Bates. Michael Booger, Master Bates in the back. Let's see if he sets up this bang shot. All right, so it looks like the outside's there. Oh, no, oh, my God. So was the God, pass. Dude, don't watch. Just, just drop a dime right on the side. Bang, bang, bang. bang, bang. She fires at home, and it's 4-4, four, four, and Terry calls timeout. Man. And just man, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm speechless. This man, are you are you kidding me? Man, yeah. When you're hot, you're hot. She's been winning all day. I mean, is she so hot, the fire alarm went off. Are you kidding me? <laughs> No, this is awesome. Terry is yeah. going to put that. I think that was their first. Terry's going to put it back into place. He tried to get the ball to win the first game, and he gets Hands the pass through. He's shooting he's on Michael Bates. Bates. He needs to pound along, but he needs to take his time on it. Sit on the Stubs oh, it again. Time out, time he's got to call his Dude, He's second. done that two or three times already. It's the second time. Yeah. He's got to have that ball a little bit more forward when he sets it up. There was actually up. a comment in the chat about how far he had it back. Yeah, he's got to stop doing that. He's done. He's stubbing it way too many times. Even the couple I've seen him score, it's, they're off stubs. Yeah, like that little extra half a. Well, it's the off speed he turns into, right? Yeah. So. All right, Bates standing back. We're going to give it another shot. Oh, I wouldn't be surprised if he just puts it in play and pounds it. Oh, there you go. Fires the straight. Now you heard a yeah from Terry. Yes. Terry's fired, fired up, up up in here. Terry about to turn it up. And <laughs> Oh, I got some eyes from Sully. She don't know if she liked that comment. <laughs> That's all right, though. That's all right. 1-1 one, one here in the second set. I, am I so loud? Like, can they hear me? Oh. I, should, I should probably quiet it down. Yeah, the, the sound barriers are there, but if you get too loud. I'm surprised nobody said anything to me. Well, it's because Sully wasn't joining it until she dro finally dropped the game. Oh, you know what it is? Though? The crowd, though, is chaos. You know, you know how loud they are. True. Oh, nice, nice little bang. Up. Yes. Tries oh, she rushed it. That's all right. To show you know, she's getting a lot of extra possessions, too, on her she shots. Did a great job picking up the rebounds. The, oh, wow. And, you know, stick. the first ball is so important, especially in the third game. Now you can create momentum and make the other team feel pressure. Now Terry has to respond. Now they have to respond. 
Nice wall pass. Looking over to defensive Michael Bates. Oh, and he stuns another. I don't understand how nobody's had a conversation with him yet about this. I mean, he's had the conversation with himself three times, I'm sure. I don't think he has. And Bates tries Ooh. that pass again. It was there. Yeah, it's, a, it's only a little off the mark there. Corey with a nice pull shot on goal. I'll tell you what, man. Sometimes when magic happens, it just happens. Nobody can explain it, that's but true. that's what I, I mean. I feel like that's what I'm witnessing right now. You can explain it. Sully and Michael are playing. You very, can witness very, it very well. You can witness it, but you can't explain it. And the well is not even, man. It, exceptionally well, for sure. Nice weird squib. Ooh, Ooh, nice keep out what there a from save. Bates. What a save. Looking at the bank. Yeah, that inside it, Terry's done took that inside away from from Michael. You might it, the pass is there. You just have to do the pass. So which Terry is picks that one off, but picks it up on the five ball. Solid. Hey, look. Now it turns into a possession. That's all that matters. To go up 2-0. Oh, Corey with the block. AKA Shane puts a push up. Yeah, Corey kind of getting lost in this, but he is playing well. Well, he's digging, and the big thing is that he's not letting slop go in. He's controlling pace, and he's clearing the ball yeah, I mean, at the end of the day. He pointed out Sullivan's getting a ton of extra shots. Bro. He only blocks so many. Bang, shots. bang. That one holding out 2 push. nothing for Sullivan and Michael. Nice. Oh, Terry rushed it, and so Sully cool. rushed it as well. Corey picks it up in the goalie area. Not rush. I shouldn't say rush. Really quick passes. Ooh. Ooh. Almost another spike there. Welcome to the danger zone. A nice little shot. Michael with the pickup. And the pass is the only thing that's there. He took the inside away. Yeah, that Maybe pass on the far side. That's the only thing that's there, which is fine because you know that's there every time. That's a system. Nice shot by Corey. Terry with the rebound. Looking oh. over the defense. Setting up, getting a nice set. Terry Gets a nice, long, and you know what? Shot. He got a nice set right there. Didn't stop it. Ooh. The ball so kicks around. Here's the thing, too, now. Hammers that one through. If Terry scores this, do they switch on the right side of the table? Probably. They've been doing a pretty good job. Michael's five has been pretty well. Mm -hmm. nope, All right. So he's feeling it. She wants to stay. Dude, she's one. playing so well. Yeah. She's playing phenomenal. To whoever asked in the chat, wow. that one. To whoever asked in the chat, All yeah, right. she is screaming every time that she scores. She could probably beat Frederico right now. I mean, I would say no way, but <laughs> I, if you'd said that this was going to be going on in front of us <laughs> at the start of the weekend, I would have said no way to that, too. So, um, he fires that shot. one down the middle, and good he's shot. heating up. Now 3-3. Three, three. Heating up. That's a beer pong term, right? Heating up. I'm on fire. It's actually originally from NBA Jams. Dude, do you remember NBA Jams? That was my game. Uh, the bar where we play foosball has an old school cabinet. They used to host tournaments for <laughs> NBA Jams. He's on fire. Yeah. But it was you hit two in a row, you call heating up, you hit the third one, that's the beer pong. And you hit the third one, you're, you're on, on fire. fire. And then you get to keep shooting. Well, it depends on house rules. Are we at my house or your house? That oh, Most people's <laughs> houses, and we both live in Florida, but different parts, but that's how you I play, played in do, Florida. Do you play Island? Oh, nice pass oh, yeah. right here. Island to go up 4-3, this is big. Right? Oh, my Sullivan God. Sullivan fires that home, and it's 4-3. Yeah, thank you for refocusing there. No, you're good, bro. But, no, we do Island. I do Island. So do we. Nice, nice. But you only get one Island a game. Yeah, and yeah. I, have, I haven't played beer pong. Oh, me and you need a – Five years. Me and you need a – we're going to link up. Yeah, maybe before we stay next year, we'll come down early and we'll play some beer pong. Guys. That would Michael be fun. Michael Bates looking to clear here. And that was a good look. He tried the inside bank. Corey Taylor. Good shot, but Bates collects it. A nice clear. But, I mean, Michael is just that pass. The pass. You got to do the pass. Well, he clears it. Corey Weaving looking over. See if he can get this clear. You got to get Terry involved somehow. Yeah, he was shooting very hot. He's Taking his time a little while. Sully with the pickup. How many timeouts do they have, by the way? Two? Uh, this, I'm struggling. They played so many I think games. They, I'm struggling I think to remember they, how many. I don't think they've taken a timeout this game. Oh, oh. beautiful passing. Just a oh, little that too was hot. A, yeah, that was a little chip to the middle. Uh, Terry almost got the grab, though. 
Mike setting up the bank again, going for the oh, pass. When it was there, she just couldn't hang on. Wow. Terry tries the left hook, ball flies around the table. Corey Taylor ends up with it. Yeah. Good shot, Mike. Great shot, grab. And great grab by Sullivan. Man. And she calls timeout, so she had at least one left. I don't think they've had one this game, but I could be wrong. Why? If somebody asked, why didn't they play together? It's because they both be trying to play forward, right? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's always been the main forward, and you know the Roos are playing front. Who knows? Maybe next tournament we'll see Terry in the pits for him. Someone said, I wonder who Keisha is cheering for. She's, she's, she's cheering for the Rue. Yes. The Rue family. So, you know, I would if it was anybody, any other family, but I would say, yeah, this might be a weird situation. But this is the Rue's, and they've been in this situation for years. And they are such a good people, and they understand that, you know what, we're having fun at the end of the day. we got love and family, but if you let me beat you, I'm going to ground you. Or I'm going to be upset. And Sullivan with another good pickup. And she fires Bang. it home. Wow. And two they one. Are one we got game away. Two one, right? That yeah. was the third game. Two right? one. That was game three. Okay. The counter's not over there, so I wasn't sure. They, yeah, Sullivan and Michael took the first. Terry and Corey responded. Took the second, and then see they rush into this after a loss, which is interesting to me. Yeah, they're ready to go. Crowd thinning out. What's left of it is packed around this table. I mean, I mean, everybody watching at home, don't you wish you were here right now watching it live? Fire alarms. We got fire alarms. We got family pro. We got bad blood. We got we got everything <laughs> that a Jerry Springer episode might have. Uh, All Terry right, Terry. Yes, putting it back in play. Nice lane pass. He's got to he's got to start scoring. He's passing well. He just has to take advantage when he has the ball, and he Fires does. That straight. And they he keep does. baiting him for that, and he's, he seems to be picking up on it pretty well. <laughs> so he continues to fire. I mean, off I mean, the, the right ball. side of the table can't do anything wrong right now, yeah. or at all. I mean, like we should take him to the casino like right after this match. And Sullivan with another takeaway. Good block by Corey. Yeah, Gets to that, that one. Ooh, push cake. Yeah, I don't nice. know about that one. Busting that. Yeah, a little change of pace. Yeah. You're up two games to one, but you're down one nothing here. You don't want to let it up, though. Like, here's yeah. the thing. If you really – this is the title. They're one game away from double dipping. Yes. You don't want to jeopardize that. You Good shot by Terry. Yeah. This is Straight how you again. respond. Now, this is what now. Terry needs to do. He needs to take advantage when he gets it on a three bar. Good pass by – good pass by. So I wish right Clay there. was doing stats on this one. Oh, well, I can do it for you. Sully is about 80% on the five and about 90% on the three bar. Somewhere around there. That might be close. Yes. Good block. That's good block. blocked up off the table. That's a clear. Michael Bates. From the sip to the blue grass. All the way in Kentucky. I gave you a shout out, baby. got that one too. Trying to bank it, it looks like, but he's hitting it straight. Uh, See what he does here, a slingshot? She's doing a great job pressuring him. And then again. They're up 2-0 in this um, fourth game in second set. That one gets through. She almost sends it back, but Terry picks it up on the five. She tries a left I don't hook. know what. Okay, that was interesting. I mean, she's got to be excited, right? She is, and they're down 2-0 here. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of feelings going on on that table. I remember my first open doubles final. I don't know if this is Sully's first open doubles it's final. Be. I I think it is. I remember mine, so I wasn't in a loser's bracket, so I, I can only imagine. They're having fun though. Terry picks it up on the five bar, doing a nice little tic tac. Tries that lane again. So oh, comes away with it. Fights for it. Terry gets it and goes with the. It. Three nothing now, and Michael and Sullivan are going to switch. That's a good switch. I mean, you know, I think their ideal setup is Sully up front, but this has been a great option for him when they need a different look. Well, you know, Michael has always been a Ford, and you know, he's got the great. I mean, he can do. He's capable of doing it all. So you're right. The switches have been there, and they've been great. And Sully's done a great job blocking Terry. Man, 
everything is doing. Oh, uh, Tony drops a pass. He did. He did. Michael with the little wall has a setting up the roller. Looking over Corey's D. Is he going to quick shoot? He does. He goes to the pool side. Can't pick it up. Terry Rue picks it up on the five bar. 3 0 here in the fourth game. We might be going to. Wouldn't it be great to get a fifth? I mean, 10 games? But now the first one went 3 0. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> what am I thinking? But five games here in the second set? Sully gets the block, but she can't hang on. Terry looking over the D. Tries to straight again. Good shot. To clear. Good shot. Corey able to clear two. Sullivan digs it out. Fires. Sends a pass at the table. Michael wasn't there for it. Oh, and Corey drops a great pass on to Terry Ruse. Five, and he and tries, tries to a dink. He tried to dink. Yeah, yeah. Three -oh. Oh, and he, he steals it. Away. This is what Terry needs to do, though. He needs to have fun. He needs to free will. If he wants to win this title, he's going to have to let loose. And he's feeling loose right box. now. He's feeling good. This is what he needs to do. <laughs> he he's made a comment about the dink he just tried. Did he? <laughs> yeah, I didn't hear exactly what he said, but I heard the word dink leave his mouth. He's laughing. All right, we got Blake Kent math. I like math. I don't like math. That's my subject. You just forgot that the first one went 3-0. I did forget about that. It was it was pretty fast. Yeah. I mean, I had flashbacks from when I got 3-0'd by him about two hours ago. Wow, Corey, Corey ends the game 5 0. Shows that one needs to. We're going five. And we're getting that fifth match. We're about to get live. We're about to get live for the five. Well, if you came here to watch some good foosball, folks, these. I'm just happy to see it live. Yeah, I mean, this is unreal being here in the room. Everybody on the edge of their seat. And now they're taking a little bit of time. I had to come down here to do this. They're in. No, Shannon. <laughs> All right. The tournament director at Mississippi State said Hannah was doing a great job and is mad at me. So he wants me to get off the Sullivan mic to go ice the, the beer down. The ball on the play. You're busy. I don't know what's more important. What, what's more important, ice, ice cold beer or open doubles final? Hey, Hannah's about to. Blow this one past I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's all good. Corey comes up with the block, and Terry grabs the rebound. I mean, oh, they 5 0 that last game. The momentum's entirely in favor well, of Well, Terry's left. doing what he needs to do. He needs to take advantage when he gets the ball on the three bar. He needs to be more, a little bit more aggressive, and he is. And, and he's going Michael for Bates it. showing up on defense that, now. Yes, he did. What a <laughs> save! He put it into the push kick. Great shot from Sullivan. Are you kidding me? I didn't see that coming. I couldn't Pick block up that. Pickup was great. At, well, what about the pick up into the push kick? Yeah, unbelievable. That's next level. That's like inception. We're on three dream levels right now. Are you kidding me? Terry Rue trying to get it on the three bar. And he does. Okay, we're in the fifth game, second set. This is it. This is for all the marbles. Trying to even it up here in the fifth. Terry Rue scores it down He's the middle. He's got them on middle. that switch so many times now. Well, I mean, you know, Michael got on with the straighten along. Sully with the snatch. Nice middleman pass. Fires that one home. She cannot do anything wrong. 2-1 here in the fifth. Terry putting it in play. Terry's doing everything he can just to stay head above water, I feel like. Yeah, nice pass. Going. Would it be too greedy to ask for overtime here? Uh, already got such a good match. Uh, greedy would be saying overtime with uh, no limit. Nice straight. That was a good shot. 2-2. Two, two. I want no limit. I love no limit overtime, but, you know, they cap it. got to go back to real life at some point. Mm. Do we though? Oh Fires my that, God! That Points are coming faster than like raindrops, and and I don't even know. It's summertime in Florida, I don't know. Oh, so they almost with the steal on the five bar. This is huge too. They're up three two here in the fifth game. Oh, and someone comes up out. with it. This is a perfect time to call it. We'll see what happens. She's looking over, trying to pass and it. Terry takes it away. Terry with the steal. This is a lot of pressure right here. Terry needs to capitalize. He takes his time, goes to the lane. This is what he has to do if he if they want to win. You know, a good block by Bates. You it's all right. I, I like him going for it, though. I like that. You know what he, I just realized? Remember when I was talking about that promo photo? <laughs> I'm mad at myself. I wasn't here. Terry so fires I, that one down the middle. Great three, shot. Three. You were going to get OT, I think. But, yes, uh, you did. But 
I was not here, so I will not take. Oh it's my Sullivan. god! That the emotion that she's one hundred percent in this yeah. game. Got to be. It's close. All right, let's see right here. Can she get the steal? I, Almost I think, takes it out. You know what? I would have liked Michael up front right now for the steal. They have both their timeouts, <gasps> and she gets it. Does she call timeout this time? And she does. Yeah, she learned. That last cheer we had might, a we extra might, something on it there. We might not get OT. Yeah, Sullivan might just put it away here. Says, I don't want to play around with that little extra ball stuff. I want to go go ahead and go home now. Um, yeah. Well, she, home. You know, She's going to go play for a pro doubles final, too, and a pro singles final. I, <laughs> Do I got to commentate that, too? <laughs> you don't have Because I will. Because yeah. I will. Well, I don't know. So here we go. Sullivan gets it through. Wow, what a pass. Sullivan Rue oh. fires, and Corey Taylor comes up with a big block. She kind of rushed that one. That one kind of probably needed a little time on it. Good shot by Corey. That's a good one on, Bates. All right, let's see what What's Michael can do. You know, he's been doing great all he's day. He's got a red hot forward. Does he try and pass? Yes, it's there. And he does. Nice pick up on the five. Sully going into and a nice middle the high lane. lane. Sullivan Rue. Looking over the defense for, for the win. The championship. Timeout. Calls what timeouts. a what a call. Let's look at it. Oh yeah, let's get a look at Sullivan here. Yes, yes. This is it. This is it. You look, I can't this. imagine what's going through her mind. I'm pumped up. Um, I'm sitting here. I'm, I'm excited for them. That's for sure. They're having fun. That's, That's all that fun. matters. We're here to have fun. Dad's all business. Hoping his Corey's been playing well. He's puts back it back in. into play for the win. Sully Rue and Michael Bates. Open doubles. Fires. Oh, she's every ringer, part of the ringer, goal ringer. and comes out. Pole, post to post. Corey with the somehow got it out of there. What's Corey he do Taylor. with it? And he Sends goes it up for the table the pass. and Terry comes up with it on the five. Terry Rue Ooh. taking his time here. And Sullivan almost, almost gets the takeaway, but Terry gets it. Close. That was close. That was very clean. Terry nice wall pass by Rue. By for, Terry Rue. For overtime. Terry wow, Rue fires it home. Are we going into OT. He almost just punched the table. He is fired up. We have yeah, look at that. Overtime here on table number one. Sully puts it back into play. How does she respond? Oh, uh -oh. momentum Terry. momentum change. Terry yeah. gets it. Timed that one well. To take the advantage here in OT, Terry Rue setting up the pull shot on Michael Bates. Looking over the defense. Fires and Bates keeps it out, and Sullivan with the pickup. Oh, yeah, back to Michael Bates in the goalie here, setting up the bank shot. You know, you get the pass is the only thing that's there, really. That's the only thing I really see. Oh, he Almost actually. gets it, and Sullivan picks it up on the five. That was close. Oh, Sully's, so I think Sully's still up. Oh, oh, that high lane is that getting high lane all day. Yeah, she hits the straight to take the advantage. 5-4 here in Somebody's the fifth. Somebody's tapping on the back while we're trying to call us. I'm not really sure what's going on. What happened? Somebody's tapping on the back while we're trying to call the match. I can't. I, I don't have time for that. I don't either. Yeah, no, no, Terry no. This is through. It was, yes. Let's see what he does right here. Looking over the defense of Michael Bates. Terry Rue. And he hits it down the Fires middle. Fires it down the middle. Ladies and gentlemen, it's 5-5 five, five here in the fifth second set. What can you ask for? Mother, father, father, daughter. A nice wall pass by Sully. Sullivan Rue looking to take the lead again. Fires the straight. And That's straight. I didn't even see ball that. Once again for Sullivan Rue Six, and Michael five. Bates. Terry puts it back into play. Ooh. Nice. Terry hammers lane. that one through the lane. Terry Rue fires a straight, can't get it to go. Michael Bates takes the ball with a chance to put it away. Now you know, that inside bank might be there, I guess. The pass, I mean, I don't, that five men of Terry's is on planet on that wall. And the pass, oh, so redirected into the goal. I think that was illegal. I get to play it. Come on, Terry. Okay. This question here. Well, the ball was stopped and, um, Sully hit it with the advancement, but I think they have the option to take it where it lied, which it went in. So oh, she it was saying she did something illegal. Yeah. Trying to get it. Okay. Got yeah, it. yeah, yeah. So it's 6-6. Six, six. It's okay. It's okay. We're going to eight. It's a race to eight. This so is why I like no limit. And that again, high lane that, It's just again. all day. She Fires it quick. Can't get to go. Now Terry has a chance to take the lead. With the setup, automatic. Terry Rue. Fires at home, and it's now championship ball for the first time for Rue and Taylor. Left side of the table. 
Sully putting it in to play nice basketball to go meet nut. I'm going to get loud if she makes this. I'm going to let y'all know. Every, the whole room's going to go. Oh, she fires into the wall. Not there. She hit the corner. Corey Taylor now has possession with a chance to put it away. From the goal. Ooh, he, he went for it. Ooh. Oh. Terry Rue gets the ball. Pick it up. Well, here we go. To pass to get to the three bar. And, oh, oh, and he drops the pass. Sullivan's got a chance. Does she do the high oh, lane again? Oh, she does. Terry jumps it. at that time. She kind of rushed it a little bit. Terry going for the pass to get it on the three and bar. Nice block. Sully almost with the takeaway. Nerves are high down that table right now. Yep. Oh, yeah. nice save Dig by Bates. Take out by Bates to keep it alive. Bates needs to come up big here. The ball kicks around. Flying around the table. Corey Taylor reels it in. California. Such a lovely place. Such a lovely place. Bates. Oh, with the push pull kick. Oh, Sully, Sully grabs with the a rebound. chance to go meet Nut. Meet Nut! Not. We're going to Meet eight. Nut! Can we get a meet Nut? The crowd Let's really go! This is what we came Everybody's for. This is why we do it. And Terry, we ready to get it underway, and we do. Terry can't hang on. Sullivan gets the ball. She gets it through. Oh my gosh! For the win. For the win. Fires it can't get it. Nice ball kicks block around. by Corey. She comes up with it on nice the five. Nice block by Corey. Gets Whoa. the high lane again. The patient high lane is amazing. Sullivan right now. Roof for the championship. Plan for the win. Fires it long, oh, misexecutes. Mis oh my gosh. Keith. Um, yeah. Um, are, you, are you feeling Corey what I'm feeling? Are you, are you feeling what I I'm feeling? I can't believe they still had some left after all that. The crowd's going nuts. The chat, I can't breathe. Legendary match, total momentum change. I mean, like, this is... Oh, they, they were trying to let, at least me, I don't know, probably you too, but they, they, it went dead quiet. The music died. Oh, I remember. I saw that. So yes. we were getting a little loud back here. Oh, That's sorry. what they were letting us know. I mean, it's not our fault. We're supposed to be talking back here. It's just it got real, real quiet. So, not the end of the world. I mean, hey, this I was isn't... I just curious this is a, me back This there. isn't a golf match. Exactly. Come on now. Matt, Corey Taylor, looking to clear. Who's mm, going to be the hero? Terry, Terry Rue for the Rue win. The Open double is 20, 22. Michael, Michael. My God, I said Michael Bates. Second, Mississippi yeah. State Open doubles. Could you ask for a better matchup and a better no match? No limit. <laughs> Imagine when, if I mean, this was no the limit. Within the rules. Oh, within the rules? No. <laughs> Man, forget. The rules were meant to get bent. That's why they yeah. were made. Michael Bates has to come up big here if they want to complete this double dip. But either way, this has been one of the best matches I've ever seen in my short foosball career. Mm. Terry Rue. Puts it back in play for the win. Yes! He's home, home, baby! And hey, Terry that's a Rue puts it home. Yes! Nothing to hang your head about there. And that is and a hug. There's a nice moment Grace. right there. That's incredible. And I mean, at, overall, I mean, can you be disappointed in Sully's performance? Can anybody? No. Yeah! Understandably emotional. You see the crowd giving her a hand. Wow. Corey Taylor right there also. Corey Taylor, 2022 yeah. Mississippi State Open Doubles champion. That what? might be Corey's oh, first Open Doubles Tour championship. This is crazy. This was I I, I didn't know. Racing. This is amazing right now. The field, everybody's in their fields right now. This is great. This is good stuff. This is good stuff. That's Shannon. That's Michael Bates' wife right there. All right. Well, unbelievable match. Could I mean we got more better. fun stuff coming up though. I mean this is just yeah. the beginning. I mean. Sully's just warming up for the rest of the stuff. Sully's just pound. warming up. She's still got she's three got more events to, to win. We're going to be here all night. Unbelievable match. That's going to go down as the best match of the year, I promise. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm out for now, but I will be back. Appreciate you keeping company, Blake. That was a fun one, man. That, that was good. That was good. That. that was one of the funnest matches I've ever had. Hey, T Terry, was I too loud? Was I too loud? No, I know. I know. Okay. I'll just... I, How the hell did we do that? She killed us. Dude, you ought to hear the commentary.
Hello? Hey. I'm going to leave all the mics on so y'all can hear this.
Sound good? All right, folks, we're going to get this interview. Obviously, this is an emotional moment for everybody involved. So we're going to give it a second, but we are going to talk to Terry and Corey in just a second here. this in here in just a second. Yeah, it's literally what these, yeah, we're just gonna do it real quick and then we'll get iron as well. Sorry, you can crash the interview if you want. <laughs> So that's what these red X's are for. So I'll stay here. You guys here? We good? All right. Gentlemen, obviously an emotional moment. That was an incredible match. History in the making in front of our eyes. You guys played great. Went down to the last ball of the second set. Well, how are you guys feeling right now? Uh, I'm, I can't even, I don't even have words right now. I'm amazed. I love this guy. He played unbelievable all weekend. I'm just, wow, I'm speechless. And it's just, for me, it's the history and at many different levels for the way that happened. Um, for him to stick with it, stick with the game plan, stay focused, everything, it felt like a toilet bowl. Everything's going against you. You know, the crowd's pulling for him. That's a difficult, you know, endeavor to try to climb over. And then you're, you're playing your daughter. And it's hard to separate that. Um, I was trying not to go... You know, I didn't want to influence it that way, but there's a fire in me as well as her that I have to do this. It's my partner, and uh, you try to step it up in your own way. Um, it, it's amazing, really. I know everybody probably thinks that's one of the best matches that they've ever seen. It has to be. It was That was the most pressure I think I've ever felt in my whole life. Yeah, I mean, I think it's definitely match of the year, easy to for no, no problem whatsoever. And I, I think 
uh, I don't think anyone holds it against you. Everyone expects you guys to both give it your all and fight it out. Especially, they took that first match 3-0. You guys adjusted nicely. Corey, you played great defense the whole match. Terry, you started firing them off at the end. I mean, I think it's going to take a couple days for the gravity of what you gentlemen just did to sink in for anybody really to digest this. But that was incredible. Incredible. So thank you guys for putting on a heck of a show. And uh, any parting words? I mean, this is really quite the moment. Yeah, no, just to be able to share it with this guy, one of my best friends of mine for my whole life. And his first, his first tournament that we we ever played in, I, I called him Shane the whole time. Y'all need to know the story of why he had Shane. Okay, oh, he did, okay. So that's it, it also means the, the depth of it, what it means to come and win an open title with, I don't know, how many masters were there here? Jesus. To pull that off? I mean, that's I'm so proud of him. I, my heart, you know. Thank you all, really. And I'm sure, obviously, you know, you were fierce competitors on the table, but you have to be proud of what Sullivan did all the way there. Unbelievable play. Well, think about this. Women singles, women doubles finals, open doubles. She's in pro doubles, uh, singles final, and her and Hannah are sitting. They're, they're, they're about to play the king seat. They're actually on the other side. Jesus. And it wasn't just like that was a weekend. That's all this just this evening. She's been going, going, going. That's a haul. I, yeah, I wish I had that many nickels is what she's doing. I'd be able to keep playing at that level through all. I mean, that was such a dogfight. Um, for her, we, we literally played um, two, three out of three out of fives a day since um, coming back from World Cup. She said, I, I want to work on things. I, I want to be more dynamic, less predictable. And wow, it worked. Yeah, I think it's safe to say that paid off. Gentlemen, I won't take any more of your time. Congratulations. Go and join the win. Thank you for your time. And again, really, thank you for putting on that show. Absolutely. Thank you. Appreciate thank you, gentlemen.
Apparently. You made us take the long way, though. <laughs> Thank you, man. That's the nice thing anybody said to me today. <laughs> it was it was taken as long. <laughs> We're going to get tacos after this if you want to go. Welcome only. All <laughs> Tests on them and shit, you know, using this experiment to find out whether or not it's avocado. Once she was pretty sure she didn't have to fucking walk them on the game, you just don't You gotta have a theory in that proof. Right, right, you got well, I guess so. It's a kid when you marry a scientist, I guess. I'm oh, sorry.
And we welcome you back to Inside Foos' coverage of the 2022 Mississippi State Championships. Got another final for you here on table one. This is the expert doubles final. In the front, that's on the right, that's Brian Ingram out of Mississippi. Also out of Mississippi in the back, that's second coolest Keith in foosball, Keith Bates. Who's the first coolest? I don't know. It's not, I wasn't claiming to be. I'm, I'd be lucky to just be considered in the top five. I thought you were the second coolest, Keith. I, I mean, I'd be. And then all the other ones were first. They're all in a tie. <laughs> yeah. And the guy sitting next to me already being a wise guy. It's Blake Robertson with y'all. Let's go, let's go. <laughs> Fire. Hey, sorry, folks, trying to get the match date up there for you. On the overlay, that's Tommy Brewer out of the South Florida Foosball Club. As James goes nicely along the wall. One, two, one here in the early going. This is an interesting match. I played Hugh and James uh, the first round in expert doubles, and they must have really changed some stuff up to get this far. You put them in the losers? Because they sucked. Dude, come on. <laughs> it's their first time being on Inside Foods. No, they're not. Hugh's, Hugh's old school at this, but and they'll tell you, like, that was not their best game. But you guys put them in the losers first match? Yeah. So they fought a long way yeah. to get back here. Yeah, great players. They just hadn't warmed up yet. Yeah. I had the pleasure of meeting Hugh yesterday. Stop me to let me know that he appreciates what we're doing here. Always appreciate those kind words. So, he's a, a, a unicyclist in his free time. Not sure if you know that. That's super cool. Yeah. And I think like a, an avid Star Wars or Star Trek, one of the two. Yeah. Fan. So, folks watching at home on YouTube and Twitch, I know that I said I was gonna shut it down after that, but we're having such a good time here, all on Cloud Nine after that match. We'll just go ahead in honor of the ruse putting up such a great show and Corey Taylor Michael Bates we'll just go ahead and leave it up for the rest of the night team on the left is a, a powerful team yeah. uh, Brian in particular doesn't do anything soft I mean he just generates so much force with everything he does I got the pleasure of meeting Keith out at Texas State last year but I've never actually seen a play and there's Kaboom, like there it we were is. just talking about don't you love it when they prove you're right right off the bat yep yeah. opposite of commentators curse I played him earlier, too, and I'm pretty sure he recoiled on a wall pass. Like, it's everything's <laughs> force. He's not a small guy. Opposing stature. Got the pleasure of meeting. A nice shot from Wade on shot. the middle of the table. Now 3-2. So it is this Mississippi versus uh, Tennessee, right? I don't know where the gentleman on the right are out of. I don't believe. I know Hugh, at least, is uh, close to Memphis. Stubs that one a little bit. And Keith able to keep it out. And I got, I honestly, I had to calm down after that last match. Oh, Ooh. monster shot from Keith Bates out of the back. Now 4 2. Apologize, I didn't look at the bracket. I'm rushing back over here. Uh, yeah, Ingram and Bates have the king seat. James McAfee now trying to cut on that lead. Gums pull side, and Keith denies him. So yeah. Good. Ingram's five bar is such that he's going to get a lot of possessions on the three. Um, so James is going to have to make every shot count. I mean, he's, he's not going to get it as often as, as Brian is. As Keith puts it back into play. Keith now reels it in. That one bounces around, and that's how game number one goes. So, Brian Ingram, Keith Bates, one game away from locking up an extra doubles championship. Hugh Garner should take some time in between in between games, collect his thoughts. And Hugh's standing right next to us, so I think Tommy might be trying to give him some <laughs> advice. Let's see the gentleman on the right and on the left. And we're ready to get game number two underway. So, James, ready to put the ball back in play. Yeah, I mean, he's going to have to come out and establish that, you know, go up the first point, great off the wall. Beautiful pass. He's going to have a chance to open scoring here. Fires to the far side, and Keith again there to greet him. And again to the pole side. Yeah. 
Ball blocked up off the table. I'm going to take a moment here. We, we can see what our friends are saying in the Twitch chat. I had a couple people reach out to me, uh, offer some kind words. So I got to say I appreciate that as Bates fires that one up the table and it's blocked off again. Johnny Carrier reached out. I don't know if Johnny remembers meeting me, but we've played one match, and I'm curious if he remembers it. But it was well before I got involved with Inside Foods. It was like my second tournament. Florida State? Nope. It was Louisiana State. All right. And it's Keith looking to clear. And Keith wow. fires that one home. That's, so that's the second yeah, of those shots. Hugh and James going to need to make some adjustments here. Kicks that one up the table, and Keith able to keep it out. Yeah, I can say that Keith is, is just an excellent goalie, having spent, I don't know, five or six very frustrating min minutes shooting on him to no effect earlier in this event. And Brian sends that one flying back in the other direction off the table. I don't know if he's still watching, but Ben Davis reached out. Talking about that match, he pointed out, Last year, match of the year, probably Tommy Yor double dipping Tony at Texas State. Had to be, yeah. And I was in on that one too. So I think I'm just a, a good luck charm if you want to watch the best match of the year. Because that, that open doubles final we saw is definitely going to go down as the match of the year unless we get something crazy the last few turns of the year as Hugh kicks that one up the table and Keith reels it in. No, you should, you deserve a lot of credit for that. Both those matches. Yeah, I put a lot of effort in to make that happen. Good for job. Brian Ingram now takes possession of the chance. Oh, little uh, hitch there for Brian. All that cheering, I'm pretty sure the rookie doubles final just went down over on table number two. And Brian fires that one. That was a good, deep, hard shot. And uh, these guys are going to take a second to applaud and not have to deal with all the crowd noise. How many rookie doubles titles are they going to let Bo win before they kick him out? I don't know. Does he have more than one? This is third. Is it really? Yeah, he's got a bunch of rookie singles titles, too, and he played for the final on that this weekend. I think I think I have three or four rookie doubles titles before they made me leave. Oh, people get that opportunity as James puts that one through the lane now. We're going to get his team on the board. Fires that one near side. Good shot there from McAfee, and it's 2-1. Brian not wasting any time going along the wall there. Brian fires yeah. that one down the middle. Nice shot. It's 3-1. He is focused. Has he missed? Has he been blocked yet? Uh, Yeah, I think. Oh, yeah, that one that got blocked up off the table yeah, at least. Yeah. We lost some of our friends on Twitch. Haven't gotten any audience interaction in a while. Yeah, I mean, they're all probably recovering from the drama. Yeah. Of <laughs> had to go get a beer. Roo v. Roo. And honestly, in that match, both, you know, Bates and Taylor both played incredibly well. Gets lost in the narrative of the father-daughter. Yeah, I mean. But both those guys played very exceptionally, exceptionally well as timeouts called here. Still a lot of noise going here in the room. So what else is Sully going to win this weekend? I know she's still in events. She is sitting King Seat in pro singles. She's gonna, got a rematch of the King Seat match against Safi Scheiber. And her and Hannah over to our left are playing. Oh, I know those guys. They should not say anything about them, but there's expectations for Hannah and Sully oh. as that one dribbles in. And it's now championship point for yeah. Brian Ingram and Keith Bates. And the crowd's getting into it a little bit. McAfee's going to have something to say about it first, though, as he gets that one through the lane. I mean, he's got to he's got to make it if they're going to pull it out, right? He has to have it. He has to have every ball for the rest of this game. And he gets the one. Now he just needs three more. Going to have to get a stop. And Ingram gets it through. Brian Ingram for the match, for the championship. Fires and blocked up. Hugh Garner, Garner answering it. the call. Great Keep block by Hugh. Alive. And uh, this will be interesting to see what he does. Hugh does, all of his shots are interesting. Um, but he's a big fan of tricky stuff. Oh. Just goes with a push shot, and Ingram grabs it. And I just hexed him. Yes, he did. Commentator's curse. And Ingram 
can't convert there, so he gets another shot and able to find his partner's five bar. And can't connect there, so Bates, who's already hit a couple out of the back. Goes with the pass. I mean, after those really nice uh, push shots, that lane's going to be pretty big. Yeah. So now Hugh stubs it a little bit, and Bates again. Puts the shot on goal, and he gets it back. And that pass attempt is intercepted, but unable to be held on to, so Ingram got a chance, and... Oh, there's a steal. All right. The steal they it, needed. It's still a game. And Mack fires down the middle. Good shot there, and it's 4-3. And McAfee and Gardner have life. Stab that one back on the goal. So Keith Bates now. Kicks that one up the table, and Ingram can't hang on. And Hugh wow. Gardner fires great a long shot, shot and we're all tied great. up at 4-4, and James calls timeout. Just so this match has some drama too. Yeah, we're not done yet. I see Hugh there, James walking out of the pit. Keith and Brian. So how's your weekend been not playing foosball and only talking about it? Yeah, it's been very exciting. Got a lot of good matches. I'm a little tired. I also didn't realize it was almost 1 a.m. It is. Got a flight in about eight hours. I got hours. a flight at 5.40, so I'm just excited I'm not sleeping. Yeah, Yeah, that makes it a little easier to make that decision. You going to be able to catch the shuttle at that hour? No. I actually have no idea if I can get an Uber or a cab or what, so... It's not that far of a walk. Brian Ingram now puts the ball back into play. Still championship point for he and Keith Bates. Gets a redo on that one. And gets it through. Brian Ingram once again. A shot for the championship. And again, Hugh Garner coming up big. And the ball comes to rest between his men. Clutch so block. Would have been a great time for a clutch timeout. He may still. Wow. Oh, or you can just bury a slingshot and send it to a third game. That's an option, too. Great. I was talking about Brian before oh, Brian, he took yeah, that shot. No, yeah. yeah, definitely. They still had both. I'm waiting for Hugh Garner to look over at me so I can give him a thumbs up. No, he just wants nothing to do with you. I don't blame him. <laughs> Get a smile out of you. Yeah. Man, impressive performance from Hugh and James to come back in that one. They were down big. Looked like the writing was on the wall, and they said, that clock's not striking midnight yet. I was about to take my headphones off. Just leave. Oh. Yeah. Well. Great comeback. So we're going to a third game. Still in the first set, so Ingram and Bates can put this away for a championship. What's this? Uh, I think Hannah left that in here. Okay. I've had a lot of guest commentators, so I'm not sure who left that. A lot who's, of your, who's your best guest commentator so far this weekend? So I've been asked that a couple of times. Hannah's done the most with me and yeah. she's great back here yeah so i think i gotta go with hannah she's been committed blake did a great job a lot of compliments uh coming in let's go let's go also i mean it didn't hurt that we had an incredible match to do it yeah exactly you know but yeah. uh yeah hannah doing a great job tommy atkinson got in with me for one eric hiltner got in with me for one Hannah just has a great voice for commentary she does yeah. everybody loves hannah so brian puts that one through the lane and has a chance to open scoring here Hugh Garner shut him down at the end of that last one. And again. So Hugh Garner's defense, keeping a minute to go along with his partner's heating up three bar. As Bates able to find Ingram's five. And he hammers that through the lane. Come on. Brian has to go very deep to get that one in there. Rattles at home. It's one nothing. Oh, and James loses the handle, but at least Hugh able to pick it up. Yeah, that's that's nerves. Hugh fires another good shot on goal, but Keith there to greet him. And James intercepts. So I assume everyone on the table is ranked expert. Uh, I'm not. I'm not positive about that. Brian may be an amateur. He obviously doesn't play like one. But uh, I'm trying to think of the North American Cup. I think he was playing as Team Mississippi's. Might have been their expert. He is from the SIP. He is. And I, I, I do think he's an expert. I think. Uh, oh, beautiful pass there from Bates to Ingram. I mean, the right is just a title. 
He's playing very high level foosball right now, whatever the yeah. is extra team. Splits that one, so it's now two nothing. And nice pass there from James as he has a chance now to get his team on the board. And Bates blocks that one up off of the wall. So what do you think you learned most watching all these matches this weekend? Uh, depending on who I'm sitting here talking to about it with, uh, all sorts of things. I just like this perspective because it lets me see the table from a view you don't see when you're normally when you're playing. So every lane that I hear someone talking about, if I'm playing, I'm like, oh, that lane's there. Oh, yeah. I can't see it. But when I watch it from here, I know exactly what they're talking about. Blake was doing a great job reading Terry and Corey Zone in that last one. I was like, oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I can see it. I can physically see the way he's describing it. So that helps, and then uh, as Brian looking to make it 3 nothing, and it tries to come down the middle, and you able to beat him there. Brian gets to the rebound, yeah, fires that one near side, it is now 3 nothing. And they got him right where they want him. And they got him right this where they had him last game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, you're saying uh, James and Hugh have yeah. him right where they want him, yeah. Wait till the fifth. As Hugh reels that one in. Roll him into a false sense of security and then light him up. Yeah, it's some rope a dope action. <laughs> As Hugh able to find James's three bar. And Keith keeps that one out up off the table. Ball has been leaving the table left and right this match. Yeah, it does not stay on there. I mean, two big guys shooting on the left side of the table, it's going to go off. Yeah. Well, even uh, James and Hugh have sent a couple flying. Push shot attempt is redirected back on the goal, okay. and that gets you and James on the board. And it's 3 1. Yeah, nice job See if Garner can work some magic back here like he did the last game. Stubs that one a little bit. He's done that a couple of times. Bates goes with a beautiful pass. I was about to say that. You can still say it. Sure. Brian Ingram now. <laughs> I'm Keith Glenn. <laughs> yeah, baby, yeah. Fires that to the far side. Match ball for these often guys. Imitated. Wait. Often, Im often imitated, never duplicate. Yes. Another. That he's got great pass there with that off the wall. Tries near or down the middle and Ingram intercepts and it trickles through. So once again, championship ball for Brian Ingram. Chance to put it away, and this time, wisely call that timeout that he didn't call last time. Yep. Great weekend of foosball, man. For a small little regional tournament, we've got a lot of really good matches, and still a lot more to come. Yeah, no. Yeah. I mean, that was the big thing, and I would love to ask her if I get to talk to her. Clay being a wise guy. It's one in the morning. Look at Clay being a wise ass. What does an amateur play like that an expert doesn't play like? It sounds like a riddle, but it he's, is. He's, yeah. just, he's just being sarcastic. <laughs> Ingram now. I put it back into play with a chance to make it a championship. Fires yeah. down the yeah. middle and at three games. Brian Ingram, Keith Bates, defeat. James McAfee and Hugh Garner to become your 2022 Mississippi State Expert Double Champions. Congratulations to those two gentlemen. Got to be happy when the hometown wins it, you know? Yeah. The no, local so guys. You don't want somebody coming on your home turf and taking your, t your state title. No. The SIP gets a W. Got to tip your hat to Hugh and uh, James. They showed some great grit there. Good fight. Didn't just roll over. Made it a match. Oh, sounds like some limited hand are doing some scoring. That's some, what I was going to say. Some winning, maybe? Did they win that one, just say? Uh, what kind of mental grit does it take for a young foosball player to play a match like the one we saw and then have to turn around and get back on the table and keep going? I don't know. I have no idea what it's yeah. like to be a young foosball player. Yeah, I, neither do I. No, no idea. Uh, I would say, Clay, that my idea of an amateur 
Yeah, there's not much that splits the difference between an amateur and an expert. The expert makes fewer mistakes. Uh, they're more consistent. <laughs> but the, we get the trophy presentation ceremony here in the pit. One thing I was going to say is that amateur is where the bottleneck happens because you can't lose points below expert. So everyone kind of just gets to amateur and then stays there. There are players that play amateur and work their way up into expert because they are working their way up. And that play is going to be pretty similar. But there is a lower level of play from amateurs, quote unquote, out on tour that have just been there forever and probably could win a beginner doubles title if they wanted to, depending on the tur tournament. That tracks. You know? You can't lose points as a beginner, but you can lose points everywhere else. From what I have seen and what was presented after TKO, we were said that we were going to get the point breakdown after every tournament. That was the only one we got. But from what I have seen from that point breakdown they shared, no one lost points unless they were expert or higher. No, I mean, that can't be the case. I've gone from, I think I've gone from, no, I went from expert to amateur. Never yeah. went from amateur to rookie. Yeah, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, you can go from expert down, but I've literally seen people that play forever, tune out, tune out, tune out, tune out, in everything in amateur, and never move. Well, actually, Lexi Break, perfect example. I've had this conversation with her. She was sitting at the same point total until her and Noelia started lighting everything up. But it literally, her point total just didn't budge. Hmm. I don't know. The point system is magic and mystery to me. Yeah, I mean, I've never heard anybody complain about it. No, no. <laughs> well, and I know nobody understands it better than Clay, but just from what I've seen. That's not a good point, Clay, because you always know what you're talking about. You're like the most informed man in foosball, at least especially when it comes to the point system. Clay seems like the kind of guy where if he doesn't know what he's talking about, he just doesn't say anything. Yeah. Right? Like, yeah. if he says it, then it's probably right. Yeah. I'm saying that's what I've seen, so I would yeah. love to get an answer. So I don't know why you're disagreeing with him so vehemently about this. For, um, I didn't. I just like, explained I mean, what I've seen. He's been around a while. I didn't say, oh, no, Clay, you're wrong. He's done research. I'm going to hunt down Mary Moore next time I see her. Show him some respect. And ask her. Oh, I'm going to hop around and do this interview. Uh, they have promoters asked to do that all weekend, and I like these guys. So Go do not it. Not that I wouldn't do it if I didn't, but anyway, I am going to do me a favor. Yeah. This one? This guy right here? Keith is working his way around the, to the table. Congratulate the champions. Get a little interview. Here you go. On, so make sure the audio is good. And we're up. All right, gentlemen, congratulations. Keith Bates, Brian Ingram. How you feeling? Amazing, man. Just amazing. I don't even know what to say. This dude played awesome this weekend. A lot of nights. This was our one goal coming in here. We accomplished that. It's great. It's awesome. It's, it's still sinking in for me. It, it, the, the field here, the quality of players is just it's phenomenal. There's so many great players here. It, it's, an, it's an honor just to make it to the finals. And I can't describe what it's like to win. So it, it's. Yeah, you guys took the king seat, came into that, handled business in the first. They fired back a little bit. Second, looked like you had it. Writing was on the wall. They came back, showed some grit, showed some fight. What was going through your minds? I, I was just, let's do this, baby. Let's steamroll these boys. No, don't let them get any momentum. Let's knock it out right now and finish it. Yeah, it was just, we worked too hard to get here. We got to finish. You know, so whatever it takes, just keep fighting. Well, finish you did. Gentlemen, congratulations. Go enjoy the victory. Pleasure talking to you. Appreciate your time. Oh, yeah. Get him in here. All right, sit tight, folks. Promoter, promoter making sure we get the rookie doubles champions in here, too. Oh, they're going to make me talk to this guy. What's going on, guys? All right. All right, we're here in the pits now with our rookie doubles champions. That one was on two in the middle of that match. Bo Gidry, Billy, gentlemen, congratulations. I unfortunately I didn't get to see your match. Tell me about how it went down. Oh uh, well, basically, um, here's the deal. I'm a red blood American winning machine. Nobody can handle my stuff. <laughs> I don't know why I expect you to take this serious. How about you, Billy? Man, we just played good. They, um, 
I got some key blocks. He scores some key shots. Excellent, gentlemen. Well, you gonna, awesome. <clears throat> are you guys playing in it yet? It was a fantastic tournament. Well run tournament. I mean, fantastic. enjoyed it, man. I mean, the, the rules. What can you say about the rules? What, how beautiful of a moment was that, man? You know, Terry's such a fiery co competitor, you know, and, and he won. He was like, yeah. And then he looked up and suddenly, who is beast mode? I mean, that, that wasn't women's. That was the double. She was balling, son. And he just broke down. It was so beautiful. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, I cried. I had tears coming down my, my eyes, man. It's a great moment. Certainly was great tournament, gentlemen. I'll let you guys go enjoy the victory. Thank you for taking your time. Billy, pleasure meeting you, and congratulations. Probably your last rookie uh, doubles final, right? Yeah.
just like looking for something. Can, um, can we see a ball? Yeah.
Got this here? Uh, or is this is Thank you. 